of Final Fantasy XIV with me, Boltish Begammer. I'm going to continue my Moogle Tribe dailies. I cannot complete the Vanu. Not today. They'll be ready next week. The Moogle will also not be ready next week. So, uh, I guess I'm just going to begin with custom deliveries on those weeks. But while I'm waiting for people to get here, I will go ahead and advance these tiny little fuzzballs. Little storyline that they got going on here. We're almost done! In three weeks, I will be able to show their endings. Provided I, you know, do these guys every day. Piercing together the past. Master Mogsden looks like he has some urgent things to share with you. Bud, I'm glad you're here, Kubo. It's a matter I've been meaning to discuss with you ever since Gillenbert's departure, and now is as good a time as any. Yeah? Why don't you just tell me, then? Oh, I'd love nothing more to play with you. Unfortunately, the restoration of Zenith is underway. I'm afraid I don't have a moment to spare for cards. Oh, so I have to beat that in order to play cards with you. Got it. Oh, gathered, it would seem. Now, my dear Moxon, oh, is that you? Oh, I see you have summoned old E to with us as well. Very good, very good. Moxon, I was just admiring our craftsmanship. An accomplishment of the proud to, uh, to be proud of, certainly. Now, what was it you wanted? Are we to help plan the celebration? A celebration, yes. Uh, the statue is complete. There is not to do but ensure the statue stays polished. It is time for well-deserved rest. Do you not agree, my dear Moxon? No, no, not at all, Kubo. With all due respect, Terrison, our work is far from complete. I believe you know this already. You were w there when Gillenburst saw the statue. I was there as well, Moxon. Did Gillenburst not grant us leave to remain in Barlens? We could not have asked for more. Morgek and Mokmu have already begun preparations for a feast. You need to look past his words, old E. Didn't you find his reaction strange? He seemed thoroughly unimpressed by our effort. Something is amiss, I'm certain. We, no, I, cannot be content to leave the statue in its current state. I'll not rest until it's perfect. Not only in Gillenburg's size, but in mine as well. <laughs> well said, my dear Moxon. Well said. I knew you would not be satisfied with the mediocrity. Truly, your growth as a crafter has been not but short of astounding. You are truly an inspiration. I'm glad I can inspire you somehow. I, I don't know what to say, Kubo. Thank you. So that means you'll agree with me, yes? That as we have as many times before, let's work together and find out what's wrong. We've already come this far. Just a little bit further, and we can enjoy the satisfaction of seeing our work complete at last. But how are we to know where the fault lies? The possibilities are endless. Well, I believe we did well by casting Dragon and Man as subjects. Ugh. Perhaps the composition of their figures were not to his liking. If we have made such a fundamental error, I doubt he would suffer a statue to remain. No, it must be something else. Something we're not seeing. Hmm. <coughs> Let's take a different task and ask ourselves why Gilmbus demanded the statue be built in the first place. Why was it so important to him? I had wondered that myself. I know little of Gilmbus besides the fact that he is much older than brother. He is quite reclusive, although I have been told he was not always this way. Eh. <sighs> And it was only him by his, and we only know him by his demands, old E. Surely there was other di dragons as friendly as him. Perhaps they could offer insight with his motives. Perhaps it might serve as best to speak with the other ancient dragons. Are there any you can introduce, introduce us to, old E? Of course. There's Vidafnir, who I happen to count among my many friends. Perhaps we could also try visiting, uh. I'm sorry, I read Vidofnir first. Vettenfolnir. Although I'm not certain uh, they would grant us audience. Well, Vidofnir grants me audience all the time. You are friends with Vidofnir? Why, you're just full of surprises, Kipo. Our next step is settled. Bond, allow me to accompany you to the surface and speak with Vidofnir. Master Terrison, Old E, visit Ver... 
the other one, and find out if he knows anything about Killing Burst. Let's be back here to share our findings. Until then, goodbye. Some names are difficult. Putting an R after a D with a V in the... Ugh. Ugh. That's all I can think of about that. So, Alright, so let's see. We pop down to the surface. That should be an X-Trine. I think I have to advance the main story today. I have to. Unless someone wants to see some other type of content. I got everything for this expansion pre uh, prepared and ready to go. It's all accessible. All oh, right, I'm supposed to talk to a dragon. We know where Vidofnir is. Hey, look, I brought another person before you. Well met, warrior of warriors. What brings you and yours to Annex Trine today? Uh, we built a thing, and it's not good enough. Can you tell us more about what was missing? Gillenburst. Yes, I know him. For many moons did he labor to build the very plaza you now endeavor to repair. Gamber's to help to build the bar lens? Then why would he raise it to the ground? For a brother robbed of a mother's love, t'was bitter reminder and testament to the man's ancient sin of Ratatoskur's sacrifice upon the altar of mortal greed. Why can I say that name but not the other one? Old wounds are slow to heal, and maybe his discovered it is... His discontent is rooted in the past. Look to the plaza's ruins, if you would know more. Then all that's left to old bar lens was piles of- Wait, that's it, Kubo! But we need to go back at once! There may be remains of the rubble we've cleared. Perhaps they will provide us clues we seek. But Afnir, you have my sincerest thanks for your counsel. Uh, well, at least he thanked her. The warrior of warriors would serve as the crafter of crafters. How curious. How curious indeed that one person can be more than one class. I enjoy it. Anyway, let's pop back up to the Churning Mist. We love a near instantaneous loading time. The only thing better would be no loading time at all, but that's not the kind of game this is. We do our utmost to repurpose the stones we unearth, but some are not suitable, so we have a pile of them here. I suppose we should have taken a closer look. You are returned! Have you come to help us sort through the rubble? Here's where we keep the stones that are unfit for reuse, Kubo. Old E, Terrison, are you looking for remnants of the old plaza too? Indeed we are. Vitifonia only offered us so much information as he deemed necessary, a quality that comes with age. It is clear, however, that the pieces of old bar lens may hold the answer we seek. You have much the same experience. Well, there's nothing for it but to bit dig, 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 Kubo. I guess we're going to uh, dig. You dig through heaps of rubble, but find nothing that could be of use. Alright, what's behind rubble number two? We got something. We got another something. Same dialogue. Same dialogue. Hey, look. I found nothing but old rocks, Kubo. We have mysterious fragments. A stone fragment found amongst the rubble of Bar Lens. 
The worn lettering may have once formed a message, but it's impossible to tell with this fragment alone. Good thing we have two of them. What is this? This this looks like the writing of the landlord's Kubo. Alas, I can't read it. What does it say, Bont? Uh do, do I speak dragon? I guess I do have the echo which transcends that boundary, but Of his research. They found out that it might be of use. Harrison, look! Bob found these fragments engraved with what looks to be the script of the landlords. Brilliant. Let's have a look. Odie and I found several similar fragments, but in the life of me, I cannot make them out their meaning. Perhaps they are but a small piece of the larger whole. Alright, so we put them all together. Maybe put a little bit of glue there. Let's see. Like this? Well, like this. Ugh. The elements may not have been kind to these stones. I can scarce tell if the letters are upside down or right side up. Stop fooling around! What does it say? What does it say? Don't oh, rush me, old E. I'm a circus. Here, I think I have it. Unity and brotherhood, now and forevermore. Mount de Forsholt, Mogron, Gilmurst. A man, a Mughal, a dragon. Doubtless they were architects of this place. You mean that, uh, that more than a thousand years ago, there lived a Mughal crafter just like Mogzin? It appears the plaza of past and present have more in common than we thought. So, it was this tablet which truly important to Gillenburst? Indeed. To him, the statue was more than a monument to friendship and peace. It was a monument to his friendship as well. And so we shall make it our duty to restore the tablet. Come on, it's time to put to chisel the stone. Alrighty. So where do you need me to build? Ah, right up on the statue. Got it. The Bogmander's first commission will soon be complete. That is, if you would entertain one final request. What do you need? The letters must be darkened with ink, so they might be withstand the corroding elements for many years to come. I would ask you, th you with this task. Lastly, I would like to thank you for your support, not only on behalf of the Mogmenters, but all Moghome Moogles. If not for you and Harrison, Part Lens would still be nothing but dust and rubble. Once, was, once more, we trust your steady hand. I know you'll be impressed. Mogmo will give you any supplies you need. Once your masterpiece is finished, hand it to Harrison and we can complete our work. Alright. What will I do, you ask? Uh, let's just say I have one final trick to play. A parting trick, if you will. I'll be getting it ready while you get do your crafting. Ah, that look in your eyes. You can't wait to find out what it is, can you? Worry not. I assure you it will be my best one yet. A trick, huh? Alright. Maybe it's sprinkles for the donut. Bugs has been uh, by and told me what to expect you, Kippo. Take anything you want. Anything. Once you've finished, I can finally eat. <sighs> well, it's good to know where your motivation lies. Alright, so let's see here. Tablet supplies. Supplies to be used in the furnishing of tu uh, finishing touches of the na name tablet, which will be attached to the statue in bar lens. Okay, does it need to be high quality? Yes. And that's done. Well, okay. I mean, honestly, that's about how all crafting has been lately. Have you completed Mogson's request? Ugh. I think that's maybe the last time I gaze upon your work. It has been an honor, my friend. Here we go, tablet supplies. It's ink! I must say, the quality of your craftsmanship has always been re reliable. Come, let's go to the Mogmenters. At last, you must acknowledge the depth of our skill. Alright, and uh, I got a choice. I'll take... Uh... Oh, good. I get the Moogle Dance for this. Good. Good, good, good.
Now, of course it's night, because it's always night. Preparations for our trick are complete, Kupo. All we have to do left now is attach the tablet. Alrighty. Well, let's get to it then. And what did you put on? A tiny little moogle in the front. Because that's what I was missing. A koopo. A koopo. <laughs> a moogle. Unity and brotherhood, now and forevermore. Mogson, Bont McEmmer, Terrison de DeMille, Old E. Wrench de Forshort, Magon, Gillenburst. It's nice. Why did I get second billing, though? Hi, guys. Well, off an old E will insist it. I come. I pray it is worth my time. Hey, look, we added a plaque. What do you think? <laughs> Very good! Very good! I remember the day we finished building. I remember Morgoth's indignant protests. Where is the Mughal statue? You make me so mad, Kupo. And so on. It would seem his wish is now fulfilled. I take it everything meets with your satisfaction? Even the Mughal statue? Hey, likes your work. I had nothing to do with that part. Tidy baby gets a scream. It does. You have my blessing and my thanks. I shall keep the skies of Barland safe, to prove my words true. I am glad that you are here to enjoy statue. Did you hear that, Kupo? Gumbers approves! Gumbers approves! Finally, the will, determination, and perseverance, the Mogmenders have completed their first major project! And now you will never get a second. And the Ashgardians get to do the Moogle Dance out of nowhere for no reason. And from this we learn it. Now we can do the monkey with some twirls. Reputation is sworn. Reputation with the bog benders. Received experience point bonus upon cleaning their stuff. Not that it matters because it's locked for me. And you now have access to a wider selection of wares for your mog benders. You've learned the Moogle Dance. Very good. Top mog instead of dog. I get it. Ha! Ah, okay. Uh, let's go over here. Or. Carb Cooper Nut Exchange. What do we get? It's still the same stuff as before. This is all still the same stuff as before. However, for Gil... Items? Ah, here we go. We can finally buy the mount. You know what? I'll buy the mount. Why not? I can buy a tiny little dragon. Why not? I could also buy that sofa. I could also buy that lamp. I think I bought everything else I wanted to buy here. I'm not buying those slippers. They are silly. Very silly for me. One thing I should note about the, uh, the Mog Dance. You know, I th it's in my emote list. I'll take a look at it there. It's a shame the lighting's so bad. It's a shame the lighting's so bad. Yeah, uh, let's see. Where's the emote list? 
Yeah, I just learned it. It should be in special. Google Dance. Okay, so guys will always do the monkey in that direction, and gals will always do the monkey in the other direction. However, you always start by spinning to the same side. So if you all do it at the same time, it'll all go in a line like that. Nice one, active little dance. Just slight difference. Just slight difference. Pairs well if you do it with someone else, side by side. So that's that. I did not get bonus rep uh, bonus dailies with the Moogle, so we are not going to go on and continue to do that. I did not do my Vanu's dailies today, but as you can see, uh, at the time that you go from one week to the next, you're only about halfway, so it is about two weeks after you get done with it. Once they all reach eight, they'll all come together, and then I'll be able to do that quest, which I think is very special, and has one of my favorite dances in the game as a reward. I look forward to getting that. What else can I do for our weekly nonsense? Well, I do have Monago to go and see. Yeah, let's go see Monago. It's still night. Well, let's see, what does Monago need? I don't think I prepared these ahead of time. So I will have to make these. Let's see. Far Eastern Antique. Three of them. Hey, Strange Wilson. Uh, let's see. What's up, Boldridge? Hope you're having a good start to your weekend. I am! So far, so good. Can't complain. I do not think that the custom deliveries were changed at this point in time to only require one thing, so I'm going to get that. Yep, that needs two, so I need six of that, and it spoils what I need next. Six of that, nine of that. This is not the supplies I need. This is supplies one. Did I go to supplies two twice? I think I did. Okay, so six of you. And nine of you. All right, let's get to crafting. As ever, I am way too powerful for this. Hey, Jade. Uh, you were listening to music. It'll be back on Adam Mountain Toys in a bit on Miss Pepper. Excellent. I do think that it will be more main story today, unless people want to see a different kind of side content. Everything is available. Well, everything from Stormblood. Except Heaven on High. In order to do Heaven on High, I still have to do more Palace of the Dead. We did not do very well on Palace of the Dead last week. No one in particular is fault. We got a Mimic, and then we were stingy with our Pomanders. Uh, you just started progressing through this game. Almost done with a Realm Reborn on your first character. Excellent! I hope that you are enjoying the experience. A Realm Reborn is... certainly an experience. If you're liking a Realm Reborn, you will like the rest of the game. All right, now for the Gold Saucer uh, Consolation Prizes. Because at the Gold Saucer, everyone goes home a winner, even if you aren't a winner. Yeah, I kind of get that. I feel like it's rigged, so I'll always win. But I'll always just win more Tricky Cheese tokens. I should probably make a macro so I don't have to do this crafting manually, but it's easy enough. I remember the pattern. It's practically muscle memory to me at this point. Ooh, is this going to take three? I should probably do the manipulation before the waste knot. 
But it's also not a problem, because I'm still crushing it. One more of these. So what class did you decide to do for your first one? If you do not mind me asking. Oh, that was already done. Oh, well. All right, that's all set up and ready to go. Buy this over here, this over here. It doesn't matter how it's arranged in my inventory, but I think that looks nice. Uh, you're working on Summoner. We're looking forward to a class unlocked at level 50. I see. Yeah, Summoner's... Summoner is an excellent choice for first class, because then you can always change over to Scholar if you feel like the queues are taking too long. Not that... Not that that's really a thing that you should do, because, like, the, then you don't know what the class is when you play into it. Let me word that better. Um, it's kind of like the problem that people have when they pick up uh, Dark Knight, Gunbreaker, or Sage for their, their first class. Oftentimes, they have no idea what they're doing with it. So, they're very, very squishy, and they're very, like... They might not be so good at getting threat, they might not be so good at using their cooldowns to keep someone alive. Scholar has a similar situation, where people level their summoner all the way up, and then they're like, I want to try Scholar out, that's already max level, and they're like, how do I use any of these? But no, summoner... Summoner is a great class. I like what they did with it, this expansion. It finally feels like summoner. As opposed to a warlock from World of Warcraft that was a dot class that just so happened to have a pet. I don't think it's going to get a major overhaul ex next expansion. It could do with a few extra buttons. I feel like of DPS classes, Summoner has some of the fewest buttons that you can hit. Which is not a bad thing. Hitting them in the right order and at the right time is still very important, but... You know, I, I feel like it could stand to have one more button. As long as that button's meaningful. I hope that makes sense. Much obliged for all your help, Bond. The soldiers uh, families. I'm sorry, I did the Moogle voice. Much obliged for all the help, Bond. The soldiers' families will give their thanks as well. Alright, Far Eastern Antique. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, do I have a favorite class? I have a favorite class for every role. Uh, for melee, I like Monk. For tank, I like Paladin. For healer, I like White... Or, hmm. It's, it's a hard choice there. Sage and White Mage are both very fun. If I had to choose one... If I had to choose one between the two, it would probably be Sage. I really like Sage. Uh, for Caster, I like Red Mage. Summoner is a close second. I do not enjoy Black Mage. And for Ranged, I like Machinist. If I had to pick my favorite out of all those, probably Paladin. Paladin is probably my favorite class, so I look very much... I very much look forward to Endwalker. I also hope I enjoy Viper for the, for the newer expansion. We'll see. It's not out yet. Our Eastern Antiques, is it? Damned if... Oh, wait, I, I read this last week. Another one. And another one. That ought to do it for now, Bont. Give me a moment to add this to our next ongoing shipment. It's even better than we hoped, Bont. The old Don collectors did their best to outbid each other for our Far Eastern collectibles. Their proceeds far exceed our expectations. We have enough to expand our operations and start looking after more families. Excuse me, I'm... Well, no one of consequence, really. It was my son who had fought and died for resistance. I came to thank you for your kindness and generosity, especially at a time like this when everyone should be looking for bigger and more important challenges, like the rebuilding of our great nation. 
My son likes to say when he was fighting the Sunish, he would come home to be a merchant. He'd sell anything and everything so that he could look at, uh, earn the money and look after me. I suppose in the way he is now, but I'll give it all up for and more if I... I I'm sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful for what you've done for me and mine, but... Thank you, sir. Good day to you. Her son died in the main tower at Specula in Paris fell. I was with Conrad before it happened, with him as he was urging those damn fool skulls to lay down their arms and surrender. They managed to do it, and then... And then... Part of me still wonders. After, did we owe it to them to try and save them too? To dig through the rubble to try and help the ones who were trying to kill us only moments before? Conrad would have wanted it, I know. It was in no state to give orders, and those of us that were, well... So he died, and they died. Conrad, our comrades, enemies that surrendered, and those that didn't. Death all round and round. Not that any of us had any inkling of what was coming. Would Conrad have spent all that time negotiating if he had? If he had to fool many others would still be alive if he had? If, 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 sodding if! Sorry, no use dwelling on it. Best look here, here and now. To what good we've done, and what more we can do. All this talk of Conrad. I don't know if you knew, but he had a wife. I've not taken any guilt of her yet. I reckon she'd like to refuse until she knows that others are looked after. So I thought it best to wait. When the time comes, though, perhaps we ought to go and see her together. Alright, and they give me more food. Excellent. Minago is delighted with your efforts. She now considers you a benefactor of the Resistance, Windows, and Orphans Fund. And yet there's still much more to do! Like before, I reckon it's best if we try to trade with a more diverse range of collectibles. Next, I'm thinking we ought to try a hand at con consolation prizes from the Gold Saucer. I trust you're familiar with the Saucer and its many delights. It's no secret, but in case you weren't aware, it employs more than a few Alamegans. One of them happens to be a friend of mine. I mentioned the fun one day, and just like that, we got ourselves a new partner in crime. We do crime here? Let me explain. There are many prizes available only at the Gold Saucer. Commodities sold exclusively to them by certain select suppliers. We're now one of them, Savvy. Alright, I get it. I'll wager you didn't think a soldier like me had any uh, luck with places at the saucer, huh? But you're wondering if I might run off with our profits and spend it all on MGP and silly hats? No! Wait, hats exist? With hair like this, like hells I will. Oh, I see. You are also a hat avoider. Alright, enough talk. Let's get to work. As the weapons has been expended, we can turn in more. What does she have to say about our gold saucer consolation prize? Not everybody can walk away from the saucer with a fabulous prize. Some people even prefer these. And there are even others who won't even bother to visit, but like to pretend they did. Or maybe they got some other reason for buying them. Who knows? And it's... Immaculate quality. In fact, I might cap out on my scripts. Oh, just barely avoided that. Alright. So that's Monago's story progress for a week. We still have Kuranai. That dialogue is the same every week. That's it. I need to spend my scripts. Custom deliveries are very good for leveling up your crafting classes. Like, on the cheap. If all you're doing is playing once a week, yeah, sure, go ahead. As for scripts, after you finish getting all your gear with them... I guess it's time for me to get other nonsense. Let's see, white script exchange other. Uh, let's see, I can get... Some music rolls. Do I already know this one? Yes. I already know all these music rolls. Do I have, uh... I can buy... I can buy some bread for my house. It's not very much. 
Uh, let's see. Level 70 materials? No, I don't need any of this. I guess it's time for me to buy materia. I can't buy the best materia yet, but I can buy some materia. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's just... Just, just buy all that. Excellent. I'll get more scripts. Oh, right, my rotators. They exist. That's a thing to do. Thanks for the, uh... pieces. Ooh, something sold this week. That's wonderful. More quick stuff from you. Ooh, something else sold. It's nice that all those quest rewards I got while going through Stormblood have been going. Let's give you these colored rocks. And the cupboard, why not? Okay. So I means the next one would be Kurenai, who's at the bottom of the sea. Kurenai. Okay, so it's not not it's not okay, okay, okay. It's t uh, Tommy Mizu. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I hope you don't mind that there's a uh, mild location-based uh, spoilers inside the streams. But I guess that's really hard to avoid if you play this game, isn't it? These places sure look neat. Please look forward to the context of why you go here later. <laughs> Alright, I had, uh... Rocks to give it to you. Yeah, I gave you some of these last week. I got extra. It's fine. Yes, you're excited to continue to explore Eorzea. Yeah, I, I enjoy Eorzea. I don't enjoy Eureka. It's part of Eorzea. But, <laughs> but I guess that's just the nature of it. Eureka is absolutely the most filler content I could ever do in this game. It's just grinding. It's just grinding. As anticipated, our guards were very pleased with their new harpoons. What I did not anticipate, however, was that our use would also take a shine to them. They were quite fascinated by its foreign construction. And this is a source of delight for you, Hizui. Placing your trust in land dwellers, I cannot think of a greater folly. It will not do for you for this sentient to spread. Oh, have we been found out? We have. I mean, Lord Jikan, and Lord Shiosai besides. To what do I owe the honor? It has come to my attention that our citizens are being led astray, seduced by the outsider medicine, and now outsider weapons. I labor to comprehend how the princess could permit this. It is bad enough that the guards have taken up these harpoons, and our use desire them too. Mark my words, this can end in naught but bloodshed. As we forget, both the Confederacy and Kojin were dragged into Doma's bloody conflict against the Empire. Should their leader, this Lord Hien, though their people are arming themselves to his insatiable thirst for war, he may well come banging on our gates to demand our participation. Surely you see the danger. With respect, my lord, may I remind you that this is not the pa uh, palace. There are eyes and ears all around. Foreign eyes and ears. Like me! I would remind you also of the agreement that you and your fellow elders would watch, watch how the citizens respond to her grace's plan. As impartial observers, your words can ill be described as impartial. We have not to gain by cowering inside our little bubble. Nay, by shutting out the rest of the world in the name of tradition, we had but to consign ourselves to a slow demise. You presume to lecture me, Hazui? You know little and less of the worldly matters, whose sole purpose is to attend to her grace. 
He has a very unfortunate face. Oh, for a moment, though, I thought the princess herself was before me and addressing me. You have ever shared her looks, but it seems you have taken on her mannerisms as well. Uh, yes. That must be all that you're serving her, Grace. I have, uh, come to know her mind as though it were my own. Huh. Well, I suppose this is but a fleeting infatuation with a novel and new. Given time, the people will remember the dangers that lurk within and come to their senses. Now there's a man you can love to hate. I take it he's a conservative in chief. You might say that. And yet, independence is his, of his influence. Many others harbor the self-same fear. I fear that, by throwing open Sweden Osato's gates, we would be swallowed up in a maelstrom of foreign agenda. Why well, a simple bloody harpoon can trigger such a fearful reaction. Your people really have no stomach for conflict. Well, no with any sense would, but this is just unhealthy. Indeed. Tis an irrational fear, ingrained over generations and perpetuated by willful ignorance. If we are to free ourselves from it, we must have the chance to know the world above. Thanks for the food! Karen, I is delighted with your efforts. She now considers you a stalwart Sweden Osato emergence. And yet, there is still much work to be done for the people of Sweden Osato are to shed their apprehensions toward the outside world. To that end, Karen, I has a new favor to ask of you. Oh, Grace, if I may, there is a particular item that would request of Master Bot. But of course, Yosai. None amongst us is more familiar with our people's daily lives than you. What is it that ails them? As your grace knows, you dwell at the bottom of the sea by virtue of the cogent's enchantment. Yet though we have the air to breathe and the will to live, our home has ever been a bitterly cold place. Due to our closed environment, we cannot avail ourselves of the benefits of fire. And so we have had to endure, covering ourselves in such garments as we possess. Though this may suffice for the young and healthy, the old in turn struggle simply to survive. Oh yeah, because if you made a fire under the water, it would just fill with smoke and then you would all be just be breathing smoke. And that's really unhealthy. Yeah, how do you stay warm down here? Indeed, the cold has ever been a trial for us. Yet I had heard of a place above far colder still, a land of endless winter where ice falls instead of rain. There, a great nation thrives, and its people must have effective ways of coping with the frozen clime, such as garbs of transcendent warmth. That's gotta be Corthus, I reckon. I've never been that far out of Ulda, at least not until now. But you've definitely been there, right, Bont? Oh yeah, I'm something of a savior of Ishgard. A more dependable adventurer I have never known. I shall let you all return to your work then. By your leave. Of course, you give a nice formal bow. And you're gone. Permit me to echo Shiosai's sentiment. Truly, we are blessed to have dependable allies such as you. I shall look forward to seeing the fruits of your labors. And another bow, and a nice cheer from the old on. Okay. Custom deliveries are available. Okay, what does she want now? As a gatherer... Let's see, I could get this file of thermal fluid. Uh, this liquid can be applied to great effect as insulation. Or we could just make them coats. Corth and cold weather gear. Various items so effective against the cold that no Corthin would leave home without them. Or we could fish up the warm scale Pieco. This variety of Pieco has adapted to thrive in freezing environs. I'm going to just craft the coat. It's just so much faster and easier to craft the darn thing. Because you can just go over here to this merchant. And I should be able to just uh, purchase items. Yeah, here it is. I don't know where this guy's got something for a foreign coat under the sea. But I guess they are traders by nature. So that's how we're doing this. That's how we're doing this. So I need nine of those. Like so. 
Hey, look, more crafting. Under the sea, under the sea, under the sea, under the sea. You can be down here crafting together with me. Yeah, that kind of worked. That kind of worked. Not really. Yeah, that's slightly more efficient doing that before that. But yeah, the reason I like Paladin, going back on a track from forever ago, the reason I like Paladin is because I can pull so many groups from the brink of destruction and despair and offer so many levels of support that I just can't really do with other tanks. It also is very ranged compared to other tanks with a fairly flexible rotation. And that I can delay using its ranged attack until I need a ranged attack. A little bit. Like, I can't stall it forever. It has slightly fewer personal cooldowns compared to other tanks, but it has an extra area cooldown to help out a party. It also has unique utility in the form of cover, which allows you to cheese certain mechanics in certain fights, or just be the tank for one swap without actually swapping tank. Or keep your healer alive while they're trying to hard cast a raise, but an AoE pops up on top of them. It's unique. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, it doesn't do as much damage as the other tanks. I've never really been one to care about that. I like the feel, the theming, and the utility of the class. Alright. Hey, girl and I, we got some coats. My, such thick, warm garments. Not we have under, uh, not that we have could compare to this. Thus clothed, we need no longer shiver through the night. Yeah, just sleep with your coat on. If it's cold enough, that's what you have to do to survive, right? And the task is done. Alright. So that's my Moogle tribe's done. Those are my custom deliveries done. I cannot do anything for Zloey. Can only do it for two custom delivery people in a week. Which is going to make some of the later expansions a little bit harder. Because they start to add three per expansion. Ah oh, well, what can I do about it? Not a lot. So let's see, where does that take us? Where does that take us? Uh, There is one more weekly thing I can do. Which happens to be right next to the main story quest. I'm going to go to the Domain Enclave. And I'm going to get money from them by giving them money. I, again, I have no idea how this helps them. It, it's a game mechanic. I'm not going to worry about it. My flying mount is adorable. Yes, thank you. That's another thing I like about this game. Every mount is a flying mount. Uh, let's see. This is... This is the Mega Shiba. Is a paid account uh, is a paid store mount that is account wide. It has three emotes on it. The first one makes the dog bark, or bark. The second one makes the dog really happy, which kind of throws your character everywhere. And the third one lets you pet the dog. It feels bad, and you get to pet the dog. We love this dog. This was given to me as a birthday gift, uh, three years ago, I believe. It might have been two years ago. It might be a two-year-old mount. Either way, uh, I have... One thing that this game does, one thing that they say they do anyway, is that when people buy stuff in the store, it gives them the time and the effort and the knowledge to be able to make stuff in the game for free that they add later. So, that dog is there, but from an event that is still ongoing in the game right now, the Final Fantasy XVI crossover event, you can get a very similar amount without paying that additional fee, which is Torgle. You have to be level 50 to do this quest, and you can pet this dog too. 
They learn from one to make the other. Alright, so... Last week on the Domain Enclave, we were building the yard. Last week on Domain Enclave, we were building the yard. Which is where they hope to be able to make uh, production facilities. We previously, fi we previously finished making the... Uh, the stalls? The 10,000 stalls? Which was where all the food is made. So this will be a bit less interesting than seeing all the food get made, but still pretty interesting to see how their industry will work. Uh, I'm looking around to see if I can find somebody. I think as this continued to grow and expand, you eventually got to see, like, a story unfold. And I don't think he's here. I think there was a guy dangling from a high location at every single one of these. Truly terrifying. Oh, well, I can't find it. And these people are not going to repeat their dialogue. Okay. Let's get on with it. Okay. I think I need to donate, uh... Alright, we'll have 14... 5... And two ones. Just for good measure. Because I want to have as little waste as possible. Okay. Okay, no, I'm gonna need, like, at least five more than what I got. Yeah, I don't want to give him the whole stack. I don't want to give him the whole stack. I don't want to be that wasteful. Uh, one more? Ah, 500 off. You know what? You know what? Just take these. I don't even... Like, I, got, I must have got these while doing some dungeons somewhere. Oh, no, that's all I can give them. Well, that's not very, very wasteful. Uh, let's see. You're racing to finish Rome Reborn and get Torgal. Uh, level 44 at the moment. Going to continue later today. Yeah, you're definitely going to make it. I think the event continues until, like, the 4th or the 7th of next month. You got plenty of time. Plenty of time. So don't burn yourself out, alright? That is the thing that happens in this game. That's why some people be like, Bolt, why are you still doing side content? Just do the story, Bolt. Just do the story. I'm like, no. No, I have to do some crafting. No, today I feel like mining. <laughs> in, in a game like this, it, it's not it's not a race. It's a marathon. Unless you have only one day left to do a certain thing. Then yeah, then it's a race. This game doesn't do that very frequently. On behalf of the in Kai Bont, I thank you for your support. Yeah, no problem. Work on the art has begun in earnest, as you may have noticed. It will encompass a rather large section of the Enclave, including the area directly behind me. You see, after a, a liberation, the Shazenkai concluded that we would need to secure more, much more space in order for a plan to succeed, far in excess of what we designated for 10,000 souls. This might not have been the case had we not decided to carry out two proposals that are arguably at cross-purpose, but so be it. At the very least, I am told Master Tsurunaki has the high spirits. Perhaps you might consider calling on him and seeing his worker's progress? But I must! But what if I want to put more money in the basket? Not that I wish to refuse you, Bon, but I think it might be better if you were to go and see Master Tsurunaki before you accept another donation. But I must! Uh, let's see, I'm right. Feel a bit of urgency to catch up with all the content. Yeah! That's one thing that I learned while playing this game. Like, I made that mistake in earlier expansions when I introduced people to this game. Like, some friends. That, like, come on, you gotta get through the expansion in order to be able to play in the latest raids with me. Come on, you gotta do it. Go, 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 go. No, that, that's a recipe for burnout. That's a recipe for burnout. So now when I introduce people to this game, it's like, well, if you don't feel like doing the story today, don't do the story. Hey, you wanna do some side content? You wanna do something that's a gold saucer? You want to do? You want me to show you how to do some crafting? You want me to like? You want to pick up Blue Mage? 
Yeah, I'm all for the side content now. Gonna take a drink of water. Oh, there's a warrior. Already in a good word. The Shazen Guy has put the plans in motion. I'll have my smithy once more. Never dared I dreamed this day would come. Noma burned, Lord Kyan died. All because we were fools. We never and never again would I be a fool. But then you and the boy, Issei, and a girl, Lise, you spoke sense. Bear to rest dead as a fool and suffer a life without dreams. Ah, what's all this blubber ever come consumes me? Enough. Let us speak of the work. That is what matters, eh? Hey? The carpenters have been claimed that side for their own. My blood may run with iron, but even I know a doma wants her lumber. So with what we begin? Blessed are we to live at the mouth of the one river. It is such a human climb. Now a few teachers better than rot and rust. <laughs> and here will be my smithy. Elm to the forge and anvil. But not yet, not yet. Much iron lies beneath doma and soil, waiting to be claimed, waiting to be shaped. All that we need, she provided. Water, wood, ore. The materials are ours to command. The forge are the tools for farmers, cooks, for all! Or so it once was. Imperials robbed us and sneak thieves stole much of our mineral wealth. For the Empire, ugh! To other provinces, I would send Doma riches, and in return we received their refuse. Rusted pots, broken plows, a travesty it was, and still is. Still we rely on inferior tools forced upon us by our conquerors, but no longer. Doma knows what Doma needs, and she will make it with her own two hands. To this end, I will give everything, I swear. I should like to see you before I die, and to that end we will need your help. <laughs> Construction of the yard is proceeding apace, and Zeranaki is confident that they will soon have the means to craft a wide variety of tools to fulfill the needs of the people of Doma. As you continue to contribute to the Shazenkai and a reconstruction effort, in what other ways might Doban Enclave grow and change? Hey, Bales? Hero Glories does a full stand at the end of its life to have to look forward to. Yet here I stand, and here I stand, at the beginning of a grand new endeavor. Tell me you do enjoy it too. Yeah, this is nice. I like rebuilding this nation by giving them money. That gives me more money. Doesn't look like they really changed much in the time between last time I looked and this time, but... I'm sure it'll advance again in just a second. On behalf of the Shazinkai Bond, I thank you for your support. Yeah, no problem. I am pleased to inform you that we have made great strides in our efforts to rebuild the Enclave. Oh? Well, they have roofs now. One little shelf at a time, they're gonna get this made. Owing to your many contributions, the Yard has seen further development. As you continue to contribute to Shazenkai and the reconstruction effort, in what other ways might the Doman Enclave grow and change? It stopped me at an unusual transitionary period. I am going to take a moment to go over and look at it. There might be something neat. Uh, let's see. That person said, really? It isn't too much for the elders to handle? Yet that person gets out of to work up high. Good for you. No change. No change. Blind, deaf, and dumb you are, boy. My smithy is nearly built. Yeah, nearly. It's getting there. Working on something over here, too. I saw another red pot in the corner. I'm checking out that red pot. Yeah, it's empty. Or no, it's full of water. Okay. Yeah, not nearly as good as looking into an oven. 
not nearly as good as looking into an oven. But it's getting there. Now then. More money. Let's see. Yeah, all this stuff would probably sell for more on the market board, but... Oh, wait, no. No, this is all done. Okay, yeah, uh... How about this? Not quite. This? Yeah, this, this... No, it's still not quite there. Not those. How about just the meat? And the salt? It's one gill short! Just like that. Okay. Oh, VR ears. Thank you, Jude. On behalf of the Shazin Kai Bond, I thank you for your support. Yeah, thanks for taking my junk. As I'm sure you're aware, the southern portion of the yard under Master Tsuranaki's uh, supervision is coming along quite well. Moreover, construction of the buildings adjacent to my office have begun. Several of these buildings have been des designated for production of traditional Doman arts and crafts, including paper. You may recall the gentleman we met in the stalls the other day, Master Aragir Ari? Araragi? Yeah, Araragi. He will be overseeing matters there. Come to think of it, perhaps you should go and introduce yourself to him? I know not if you have spoken with him since, but given the circumstances of that first meeting, he may not remember you. Yeah, he was arguing with the other codger at the time. So yeah, this is really coming along now. And how about over here? Nope, no, no noticeable change here. Hey, XCR. Uh, Doman's being rebuilt. We're doing it. One weekly donation at a time. We're going to fix up this town. How about you? Mond, was it? Forgive me. During a brief encounter at the stalls, I neglected to introduce myself properly. I'm Aragi, a papermaker by trade, just all I've ever known in altogether too long life. Greetings, Master Aragi. The construction of your paper mill is proceeding as planned, I trust? More or less, I. Well, it's not escaped my notice of progress the Ironmonger's workshop is outpacing mine. Eh. Uh, a thousand pardons, Master Aranaki. As you may be sure that Shazen Kai has not chosen to favor either one of your proposals over the other. I know that full well, child. Save your apologies. I but give voice to my frustration at falling behind that old goat. If Master Saranaki has wronged or offended you in some fashion, perhaps the Shazen Kai could uh, arbitrate. No, no, there's no need for anything so dramatic. We have a long and storied history, he and I. Though our paths have verged long ago, we as peers, masters of our respective trades. And yet, every time we cross paths, I cannot help but see him as a reckless apprentice he once was. He brings out the worst in me. But never mind that. You wish to know of our progress, yes? And you can see, it is on schedule. Your contributions have helped us come this far indeed. Though it will be some time before we can make bruising paper as before, rest assured that the day will come before you know it and quality will surpass all expectation. For centuries, dome and paper has been coveted the world over, and with good reason. The fibers are Kozo, a variety of your western mulberry, I believe, and the waters of the one river combine to create a product like none other. Each sheet is produced one at a time with a technique unchanged since antiquity. Though relatively quick, the process takes years to master, yet the effort is well worth it. Doman paper was prized for both its durability and its beauty, so much so that merchants would bicker over its squabble and strive to outbid one another, so certain they were that they could still turn a profit. Indeed, it was arguably our most successful export. Call me willing, it will be again. Which reminds me, Kuzikara, my dear, I trust that you have given thought to whom we might sell our paper to once production has commenced in earnest? Well, I'm aware of our agreement with the Zela traders in the Confederacy, I doubt very much that these parties will put much store in our product. We have made inquiries, but have yet to receive any replies. But you needn't worry about such things. We will see to it that mercantile matters. You and your workers should devote your energies to building the mill. 
Have no doubt that we are. I mislike losing to my iron-headed competitor. The road ahead is long, but I pray you will continue to walk it with us. Yeah. You guys keep giving me more money than I have earned, and I'm happy for that. Construction of the yard is proceeding apace, and Gazakura is confident that the Shazenkai will have found a wholesale trader willing to purchase paper by the time Aragi's mill is ready to begin production. As you continue to contribute to the Shazenkai and the reconstruction effort, in what other ways might the Doman Enclave grow and change? Also, you've been working your way through Etrian Odyssey Remaster playthrough. It's been fun. Just like it's old 2010, 2011 again. Yeah! Yeah! I did not beat the first game on the remaster because I feel like I did such a good job on it my initial playthrough. I might go through that again when I have more free time. Lately, I haven't even had the free time to go through Octopath, which I'm trying to record still. But I was able to perfect, according to Steam, both Etrian Odyssey 2 and 3. And I look forward to seeing if Atlas expands on it and releases more games. I would very much like them to release more games. Uh, did that building change any? Oh, this building's taller now, yes. Yes. He said, is this upside down? <laughs> they built the building. No, no, you're holding the, the blueprints upside down. Uh, my Quest 64 playthrough is one of your favorites of all time. Yeah! I... <laughs> the quality is really bad. The quality is really bad, but there was no better way for me to do that way back then. And I will never forget that, uh... Well, I mean, it was allowed then. The emulation I was using was really bad on the font. It was very difficult to read, with all that pink purple surrounding all the text. And I will never be forgiven myself for the mind is blowing. Yes, the mind is blowing! <laughs> uh, it'd be a bit of a dead series, sadly. Ah, uh, that's very unfortunate. Yeah, Atlas is probably pouring all their money onto Persona and Shin Megami. Because, like, they make money reliably. Etrian Odyssey doesn't. Which is unfortunate, because I much prefer that style of game. Uh, it really does blow the mind about how such good things can be not popular or good. But you know what, if it was popular and good, maybe I wouldn't like it as much, because, like, fan bases tend to ruin everything for me. I try not to let it happen, but it still happens. Let's see, any more? Nope. No more. No more Dominion Reconstruction this week. Okay, so, the main story is right there. The main story is right there in this game. I could continue the main story. I have avoided doing it for another week. However. However, we have options. We have options. Uh, you, they did that to with the remasters to gauge interest in a new game. Yes! Yes, they openly said as such. They were testing the waters to see if people wanted to, like, A, purchase their old games, and B, see if the series was good. Like, they did do work on it. Work was put into it in order to give it, like, better controller support and Steam Deck verification and, like, adding an additional music track that wasn't in the original. But was the work... Oh, that's a whale. Was it work worth it for them? We'll see. But no, back to this. Um, things that we can do. We have the Alliance Raid series, which is the return to Evilis, where we get to like see some more of Matsuno's writing. Yes, they brought Matsuno on in order to do the writing for that quest. So if you want me to read my lungs out, I can do the return to Evilis this stream. There is the Omega Raid series. Do we want to go and see what Sid is up to? What Biggs and Wedge are up to? We can go and do that raid series. Lots and lots and lots of fights inside that. If you liked Alexander, I'm not sure if you'll like Omega as much. It's still good, though. It's still good. Other things I could do... Uh, let's see. My warrior class has gone up significantly. Its abilities are locked. I feel scared going into roulettes because I don't have the abilities that I require in order to be able to function as a warrior. I'm not doing this necessarily for, um... I'm not doing warrior necessarily for, like, progressing it to be able to do more of it in the game, but it is a class that I am leveling because the dailies were giving it experience. 
and it is currently ability locked because I have not done this quest. So I can show the warrior story, for heaven's word. There's also Blue Mage. I have leveled Blue Mage to 70, so I can do the Stormblood Arc of Blue Mage. That is another thing I can do. So you know what? I'm going to make a poll. I'm going to make a poll. It looks like there's more than one person here, so I will make a poll. If there was just one person here, I would just ask. So let's see. What now? War, blue, Omega, Evilis, MSQ. I feel like there's something I'm missing. I feel like there's something I'm missing. Oh well. And the polls go. Oh yeah, I didn't get to add the um the four lords. You know what? We'll save the four lords for another week. We'll save the four lords for another week. There's also Eureka. Uh. Uh. I, I did Eureka last week. Let's let's not do Eureka again this week. Sorry we're adding that in. Yeah, no worries. What now? What do people want to see? Oh, that's a vote for blue. Are we doing blue? I guess we're doing blue. Nope, that's tied now. Warrior. <laughs> it's always a tie, isn't it? It's always a tie. And done. It's a tie between warrior and blue. Okay, the MSQ will wait again. <laughs> it, was, it was put to a vote. It was put to a vote. So let's see. Warrior. Their quest will begin all the way back here with Curious Gorge. As an additional note, I received food in the middle of a previous cutscene. I received food. So I'm going to be snacking while traveling. Yes, it's in a pa uh, uh, paper bag, so you might hear paper bag noises. Yep, there it is. The streamer has been fed. Voltage looked into the oven. It's a single cookie. Mm. Who makes cookies one at a time? One cookie in the oven. One cookie! You know what? One cookie would be pretty good right about now, but who makes one cookie? Video games, that's who. Mm. As ever, Curious Gorge always trains under the waterfall. How do I voice him? Do I remember? Better acts around. Curious Gorge looks eager to expand his combat repertoire. Bond, I scarce recognized you. The flames of battle have tempered you like fine steel. Since last we spoke, I've resolved to start upon the path of a warrior anew. I swore that I would not succumb to the beast within again, and I did as I did when I faced my brother in Wineport. Speaking of which, Broken Mountain has regained much of his strength, though when I speak to him of taking up the axe once more, he changes the subject and returns to his studies of Arcanima and other scholarly pursuits. Nevertheless, his desire to spread the teachings of our ancestry to every corner of Eorzea remains unchanged. And he couldn't have come at a better time. I just received a letter from Broken Mountain stating that he's uncovered information regarding ancient martial techniques. If, we've, if you're interested, and I'm sure you are, why not accompany me to Camp Bronze Lake so we might hear what he has to say together? And they also. I knew my brother would uncover something of value before long. He awaits us at Camp Bronze Lake. Let's not keep him idle for long. Up we go. 
It's funny, because even Stardew has multiple cookies in their icons for cookies. Yes. Yes. And Stardew Valley, you at least make three cookies at a time. But most other games, like, if you loot a cookie, it is one cookie. Just one. If you craft cookies, it's just one cookie. Actually, yeah, hold on. We, ha we have an oven in this game. We have a tiny little oven. Wait, let's, let's see. Hold on. Cookie. So, yeah. When we make cookies, we make a single cookie at a time. Including the Sky Builder stuff. I'm reading these. Grade 3 Sky Builder Sesame Cookie. In order to be classed as a Grade 3, each cookie must contain a certain number of sesame seeds. Needless to say, counting them is one of the most tedious tasks undertaken by the Sky Builders, though it works remarkably well as a cure for insomnia. How about the Grade 4 one? Ishgardian parents often tell their children that the sesame seeds are, in fact, dead flies that are trapped into the baker batter prior to baking. Not only does this have the effect of keeping the young one's hands out of the cookie jar, it also leads them to a few raised eyebrows in regards to their parents' choice of confectionery. We love it! But no, we only make one cookie! Although we make this homemade cookie set. This is finally you making an entire thing of cookies. But it's not for you to eat directly, you have to put it on a table and then eat it. Or the floor. You can eat these off the floor, they work too. I cannot make assorted cookies, because that's level 90. I have to have all the cookies and put them together on a plate. <laughs> you know what, I'll read the description for assorted cookies, I was looking right at it. I didn't read it. A delectable assemblage of cookies, <laughs> catering to various tastes, sure to satisfy any and every sweet tooth. But what if they have no teeth left after eating so many sweets? Alright, what am I doing? Where am I? Inside this building, probably. Sorry, brief cookie break. Ah, I knew a true warrior like you would never pass up an opportunity like this! The other cookie set aren't actually real cookies either. Oh no! Well, I do remember you, Bunt. The soul warrior to tame his inner beast. I shudder to think of what might have happened had you not been there to save us from ourselves. You know, the pre uh, precipitous nature of the forces we wield, as well as the consequences for losing control for even a moment. The beast does not scruple to discriminate between friend or foe. You have given free reign, it will lash out at both. I poured over countless tomes in search of knowledge of how to tame the beast within, as you did, but my efforts have thus far proven fruitless. All I could have found are ridiculous tales of technique that, if the author could be believed, would make Ralker himself cower in fear. The eldest son often told tales of legendary warriors to inspire the youth. Are you sure there's no truth in yours? Right. There are depictions of techniques used by the hero Mithril Heart, but the details are difficult to swallow. No warrior, alive or dead, can rip off a behemoth's arm with just his bare hands. The tales are filled with similar outrageous accounts. Brother, it would be a waste of our time to investigate their veracity when we know so little of how to tame the inner beast. Besides, you know as well as I do that Mithril Heart is not more than a fairy tale hero. What if I could prove that Mithril Heart was for flesh and blood? Would you be willing to continue your studies then? Never did he stray from the path of a warrior, even as the years took their toll. Axe in hand, to Silver Tear Falls he would go, never return. Which means if he truly lived, then there may be something there which proves it. If your axe sheath gorge, you will be well deserved to spend time spent swinging your axe as a practice dummy than searching for ghosts. Oh hi, it's the guy from the Rotters Guild! Well met, what? Why, thanks for ensuring that my old friend here lives to learn from his mistakes, although it seems the lesson didn't stick for long. Oskirt has been kind enough to keep me busy, busy for his work and assist me during my recovery. Anything to keep a former comrade out of trouble. As for these stories, far-fetched as they may seem, it would be so quick to dismiss them. 
Lest we forget, Vault has more than a few legendary accomplishments to his name. Wait a minute, no, no, he's not from the Marauder's Guild. He's, um, he's the company of Heroes Leader, isn't he? Sorry, I misidentified him. Well, if by chance you found proof of Mithril Heart's existence, I would reconsider. But leave my brother out of it. I may not be ready to accompany you, but I can give you advice on where to start. Seek out the Sons of St. Coinark. I'm certain they know something of Mithril Heart's final journey. I'll, I'll go and check then. Sure was a lot of muscle in this room. Bring me evidence of Mithril Heart's existence, and I will reconsider my stance on the story's veracity. Okay. Time to axe around. And I think this is just the uh, the intro quest. Some bars, yes. Not to be confused with the amount of bars that we find inside of the uh, Azim Step. These are a very different kind of borrows. Oh, good thing you two are right next to each other. Huh. Well, when the waters of Silverton Falls receded 15 years ago and revealed a treasure trove of artifacts of spanning eras, many of which have been yet to be recovered. I do not know if any of those artifacts might return to relation to this mithril heart, but it might serve you well to begin your search there in the previously submerged areas. Relics belonging to an ancient Hellsguard warrior. Where we're up to our neck in Alagon artifacts, I can't say that I've come across any that would be what you seek. Anyone else? Yeah, the indicator for the region is huge. There has to be one other person somewhere. They weren't on top. Oh, here we go. We focus our research on artifacts from the Alagon Empire. As such, there may be more recent discoveries which were ignored by a single-minded researcher. Alright. Let's look for something. Hey, look, right on the edge of the water. I get to dig. After cursory search, you find nothing of interest. Spot number two! Got something! We'll find out what it is when we get back to Silver Tier Falls. Uh, let's see... Bronze Lake. Mm. Oh, you guys got back fast. Is that the axe of Mithril Heart? By the Twelve, the tales are true! Quickly now, you must show it to my brother! If anyone can prove the existence of Mithril Heart, you can! Well, have you uncovered any proof of Mithril Heart's existence? Mithril Heart's Battle Axe! An aged battle axe, featureless, but for the initials MH, crudely engraved onto the haft. Well, it's not the size of evidence, but it's really, really convenient that was there. His axe, engravings and the curvature of the blade are exactly as described. The thing that immediately tasted the steel. Surely this proves that Mithril Heart is more than a mere campfire story. With a steel heart and its legendary techniques, we'll have the strength to slay even the strongest of beasts by the dozen! If Mithril Heart's feats are indeed possible, then the knowledge of how he had performed them would prove it valuable to restore the warrior's reputation. 
You could show the people of Eorzea the true potential of the warrior. Surely no small number of them would feel compelled to take up the axe. Indeed, it would prove a great boon for our cause. Very well, I'll return to my tomes and scour the friendly passage relating to Mithril Heart. Mind you, ancient techniques may rouse the inner beast like none before. Of this I have no doubt, which is why you must not take the training lightly. When I cover more information, you will have needs to be ready. And so this begins the Heavensward era for the warrior. The next warrior quest will be available upon reaching level 52, which you are more than ready for. Duty and the Beast. Ha, <laughs> I see what they did there. Broken Mountain seems to have reservations about digging deeper into his newfound knowledge. I can tell you have not neglected your training bond, which is good. I have continued my research into the tales of Mithril Heart and his legendary feats. I believe I've come across a passage which may guide you in your next step. Before I share my findings with you, however, there is another matter of pressing importance that must be resolved before we continue. A ferocious beast has been sighted in the Weeping Saint in the Corthus Central Highlands, and I would have you, me, and my brother go and slay it. It has posed a great threat uh, to any who venture nearby. I realize that it may seem like a trivial matter, but I assure you that it is of the utmost importance. Alright. Uh, where's that? Okay, that's kind of near an Aetherite. Oh, that's in Gortha Central, not Western. Okay, I thought it would be in Western because, you know, Heavensward music. Oh, good, they're mowing the lawn outside. Fortunately, it seems like the Equalizer is doing a good job of, uh, having that not get it. Oh, good, there's a fade on top of my quest destination. Some more food in my mouth. Oh, good! A solo duty! What's wrong, guy? Also, my equipment is really bad. Especially my weapon. Oh, my warrior, so, uh. This might take a while. Thanks to twelve, you've made it. The beast caught us unawares. My brother leapt to my defense and slew it, but in a moment... He was overcome by his inner beast, as before, at Wineport. I knew it was folly to bring him here. I beg of you, stop him before he hurts himself. Alright. We'll beat more sense into him, we've beaten him into it before. Hey, guy. The beast! It's... Ah! You almost succumbed to the beast within. Stop him before all is lost. Okay, I'm fully buffed. Give one more cycle to rev up. Yeah. Flee, insignificant well. Each attack only serves to go with the beast. What has he become? That's a nice damage buff. Up your home gang me, I can't move. I should be able to get out of that in time. Oh I dodged it! How fortuitous! I think I dodged the damage buff. Oh, the damage buff was on him. Never mind. Oh, well, I still win.
Recollection of past battles rouses your inner beast. Bud, speak to me. I'm fine. Hey, you got your awake. But if I blow landed, you and my brother both collapsed. What happened, Bud? Do you remember anything? Uh, I hit him very hard, and then I passed out, and now I know more about fighting. Your inner beast lashed out as if trying to escape? Yeah, I guess I said that. I see. Filling your numbers is likely your body recovering from shock. Otherwise, you appear to be unharmed and full control of your faculties. I owe you an apology, Bond. Once again, I lost control. I have already tended to my brother's wounds. You needn't worry. Alas, as I suspected, my brother yet lacks the strength to control his inner beast. As you may, be, may have guessed, I called you both here to see if my fears were founded. I did not wish to give you cause to worry, brother, but when the beast stirs, my mind grows clouded and my will falters. Or perhaps I remain silent to avoid facing the bitter truth. Who wouldn't trust a protector that could turn on them at any moment? It pays me to do this, but I cannot allow you to accompany Bond on any longer. The risk is far too great for you both. What? May have it is best that we continue this conversation at safety at Camp Ron's Lake. God damn it! Bond, you've you've grown so much stronger. Well, I've hardly grown at all. Show Eorzea what it means to be a true warrior. I know. I know you can. Yep, that fate's still there. And we just leave. We just leave. Wow, this food's already gone cold. That's fine. Hmm. So, my brother has been in a dour mood ever since we returned from Weeping Saint. Well, that's only natural given his lack of progress, and maybe for the best. The teachings of our people are too dangerous for those who lack control. That is why I chose to focus my studies on how to tame the inner beast. For the sake of my brother, I wanted not more than to solve this dilemma. But when fate intervened, and then I stumbled upon the tales of Mithril Heart. But mayhap we need not forsake one pursuit for the other. Though in seeking the techniques of Eld, we may discover a reason why you can hold the beast in check so easily while my brother and I fumble like children. However, I am still concerned with what you told me before, about your inner beast lashing out during their duel with my brother. Can you tell me of that once more? Uh, I hit him very hard, and then I blocked out. Simply recalling the duel rouses your inner beast from his slumber. Wait, it all makes sense. Only the flames of animosity may temper a warrior's soul. I came across these words in a passage, and I did not understand their meaning until now. The inner beast stirs when facing an opponent who pushes us to pass our physical and mental limits. Only in that moment can we attain mastery of new techniques. This must be how heroes of Eld like Mithril Heart became such legends. They traveled the realm, testing their mettle against the fiercest foes they could find. Your path is clear then, Bond. You must challenge yourself as they did. You must grow stronger and own your skills to new heights. That taught me nothing! Because they rearranged abilities and put them at different places and removed other abilities throughout the expansions. I learned a new technique! It's nothing! That's okay. We'll get something really good this time. Hey, look! Inner Beast Mastery, which changes Inner Beast to Fell Cleave! Fell Cleave! Warrior's favorite ability, Fell Cleave! Broken Mountain has some concerns about his brother. Well, that Bond, it seems your trials have prepared you for a next step down your long path. However, while your progress is truly really remarkable, I'm afraid my brother is still fears and folly of, fury of his Inner Beast. Here at the training yard, he swings his axe with hesitation. Seeking to test himself against live foes, he has joined the Maelstrom's efforts to repel a recent spate of Cobalt attacks. However, Whalescat has sent word that his ferocity on the field of battle is not what it once was. My brother has long admired your will. Test your action against ever stronger adversaries, and master the techniques of Eld, and by doing so serve to inspire him and all who walk the path of the warrior. Remember the words set forth in the ancient tomes, and seek foes that test your very limits your mind and body. 
The heat of battle will awaken the beast within, bestowing upon you knowledge of their ancestors. Luckily, the path you have walked has tried on before. You will need only wander to land. You need not wander to land aimlessly. According to Atom's mithril heart, what spends a season hunting the hulking grizzly bears that stalk Abalathia's spine, the largest of which is said to live in the behemoth, to, ah, said to even rival the behemoth in size. Make your way to Tailfeather, home to uh, many seasoned hunters that know the lay of the land and the creatures inhabiting it. Find the beast of Mithril Heart's hunt and dash yourself against their razor claws as he did. Their dinks are available with you in your grasp, but only if you can transcend your limits of mind and body. Go kill a bear! Go talk to hunters about learning about a bear. After all, the most dangerous thing in Ishgard is not dragons, but bears! Well, maybe the core Regina, too. Alright, who we got here? Ask any hunter around here about the grizzlies of Abilathia's spine, they'll like to tell you the same thing. If you see one, run. I mean, that's fair advice. You'll have a right fool if you're thinking about going after one of those massive beasts alone. Best bring about a dozen friends along if you want to come out in one piece. You got the men that I hear the hunting parties uh, using uh, Wiffholm well, Sam to draw them out. If you head up the Willem River, you're likely to find a few of them what died during the salmon run. Grab a fisherman. Can't I just get fresh? Can't I just get fresh? I could hardly forget the size of the beast I saw that day. I was striking a chocobo around the hundred throws, and I spotted this bear near as big as a house, drinking its fill from the waters. I didn't dare get any closer. I went home that day's hunt empty-handed. So a giant house-sized bear, drawn out by fish, near a river. Okay. I can do that. I'm almost to the red mark. And down. Get the rest of the burger out of that. And it's fish. Let's take a look at this fish. Willem salmon. A lifeless salmon. The last of its energy spent spawning in the upper Willam River. Aw. Well. Life's job, our job is, the life, yeah. Your life's job is done. You did well. Now you get to be nourishment. Or bait. First we take out this bear. Because this bear is on top of the destination. Build a couple points. Put the fish on the brock. Now, how big is this bear? They said it was as big as a house. That's pretty big. Have you seen houses bigger than that, though? Yeah, it's about the same difficulty as the smaller bear. Looks like size isn't everything. Is this what it's like to play a lolofell you just hit everything in the kneecaps? Uh, back to Bronze Lake. Fair enough. But if you're a, a Lollafell doing that, aren't you then only hitting the toe? Hey, 
Hey, guy. Wellskate and I just returned from our duties in Lenosha. The cowardly kobolds never stood a chance. A dip in the hot spring seems like just a reward for our bravery. Broken Mountain told me of the daring hunt you set upon. I'd like to bear about it, or hear about it even. <laughs> Sounds like the type of story that'll get our blood flowing. Uh, well, there was a bear. I drew it out with a fish. Ah, Bunt, welcome back. My brother and Whiskit just telling me about the Maelstrom's success in Lenosha. Aye, the kobolds scattered as frightened mice before our wrath. I dare say they'll think twice before setting foot in laments and soil again. Bunt, as eager as I am to hear about your journey at Abalathia's spine, I can't afford to waste any more time away from my training. The kobolds may be licking their wounds for now, but they'll be back and in greater number. Till next we meet. Ugh. Grace Gord had acted in high spirits since our return from Little Domenza, but Mr. Vell scarcely hides the truth. What he said was true. Our operation against the Kobolds was a resounding success. However, troops that fought alongside him say that Grace Gord was noticeably shaken during the battle, as if afraid the tide would turn at a moment's notice. Though it's not for fear of the Kobolds that got his axe to waver, he still fears his own inner beast. As long as his fear has hold of him in battle, and then there's little hope he will grow as a warrior. The kobolds become bolder with each passing day. It's in their name after all, kobold. And the Maelstrom's forces are spread too thin. Maelstrom command is desperately seeking ways to supplement its flagging troops. They're considering bolstering fighting strength by training troops in warrior techniques, so curious quarters' capabilities come under special scrutiny. However, I feel conti if fear continues to hold him back, I doubt he'll manage to impress anyone. Once again, we are left wanting for a means to tame the inner beast. But, was there not that you learned from your journey to finding four limbs that we could be of aid? Uh, well, I hit it hard in the knee. Ah, in the same manner as before, the memories of battle have aroused the inner beast. So my theory was correct. The key to mastery lies in the heat of conflict. Does the ancient tomes say, only victory against a worthy opponent can temper the inner beast. But your growth as a warrior have given us valuable insight into the true nature of the inner beast. However, there is still much more that remains shrouded in mystery. And there's still the question of what exactly sets Bond apart from your brother. Indeed, the tools of a tame the beast were within are hidden somewhere. I just had to have yet to find them. But continue your training while I return to the tomes. A solution will present itself soon enough. All right. You tell me where to go. I'll keep hitting things. Okay, so. Bellcleave. Recollection of battles past. Uh, tame your inner beast. Resonating. I can't read that fast. So, Bellcleave. The way this used to work is, at level uh, 52, I got a different stance. I got the DPS stance for Warrior when Heaven's War was released. Because back then, tanks were all about stance dropping. When you wanted to have your tank stance on, your damage was lower. Your th your enmity generation was a lot higher, but your damage was lower. That's not so anymore. Now the threat stance is just threat. But it used to be that in order to use Fell Cleave, you had to be in DPS stance. Inner Beast also used to have a defensive aspect to it back then, but, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll continue on. That's your history lesson. Pirates of Shallow Water. Broken Mountain knows someone in need of a legendary adventurer. But, you couldn't have come at a better time. Those guys just arrived and it looks eager to speak with you. Hello again. Ah, oh, Bart, just a warrior I wanted to see. The nation of Lipsalmunsa is in dire need of your aid. Again? Again. The Maelstrom is short-handed with the beast tribe's attacks only grow more ferocious. I'm here searching for skilled fighters, and there aren't many more skilled than you. As you know, my brother has already answered the call, helping the Maelstrom defend against from the relentless kobold assaults. Kobolds aren't the only thwart on our side. Pirates serving the Sahagan have been pillaging the coast of Glenosha. That's why we need your axe, Bot. 
They may be mere pirates, but their blades cut as deep as any I've seen. Hubs and Lamenta will be grateful to have your prowess on their side. Sure. Once you've made your preparations, hurry to Illport and speak with the Storm Captain on duty for details of your mission. Ain't it dead? No? Okay. Yeah, what a hodgepodge of things I do in this warrior campaign. Oh, you're the warrior, Will Skip's behest? Yes, I have pitied you. Let's see if you live up to it. Adventurer, the Maelstrom thanks you for your aid. A band of pirates flying the flag of the Serpent Reavers has landed ashore at the Isle of Umbra. It all reports indicate that they plan to use the foothold as an attack airport. Our walls only defend from inland assaults. I sure to think of what might happen if the pirates were to bombard us with cannons from the sea. Our course of action has been decided. We'll take the fight to them before they have a chance to round their mount their offense. Our rendezvous point is the Isle of Umbra. The pirates shall not weather the wrath of the Maelstrom. So the one Wilsko said, he said much of your warrior prowess. I look forward to seeing you in the fray. Yeah, I look forward to finally using Felcleave. I could take the boat, but I can also fly. This is an option, so I'm going to use it. Good thing I got to see it when it was nice and pretty before the fog rolled in. Good, now that our troops are gathered, we shall move out at once. Our objective is to slay the pirate captain. Without a head to lead them, the Serpent Reavers will scuttle back to their moldy ships. However, the task ahead of us should not be taken lightly. Reports tell of a fearsome beast under Captain's thrall. Take care not to let your guard down, lest you become the beast's next meal. Well, I'm something of a beast myself. You know, a rabbit. It's, it's the nature of being a Vera. Uh, okay. Hi right back before we're overwhelmed. That's many. I guess we'll do this one. My weapon and gear are really bad. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to matter. If you know how to use your abilities, there's no problem. What now, guy? The pirates attacked us as it's obsessed. They just well that you cut them down. We shall press forward for Ailport. Yet you mean you're just gonna stand there and watch me fight for Ailport. God damn it! The main camp is just ahead. Our strength must not falter. The main camp will soon be within our sights. I'll protect the wounded, but you're the pirates that taste your steel. Again! I really wish my area type gave me gauge. It will one day. It just doesn't yet. The pirates think they have a strength in numbers, but a storm captain is worth a dozen of them. 
We shall leave the wounded and recover here. Bond, with me! You'll be okay, guy? Forge ahead. We'll be far behind. We forge ahead. I'll let us white beast catch you off guard. Stop the serpent reavers. <laughs> well, your hell's been on trying. It's been a long time since me pop had a fresh corpse since he start. Ah, it's a coral! <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not much of a threat. Alright, and fell cleave! Yes! The chainsaws are here! Regulations of past battles rouses within your inner beast. Such fine axemanship. I've never seen. Oh, no, however, now is not the time to uh, dally about gnaw. The way souls with foreboding. Let us meet again at the airport. I think for this one, I'll just teleport unless it takes me back. It just took me back! Yeah! I could not wish for a stronger ally. To think that such a beast could be felt so easily. Can't even click on the law, fell. Well, it's now that we're safely out of that cursed isle, I would like to thank you for your aid once again. Without the courage your fighting spirit bestowed upon us, we have been overwhelmed. The Maelstrom is honored to count you among our allies. Yeah! The captain speak for all of us. Your ferocity inspired us to carry on in the face of the pirate onslaught. What drove you to fight with such fury? I fight for my friends. Also, I just like hitting things hard. And here I thought the axe was just for killing, but in fact, you will it for our defense. And your will to protect us gave us the strength to surpass the limits of our mind and body. Seven hells! I'm fighting all wrong! That's right. I've seen the area battle so fierce, or we'll protect more stalwart. But I would like to hear more of your skirmishes from your eyes. After you've recovered from the fight, pray speak with me again. Resonating with the runes upon the soul of the warrior, and uncovering new techniques! Raw tuition! There we go, warrior's best ability for dungeons. Warrior's best ability for dungeons, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why, because I have a very easy way to be able to do this. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay, so... No, no, I'm going to go to the key currents. Goblins? Goblins, okay. So, if I change class... If I change class to, say, something that's lower... Fisher... Okay. You see all that healing? And this is a 25 second cooldown. This is what makes this is what makes warriors ridiculous in dungeons. This is perfectly balanced against a single target. In raids and dun like in raids and like alliance raids and like normal dungeons, like this is perfectly balanced. In dungeons, this is silly. How to train your warrior? The storm captain would hear more of your battle. Who would save their battle with the serpent reavers bestowed upon you yet further uh, techniques of eld? My commander Zai, as well as uh, will not forget the ferocity of which you protected the lives this day. I shall return to Maelstrom Command and inform them of our success. I look forward to the day we fight by your side once more. The lesson we learned from your example will serve to aid in countless battles to come. No doubt Wellskate and the others are eager to hear from back from you. Give that old marauder my regards. I think we just go back home for this one.
What's even better? What's even better? I should mention this as well. What's even better is that Home Gang has one of the lowest cooldowns for an invuln of all the tanks. It's like, what, four minutes? That's hardly any time. So what you do is you Home Gang, and then the enemies hit you and you're stuck at one health. And then you use Raw Intuition, and then you hit them once, and then you're all back at full health. It's It's silly. It's silly. Ah, uh, Bunt. I knew the Serpent Reapers would fall swiftly before your axe. Did you learn odd from the Scaramish that you might be of aid? You could say I did that. I learned the best warrior technique. Uh, I don't expect such feeble opponents to wake the beast from its slumber. But it seems your conviction to safeguard your comrades has had much the same effect as wake yourself and the beast that have allowed to your spine. Bunt, this information may prove to be invaluable. Within your story likely lies the key to overcoming my brother's struggle. Speaking of which, my brother uh, suffered injuries in the clash of the kobolds, and has come to nurse those wounds as I did. It will please him to see an old friend such as you. Pray speak with him, for an exchange of battle stories may serve to lift his spirits. From an old comrade's account, his operation with you won't be one he'll soon forget. You doing all right there, Gorge? Ah, Bond, I'm joyed to see that you come come through the battle with the pirates unscathed. If only I could say the same. I've been ordered to rest here until the wounds I suffered from our fight against the Cobalt's heal. According to the unit's report, the Cobalt's unleashed a new type of explosive on the Maelstrom troops. Gorge valiantly threw himself upon it before detonation, shielding his allies from the worst of the blast. The new bomb had a destructive force unseen by Cobalt's primitive explosions. That my brother is still standing here is no small miracle. Truth be told, my wounds are barely severe enough to warrant sending me here. The moment I saw the bomb, I knew I couldn't let my comrades come to harm. I leapt upon it with my instinct. I remembered nothing else after that. Eh. <sighs> But a similar story to tell. The Serpent Reaver was almost overwhelmed by the Maelstrom troops, but he remained undaunted in their defense, awakening the inner beast with a ferocity unseen before. You both poured your energy into defeating your foes, for protecting your allies. Could that be the secret to taming the throes of the beast within? If so, that means... Brother, you have finally brought your inner beast to heal! What? I didn't feel the beast taking hold! The theory must needs be tested. Brother, what your wounds have healed. If it would serve you best to not let go of the worry it would serve you best to let go of the worry keeping you from unleashing your full strength. Swing your axe, unbridled by fear. But what if I succumb to the beast call again? My training has only made me stronger. If I lose control, I could be worse than the wineport. Now is not the time for the doubt. Your allies, nay your friends, will be your side. Go to none or harm should the worst come to pass. I know your theory demands that I fight without hesitation, but please, I must think on this. Aye, we should let Curious Gorge wound seal before go demanding anything more from him. Rest assured, my friends, we'll return before long. But there's more I would speak with you about. Pray visit when you are ready. What, away from your brother? Okay. Yeah, you keep taking a dip, guy. Yeah, you're just soaking in the rain. Please let me rest. There is much to think about. And you? The Rousey and her beast with a fierce battle, entertainment by resolving fiercely defend your allies. The theory could serve us better than aimlessly scouring the ancient tomes, but our brother still fears the consequences should he lose control. If indeed his fear should come to pass, you must be ready to stop him, as you have before. Bond, prepare your axe for the next battle. That was still the 56th quest. 58 quest, which will teach a fine ability, equal at rim. It restores health. I call this Pocket Potion. It combos nicely with a few other warrior abilities. We'll see it later. Broken Mountain has something urgent to discuss with you. Ah, oh, Bond, I can see your power in your stride. I feel your inner beast raging within you. You will need such strength for your next trial is at hand. 
Bill Skid and my brother are here looking for more fighters to supplement their undermanned Billstrom troops. They have a new operation. They have been asked you, you by name. Speak them out if you wish to raise your axe once more against the Beast Tribes. Go see your brother for details. He got his armor back on? No. I need the aid of a couple of good axes once again. Bond! Bond! Brother! The Maelstrom is once again in need of support. I... Uh, pray tell us what it is they require. Very well. Now that everyone is here, scouts have reported increased activity among the kobolds. The 179th Order seems to be procuring explosives day and night in preparation for an all-out assault. From all indications, they aim to attack this very camp. The Maelstrom strategy is to intercept the bombs near Zalma's Ruin. Camp Ron's Lake is a haven for wounded soldiers, and its defense is one of our top priorities. If we had two legendary warriors by our side, our success would be all but assured. Zalma's Ruin is barely wide enough for one card of right abreast. If I were to lose control, none would be able to escape the beast's wrath. On the contrary, brother. Now I'll give you the chance once more to assert your dominance over the beast within. This is what you spoke of earlier, is it not? To tame the other beast by devoting yourself to the defense of your allies. Brother, if my theory turns out to be true, then control is within your grasp. As long as Bond is at your back, there's not a fear. Will you run away again? You know that the path you wish to walk, the path of warrior, does not lie down that road. Say no more. Please, leave me to my thoughts. Hey, Spoop! It is warrior hours. Well, we see not much time for hesitation. The storm captain awaits near Zalma's run. It will be departing shortly. But, if you decide to join the fight, pray tell Curious Gorge. If anyone can rouse him from his slump, it's you. Alrighty. I can do that. I should note, I am going to get roadblocked. I am going to get roadblocked. This is a level 58 quest. I am level 59, and I have that much experience to go. My experience bar is after the first number of the HP bar. So, that's a little bit unfortunate. Also, my gear is awful. My gear is awful. I have plenty of good gear when I level up again. Nothing right now. You alright there, Gorge? My apologies for causing you to worry, Bond. My brother's right. It's up to me to walk the path of right. I know that, but still I cower before the beast within. But a true warrior faces his fears, axe in hand, right? Come on, Bond. Remind me what it's like to scoff at my enemy's feeble blows. Awaken your other beast and slap the fear right out of me. <laughs> That's right. They added the slap emote. They added the slap emote. I forgot this was a thing. All right, buddy, here we go. We're going to get one right in the stomach. Here we go. Okay, right on the chest. That's damn, what a blow. That's the stuff warriors are made of, bud. Thank you. I'll dominate the beast within. Our axes will stand indomitable against those bloody kobolds. Our enemies will feel the full force of my fury. It will not step one him into this camp. Come, bud. We mustn't keep the storm captain waiting. Put that away. Yeah, it's, um... You know what? Let's do that one more time. Let's do that one more time. I'm gonna get real up close to Bont here and look at his face. Alright, maybe male Vieira don't do it. But most characters put on this really wide grin. Most characters will put on this really wide grin or smile as they go for a slap. Male Vera, on the other hand, seem a little bit more subdued, and are perhaps not going to show that level of joy and violence. The kobolds will scurry in fear before the wrath of the warrior. They won't dare get within the realm of this camp again. But, uh, both of you and Curry Scourge will be aiding us brings, uh, brings me comfort. Camp Tron's Lake could not ask for more Star Wars defense. 
Our strategy is intercept the kobolds at two separate locations that Zalmas run. We'll split into two groups, with one warrior protecting each one. Odd, we'll be dispatched to the eastern side. Not a single kobold will make it through there with you, Fury, alongside us. The escort will be in charge of the western side's defense. I'll see you crush kobolds under your axe before. Today shall be no different. Once the 179th Order has run home with their tails between their legs, we will rendezvous to the north. May your axes strike true. Dismissed! Actually, yeah, one of the Moogle quests also has me slap. They do not respect me as a craftsman, so, uh, feeling insulted, my character is instructed to slap the Moogle. To which I say, how? How could he slap, Koopo? Because Koji Fox, the English translator at the time, is an absolute meme lord. He's still a meme lord. Oh, stop it. I walked right into their ambush. Oh boy, kobolds. Oh, I have a... Right, I have a... I had an umbrella on, which kept me from attacking. Let's build up some, uh... That does that. More? Yep, just area damage. All day. They can throw bombs, but it doesn't do anything. More? Who else wants that? Nothing? Okay. How you doing, guy? That's too bloody close. I think the Cobalts didn't count on you th showing up. It looks like the eastern side is clear. Curious Gorge and the others may need our help. Hurry, Bont! Yeah, we're to rendezvous to the north, right? Well, let me guess. Things didn't go so good for Gorge. Oh, no, you're fine! That's great! But my apologies, but it seems the Kobolds couldn't wait for you. Camp Bronze Lake has not to fear for the 179th Order anymore! Curious Gorge's axe was like a whirlwind, slurring the Kobolds in every which direction. His courage carried us through the battle unharmed. With these two warriors by our side, I have no doubt the Kobolds would have overwhelmed us. But I am submitting a detailed report of your heroism to Wellske to the Maelstrom Command. You have all fought bravely today. Let us return home for a well-deserved rest. It's a shame the weather wasn't a little bit better, but here we are. But I can scarce remember the last time I fought as I did today. I swung my axe with, about, with abandon when I was free from the inner beast's grasp. It was just as my brother said. By pouring my strength into the defense of my allies, the beast within was tamed. However, kobolds are hardly a true test for one's prowess. If the fight had been against a more worthy foe, or the circumstances had been more dire. Although today's battle was heartening, it's too early to say I've subdued the beast. I'll return to Camp Bronze Lake to rest. Bond, let my brother know of our victory here. Okay. Isn't he also at Camp Bronze Lake, which is where you're going, so shouldn't you tell him? No? Okay. Have another French fry. Hmm. So yeah, how's how is it going for you today, Spoop? Hope you're having a good one. The storm captain has already sent his report to the uh, of your impressive feats. Ogre Mountain will be eager to hear of our brother's heroism. It seems your victory was well earned. What of my brother? Was he able to fight without succumbing to his inner fury? Yeah, he did all right. I didn't see him fight, but he came out alive. Ah, uh, so even today's victory, he yet to heads the uh, consequences of worried to lose control. Still, it's only as though it's through his strength and his own will that he would be made to smell his fog of self-doubt. Unfortunately, the beast tribes won't wait for Curious Gorge's epiphany. Storm Marshal Staffton has sent word that he requires a warrior's strength in another of Maelstrom's defense. As you already know, kobolds aren't the only nuisance to ever con uh, we have to contend with. The House of Hagen have taken advantage of the distraction caused by the, fo by the focus on the kobolds to launch an offensive against the Tide Gates. 
With the bulk of the Maelstrom's forces tied up in the Cobalt Threat, we can ill afford to send any men to defend against the gate near Camp Skull Valley, leaving us wide open to the Zogan Threat. But, if the strength of a warrior went to see the people of Limsel Melissa safely through the storm, then mayhap the glory of our ancestors would be restored. Now all across Eorzea would know of us as guardians instead of brutes. However, it saddens me to say we cannot depend on my brother to be ready to shoulder such a weight. Bont, when the time comes, you must need be ready to task on this alone. In the meantime, pray tell me of your battle at Zelma's Run. Recall the ferocity with which you fought, and lose yourself in the memories of your fight. Uh, I hit them very hard. As before, your inner beast is roused, and another technique of eld is at your disposal. Your progress is encouraging. Continue with this path. Continue your challenge to the limits of your mind and body, and victory to the battle succumb to our sword. Alright, bye, Wolf Scout. Oh, good. Pocket potion. Our collection of past battles and restores your base rosary with runes under your warrior soul stone, giving you a new technique of eld. Equilibrium. Yep, I'm locked. So, uh, remember the thing I was talking about stance dancing earlier? Uh, Equilibrium used to give you a resource known as TP when you were in DP, uh, when we were in damage stance. So even if you were a tank, you would run out of TP and be unable to use your abilities. So you had to change over to DPS stance to use Equilibrium not for healing, but for TP, so you could keep on fighting. Which felt really bad. I'm really glad that they got rid of TP from this game. I'm really glad they got rid of that. But I cannot advance the warrior plotline now. I am now stuck right before the last quest. But that's okay. That's okay. I can save that for another time. We can save the level 60 warrior quest for another time. I did it on Dark Knight once, I can do it on Warrior now. So, next up, the thing that I was asked for next is Blue Mage! My Blue Mage is awful! My Blue Mage is awful! I know no spells! I know no good spells! I know one good spell. I know one good spell, and that's a Freet's good old eruption. We love it! Anyway, uh, I think I have to go back to Ulda. Actually, did I not defeat the guy? Did I not defeat the guy last time I was a blue mage? Is that why I'm unable to do the quest? Well, I guess it's time for me to try this. Uh, let's go to... Wait a minute, hold on. I'm a blue mage. Hold on, I need to do something. Get off! Oh no, I'm stuck on the Aetherite! Well, uh, I'm gonna have a french fry. Okay, I can move again. Hello, little guy, can I have your power? That's a tank, I don't want that. That looks like a healer. You know what? I'd like a healer's power. Yeah! Now I'm a healer! For myself. I think it is the Miner's Guild. that. Yeah, let's check with him real quick. It might be that I have to do, uh... Hmm. Hmm. Alright, let's double check this then. Have I not? Yeah, I've done Siegfried. I've done Siegfried. Alright, well... I am the appropriate level. What? Hmm. 
What am I not done right? What have I not done? Okay. Uh, one moment. I'm going to check the wiki briefly. I'm going to check the wiki briefly. I think... I think I have everything I need to be able to advance the Blue Mage plot, but I might need to actually be in the next expansion before I'm able to progress Blue Mage again. Would the game really do that? Would the game prevent me from leveling up Blue Mage so that I couldn't do things as Blue Mage? Would it truly deny me so? Alright, let's see. I'm passing 14 wiki. Give me the blue mage quest line. Apologies. Let's see. I have the mask. Okay, so what do I need to do the... What is the required quest? You're kidding me. You're kidding me. I have to advance Stormblood a little bit further. I have to advance Stormblood a little bit further. Blue Mage is gated. Blue Mage is gated. Okay, well, that settles that. Sorry, everyone. I thought I could do more Blue Mage. Apparently, I need to progress the plot a little bit further before I'm able to do this. A little bit mad right now, but that's okay. I guess that means it's finally time for post-game. Back to Samurai! I've delayed this long enough. But I could delay it more. I could delay it more. Okay! Pull time again. Pull time again. Let's see here. New pull. What now? We could not do blue. We could not do blue. Warrior's done, but we could not do blue. So let's see, our options are Omega, Evilis, Four Lords, MSQ, and Eureka. Please don't vote for Eureka. <laughs> it's there, please don't vote for it. Oh, I see the way it's going right now. It's only one vote, but like, that's it, if it's only one vote going up against itself, that's all that matters. That's all it needs. Don't threaten me with a good time. All right, I'm going to head on my way there. The vote might change in his last two seconds, but here we go. And so it wins with a resounding one vote, Evilus. I would like to know, like, it was an anonymous poll, you don't have to say. But if you voted for that, please let me know. <laughs> Who do we have to blame? As a policy, I try not to vote on my own polls. Like, I'm supposed to be a tiebreaker. Alright, thank you for participating in the poll. That's done. Here we go. Time for Evilus. Do you like Final Fantasy Tactics? Do you like Final Fantasy Tactics Advance? Do you like Final Fantasy XII? They all have one thing in common, and that's Evilus. Dramatis Personae. Kaiten knows of someone who de who is see ah Kaiten knows of someone seeking your acquaintance. Welcome, my lord. There's a young maiden here who would speak with you. Oh, 
Oh, we kind of know her. Miss, the adventurer has arrived. Hey there, you're the reporter from Moldar, aren't you? And here he is, the liberator of both Doma and Alamigo in the flesh. I am Nina Muralia, the correspondent of the Raven. You may recognize me from my ex expose on the secret lives of the homunculi. But enough small talk. It's not for nothing that I've been standing here since yesterday morning on the off chance you'd pass by. You're waiting for me, specifically? Why? What do you need? No, I'm here because, actually, it's best you heard it from Alma. I am but an observer. Alma, come! I found him! Does this music sound familiar to you? Is this the adventurer for whom you spoke? Indeed it is. Hey, little girl. Please, I beg of you, find my father. You are his only hope. Oh, wait, slow down. I need more details than that. It's all right, Alma. We are attracting unwanted attention. Why does it just a change of venue? We'll wait you before Prima Vista. The theater barge as the birth of the airship landing. All right. That sounds like a right change of scenery. Thanks, guy. Good luck with your market. I've never been one to meddle in the affairs of my clients, but if I were you, I would. But if I were, I would say that you would be a fool not to follow those two back to the airship. Call it a feeling. Some people don't like this raid series or anything has anything to do with any of this. They call it all evil, but it's right there at the name, Evilis, right? She's just crying. As I said before, I think it's better if we continue this conversation in the privacy of the young lady's barge. It's not that I don't trust anyone here. It's simply that I don't trust anyone here. Fair enough. Gate guard Mumagumo has been instructed to look out for you. In future, speak with him when you wish to gain admission to the dock. Okay. So Kagane, of course, has an airship landing. It is a trade port for the world, after all. Are you seeking a particular vessel? This landing sees the arrival of foreign airships from the Garlean Empire and elsewhere, as well as a craft belonging to Bakufu himself. Oh, plenty of people have airships. But we're dealing primarily with that one, the one that we've seen at the horizon this entire time. She is silent. Thank you for coming, Bont. You're probably wondering why I've summoned you to an airship, and a Garlean one at that. Allow me to explain on the shuttle. Change the title again. Gotta make sure it's accurate. I'm excited. Okay. So we're on a Garlean theater ship. With the Final Fantasy Tactics same th save theme in the background. They're painting up a nice uh, Bahamut head there. Painting up a nice tree here. 
Not really sure what that's supposed to be, but they sure are painting it. It's a little bit messy, but they're doing it. They're doing it. Props for their stage. Yep, they're practicing their step dance. I have no words for you, stranger. Not now. I am practicing my lines in my head. Fair enough. How about you, tragedian? Don't be shy. You've got nothing to fear from us. Well, most of us. Welcome to the Prima Vista, the most luxurious theater barge in all the land. The Prima Vista serves as both stage and home to the Majestic Imperial Theater Company. It's not bad. You can keep that dirk in your drawers. No one's here as a member of the Imperial Army, nor are there any spies within the troop, at least not known spies. Ask anyone who will readily attest the Majestic Imperial Theater Company are the finest practitioners of the dramatic arts to be found anywhere in the three great continents and beyond. They have admirers throughout the Empire and its territories, and even boast a sizable following in Gridania, hence my assignment to their story. There is a little known fact outside Garlemald, at least, that the late Emperor was a devoted patron of the arts who supported various theater troops to a tune of much coin. Indeed, Solus was so enamored with the majestic players that he ordered the construction of this very airship, as the troop might perform in every corner of the Empire. When his grandson took the throne, however, everything changed. Now all theater troops, domestic and foreign, must submit their work to approval by a certain by the Central Imperium Board of Censors. If a play is deemed vulgar or inflammatory, it is banned and a troop denied the writ of transit. The worst offenders? Well, they're never heard from again. This policy has effectively left prey rights with one or two options. Compromise their creative integrity to curry favor with his radiance, or put down their quills altogether. The principal of the Majestic, however, chose a third option, to express his disapproval for the new Emperor's policies obliquely and ostensibly unpolitical works. Pray forgive me for my earlier outburst. I am Alma Abbas Lexentail. Daughter of Principal Jeremus Khan Lexentail. So not be old. Not be old, okay. May have you have heard of my father's latest play, The Zodiac Brave Story? Well, on the surface, it is an innocent retelling of a well known Garlean fairy tale, hardly worthy of the censor's attention. But beneath it, something is quite different. A fact the censors failed to spot when they approved of the manuscript for public performance. The play quickly became a huge success. The common folk loved its fantastical story, while learned classical appreciation for its true message. By the time the Imperial Board of Censors realized their mistake, it was too late. No longer in a position to prohibit the performance outright without admitting fault, they took aim to accompany these purse strings instead. Before long, Nabil patrons began withdrawing their support, fearing the association with the troop. And by the end, even the learned felt compelled to feign ignorance. By bleeding the majestic of their funding, the censors robbed them of their voice. Oh, that's a shame. They're not getting my money, though. And none of this has made it any clearer as to why you're here, right? Hello, me then, Mine. Oh, hey, Sid, you're here too? I thought we weren't seeing you today because we're not doing Omega. That's a nice little curtsy. I've known Jeremus since he was the studies at the Magitech Academy. When I heard his daughter was in Kugane looking for enlist the aid of an adventurer, I felt compelled to give you her new name. Sorry for not announcing myself sooner, old friend. Ah, that explains that plot hole. Well, what's up? Genomus and I were from different worlds, and that has only served to fuel our friendship. Many were the nights that we were proud to wander our wee small hours. Warm flagons of peat and ale, numbing our minds to each other's naive ideologies. Yet, no matter where our conversations began, it would invariably end with him telling me about how he was going to change the Empire from the inside out. 
The troop was his path to the people's hearts. Even after the Empire forced him to, from its home, Genomus never gave up his hope that he might change the world. She got a little bit determined there. Art will ever strain against the artificial bonds of the borders. Man-made walls and misguided war. It's much at such times as uncertainty that we must needs embrace our calling and take the sky so others might do the same. What I'm trying to say, rather poorly I concede, is that not all Garleans have hewn from the same stone. Just as there are those who pledge their lives to the Empire and would never think to question the authority of its leaders, there are those like Alma's father and myself, whose love for their country does not blind them to its flaws. Still, try selling that back sack of sunflower to Alamegans or Dobin, those watch their family consumed by the flames of Magitek Reaper. How many Orzian adventurers do you think would leap at the opportunity to help an Imperial search for our missing father, and a Garlean territory no less? But you, you are different. You have seen enough to know that the line between good and evil is not defined by race, color, or creed. So, what say you? I could never turn my back on a damsel in distress, or I would make a poor adventurer if I were to shy away from adventure. I'll say the latter. Indeed. Glad you approve, Sid. So, where do we stand? Aside from an airship. How do you understand the nature of our task? Perhaps Alba could provide some insight as to where we might begin our search. Shortly before my father disappeared, he began work on his next play, a successor to the Zodiac Brave story. Oh, a sequel? Oh, I'm all in! Ah, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Please, follow me. We get to go to the bridge? Do we get to say engage? We have Sid here. Maybe Sid will get to say engage. Going up the elevator. We're going up the elevator. Good carpets. Yep, there's the view screen. That's Kugane. No adventures and hardship, young Delita, a boy com of common blood, become a hero, culminating in the birth of a mythical kingdom of evilis. But that is from where the story ends. There is no records of anything that follows. Was Principal Jerome simply going out to invent something? My father believed that he had discovered the evidence of a second hero, one whose efforts were largely unnoticed, but without whom Delita would never have risen to the throne. His was the next tale he wanted to tell. The true Zodiac Brave story. A second hero? According to my father's studies, this young man was one of Delita's closest friends and confidence. That is, until the untimely passing of Delita's sister forced the two to part ways. Ah yes, the end of chapter one. Yet, the unnamed hero continues to provide aid to his friend by thwarting uh, the machinations of those who would scheme against Delita, thus paving the way for the pauper's rise to regent. You must forgive me, but I have never heard anyone making such claims. How exactly did your father come to this information? That is a long story. One which begins and ends with Jerome becoming lost in the very legend he sought to bear. Even as far back as our academy, academy days, Evilus had been Jerome is firmly in his grasp. He flatly refused to believe the story was just a fairy tale. And so, when he finally was driven out of Garlemald, it was only natural that he should choose the, that of all places as his refuge. Was it not, Alba? That's correct, Master Garland. It has long been my father's belief that the ruins of ancient Evilis lie beyond Nangja, buried beneath the sands of the Damascan Desert. Ooh, Dalbaska! Poor oh, Dalbaska. The kingdoms prospered in relative isolation for countless generations, until the Empire came calling. 
When not touring, my father would organize expeditions into the Damascus Desert to search for proof of Evelis's existence. Sometimes he would bring back strange artifacts, ancient tomes, and crystals. Crystals unlike any others. Oh boy, you need crystals! Oh, it's made of white! My father called them Aracite and claimed they were vital to providing his, proving his theories. This is one such crystal. It's by the Twelve. It's magnificent. Evolution legend tells the crystals bequeathing the gods unto those who would be kings. It is during his quest to gather Aracite that young Toledo rises to prominence. I must have heard a tale a thousand times from my nursemaid, but that is all it ever was, a tale. My father would often tell us the Arsite spoke to him. At this time, we assumed he was speaking figuratively, that the stone's beauty roused his muse. But then, he began to act strangely. Hey, a cup of burn? Yep, it's Evilus Ray time! And as... When I first did my initial run of Let's Plays, the very first game I did a Let's Play of was Final Fantasy Tactics. I didn't beat it. I didn't beat it because the disc broke. It was old and it was scratched and it eventually just shattered. Real shame that. But And now I've lost the save, so there's no way I'm going back to that now. I could start the game over again. I could start the game over again. But we're going to get back to this. Yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics it is a fantastic game. A little bit easy. A little bit poorly balanced, but a fantastic game. How so? Following our arrival in Hingashi, my father spent most of his time cloistered in his chambers, poring over his past research. And though he was alone, we could oft hear him in conversation. It was not uncommon for my father to recite the lines he wrote as he wrote them, but it soon became clear that this was something else. It was as if he was talking to my mother, my mother who passed several winters gone. Might this not have been out of mere loneliness, or perhaps the strain of your flight from Garlemald? Possibly, but that would not explain the voices which answered him. What? Oh, you look familiar. Ama, those are who are these people? I told you I did not require any help finding father, especially from outsiders. So good of you to join us, Ramza. Ramza! Allow me to introduce... Enough, Master Sid. We may be shunned by the Empire, but we are still guardians, and we still have our pride. Unlike some, it seems. We require neither the aid nor the pity of foreign rabble. Have you forgotten where you are, brother? It is we who are the foreign rabble. This land and its customs are all but unknown to us. We would be fools to reconduct our search without a proven guide. Your sister is right, Ramza. We're a good friend here. Your mistrust is ill-placed. I personally vouch for his character. All the time I had known him, he has never once let anything as insignificant as a race or creed or color judge his judgment. You are lucky to have him. But we would have you, Master Garland. Why do you refuse us? You know that I, until our fell with Omega is resolved, my hands are tied. It pains me to refuse you and your sister, but it pains me far more to leave Jeromus to his fate. I am sorry. You need not apologize. I'll let my emotions get the better of me. After what happened to Rabinasta, it may well be time to admit that we are out of our depth. My brother's last expedition met with tragedy in the t ruins of a capital city. He barely escaped with his life. The Empire turned Rabinasta into a death trap. You were fool to set foot there without proper escort. I realize that now, Master Garland. But at the time, I saw an opportunity to rescue our father, and I took it. Whatever led you to believe your father was in Damascus' capital? My father's fascination with the Evelisian legend began with a trip to Andes... And... Let me look at that word again. Antediluvian city, long before the war. Call it a premonition, but something tells me that it was where he was returned. Now you may excuse me, I need some time to think. Wow, nice kid. Then, Alma, I shall leave you to your brother to bond's capable hands. He has ever repaid my trust with your interest. 
You would do well to grant him yours. Thank you, Master Garland. We will not forget this kindness. All right. Nice seeing you. Have a good time with Omega. I'll see you with that some other day. Back to the save screen music. Ah! Sid didn't bid me farewell. I mean, this is going to get in my right up. Oh yeah, you don't you don't make a reporter mad. Oh how I miss my father. Uh, I'll do what I can to get him back. Hey Ramza. Master Garland seems to think highly of you, so I will withhold judgment until after Dalmasca. Can't talk to anybody else on the bridge? I like the way they're dressed though. I like their hats. A city fallen! And we get two free music for this. Ramza is itching to depart. Ah! Damascus has nestled in the foreign cr uh, corner of the Empire's outermost territories. I do not foresee any trouble from the standing army, but would suggest committing to memory the location of each of the barge's exits, just in case. As for the flight itself, the currents above Damascus are as wild as the land below. You may want to hold on. Do we get to engage? It's not voiced or anything. Not even words. The music got brought, interrupted by the quest acceptance stinger. But that was the music for when he booted up a game. He had to watch that intro, like that stick, that sizzle reel. I don't know the names of the songs, but I know roughly where they are. Is it just unlocked? Oh no, we get to sit down on our couch for a flight. Nice! You two okay? I'm fine. I fly all the time. We'll complete our descent into Rabinaster in the shuttle. Alright. So it's just the four of us? Why are you knowing at each other? Ramsa? I should think I've made myself clear, Alma. The capital is simply too dangerous. Father would never forgive me if I were to lose you while trying to rescue him. Okay, so she has to be left behind. Fair enough, I suppose. Come, we are wasting time. I mean, your father's been missing for how long? What's another day? I guess a day is the difference between thirst and dehydration. It is a desert, after all. Here we go, the Royal City of Rabinester. And there's our barge. Yeah, let's take a lay of the land. What happened last time you were here? You said you got wiped out, right? According to my father, Rabinaster was already a thriving city some thousand years ago. 
but after performing several private excursions beneath the so-called desert's uh, sapphire, my father came to the conclusion that was not the first settlement to stand here. Then, your father believes that Rabinaster sits atop the royal city of Lesseria, capital of Ivelis. But if that's true, could, it could change history. It would be... We would be famous. Famous? Are you sure you don't mean rich? <laughs> You're kind of all like... Parasites grown fat on the sweat and suffering of others. Bold words for a boy but sixteen summers. And what, pray tell, have I done to deserve such spite? I only wish to learn the truth behind the disappearance of the Empire's foremost playwright. It should be should lead to some interesting something bigger. Well then, it would be a worst reporter in the realm if I did not pursue it. Why are you two fighting? There's enemies over the hill, we can fight them. Yes, yes, we can argue about this now, or we can return to the Prima Vista and report to the Army of Adventurers that it's time to begin the expedition. I humbly suggest the latter. You have an army of explorers with you. Where from? Ah, but what's this behind a bush? Oh, those are some familiar looking legs and tails to boot. You see, it's as I said, brother. Let him come to us. Shall we kill him now? No, the time's not right. No one has stopped us before. Bull, you see that one? Say the gods, they call him. Why your light? Ah, they know my name. They know my title, if anything. It was blatantly obviously who those were, or what those were, rather. Those were Bunga, from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. And we now have the Royal City of Rabinaster. Is there anybody in chat who would like to join me in queuing for this? Uh, Miss Pepper is here. Also, before you forget. I'm going to... I am busy. Oh, that's a hydrant and a posture, sure. <sighs> Thank you. It has been a while since I stood up and stretched. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, it's an alliance raid. So, the two of us are not half the people that we need, so we're going to queue with this many. This might be a fast queue, this might take years, we'll see. Recently, residents of Kugade woke to find a hovering above Walter their city. in the oven. He found a chicken, chicken, and beef sandwich. Chicken, chicken, and beef sandwich. That's a lot of chicken on that. Two different kinds of meat. You almost have a land, air, and sea. No, that's just land and air. It could still be good. It could still be good. It has not been tainted by the sea yet. It's not yet sushi. Still weird that you put two, like, two different kinds of meat on the same sandwich, but then multiply the amount of meat that you get on the first type by double. Huh. That might be something that needs some sauce. Anyway, thanks for redeeming the oven. I have fun with the oven roulette. I have fun with the oven roulette. Ah, uh, let's see. Recently, residents of Kigane woke to find hovering above their city an airship unlike any ever seen. Yet while the Garlean design, the vessel distinctly lacked the bleak outfitting common of the Empire's War Machina. No, this was the Prima Vista, private stage of the Majestic Imperial Theater Company, a troupe having won acclaim for their grossly garlemald for their timeless work, The Zodiac Brave Story. Which begets the question, why are they here? The answer to that question and more, and more lies in the self same legend of which they sing, the legend of Evilus. 
And as we are docked outside of Evilus right now, we get to see that on the main screen, which has been turned on. And we have a bit of a wait for the queue. How is the queue looking right now? We got a tank? That's nice. It says that we're going to be here for a couple more minutes. To Rabinaster. Hold on, Father. Help us on its way. You cannot expect you to walk to me to walk away from this. If the legend of Evilus is true, the public has a right to know. I suppose. Let's see. The big Evilus games, as far as I'm aware, are Tactics, Tactics Advance, and 12. There's also Tactics Advance 2, but, uh... I feel like that one's less Evilus, and that one's more something else. That said, I believe that we will be encountering enemies from Tactics Advance 2. I believe that we will see an appearance of the Seek in here. I do not think that we'll see any of the, um... What were they called? What were the, what were the what were the dragon girls? Were they Raptorians or something like that? Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be seeing any of them. Honestly, if we wanted them, we'd just get a female aura and put some dragon wings on her. That would probably be enough. Ah, the Q. The Q was the biggest enemy. I am not skipping these cutscenes. You better believe it. If the if they pull while I'm in a cutscene, I don't care. I'm watching that cutscene. I'm not sure if anybody's noticed so far. Like, we have only scratched the surface of this. There is a lot of writing. There is a lot of writing. And the reason for that is, is because that this questline was written by Mitsuno. That's right, this questline was written by Matsudo, and so he was allowed to do what he wanted with it. You know, within the confines of the Final Fantasy XIV world. He had help. He had help to, like, ask for people about lore relevances and, like, who he could bring in and, like, what all he could do. So I'm very much, like, I'm, I'm happy this is here. I'm happy this is in-game. In fact, after the recent Dawn Trail... After the recent John Trail benchmark was released, I think Yoshi said something along the lines of, like, wanting to work on the next tactics game. Which could be a re release. We've been anticipating a re release for a while now, ever since the Tactics Overgrown Reborn thing. Not a good iteration of that game, from what I've heard. Yes! Yeah, he said, so he said that in a tweet. He was like, Isn't it about time we got another tactics game? And Yoshi P does have a good amount of clout within Square Enix. I feel like. He'll be allowed to make whatever he wants. You need a new tactics game. We might get Final Fantasy Tactics 2, which might continue the adventures of someone other than Ramza, because Ramza's story is over. But we might get, like, what happens in that world after. That would be nice. That would be nice. I'd like to see more of that. We could also get tactics that takes place in an entirely new location. I'm not sure if I would like that as much. I kind of want to return to Evilus, which is why I'm returning to Evilus right now. I'm very excited. I have a Viera that has returned to Evilus. I could not be happier. The only thing that would make me happier is if this Q popped right now. We got one more DPS. Uh, the problem with queuing for any other alliance raid is... Everybody has to do the Crystal Tower. Everybody has to do the Crystal Tower. That is mandatory for the plot. But all the other alliance raids do not require you to do them. Like, this is optional story. You could completely skip this. I don't know why you would. Well, maybe not everybody likes Evilus as much as I do. But this bit of content is required for at least unlocking something in the next expansion. So might as well do it now, right? Well, it's relevant. I've been going around the same room. Hold on, let's go back out of the room. Maybe the performers will have something to say to me. The door works. Oh, there's a couple more of them. 
Every muscle in a man's body has a name and is as beautiful as a thing it describes. I like to recite them I like to recite to them myself while trading in the light of the moon. A full moon is best, of course. But a waxing gibbous moon will suffice. That sure is a lot of words, you said. One, two, three, one, two, three. The principal is missing a half hour company to keep their cabins. I'm afraid to come out. For I know the moon could be descending from the skies in a brilliant gaze of glory. That doesn't mean I can forgo my practice. Despite what you may think, a good portion of the Imperial citizens are at odds with the government on the matter of foreign policy. We're not all driven to invade and dissimulate. The reason you do not hear any of the dissenting voices is simple. Being vocal in Gullibald usually leads to one to the gallows. I see. Godlians we may be, but that does not mean we approve of the Empire's every action. We seek but peace and coexistence with all. Aye, aye, it may sound trite, but it's also true. It's the Dramaturge! You have short questions. I have short answers. Relatively speaking, of course. Who is Genomus Asan Lexingtail? Genomus has been at the Magitech Academy for but a handful of summers when he founded his own theater troupe. It was but a handful more before his plays began attracting recognition in various influential literary circles. Although Genovus is not a prolific writer, what he lacks in quantity he makes up for in quality, tenfold in quality. The public especially adored a few pieces he both produced and starred in. So popular were his troops' productions that admirers would brook their seats years or more in advance. And although he is widely regarded as one of the finest playwrights in the Empire, none was more surprised than Genomus himself, with the Emperor Solus Sol Galvus, in recognition of the young principal's accomplishments, presented him with his very own airship. This has since become the source of considerable ire for the new Emperor, but I think Genomus would have no other way. You see, whereas art is concerned, Genomus would not be would not compromise. He will write and rewrite and then rewrite again until he has achieved what he had believes to be perfection. He will create something so perfect that even his greatest detractor will be forced to acknowledge his genius. Critics applaud Genomus for his cunning, but I know it to be merely a byproduct of his inherent stubbornness. Genomus simply cannot, will not, so for anything less than the best. What is the Majestic Theatre Company? Since its inception during Genomus' academy days, the Majestic Theatre Company has been busily producing and performing some of the Empire's most memorable works. From tragedies to comedies, classics to modern adaptations, monodramas to musicals, there was nothing that Majestic couldn't do, and do brilliantly. At the time of the Zodiac Brave Story's debut, the theater was home to over five score performers and stagehands, all living here on the Prima Vista. Now, well, you can see what we stand. What is the Zodiac Brave Story? After the war? Yeah, yeah! Sorry for not reading that sooner, I got distracted by an NPC who lore dumps. Can you tell this is Mitsuno's writing? That is one thing that he does. He loves to tell, not show. So, uh, yeah. Here, here we are. The Zodiac Brave story is a tale as old as time. Wherever the kingdom was threatened, be it by tyranny, evil forces, or realm-wide disaster, twelve blessed heroes would emerge to bring light back to evilness. Those twelve were known as the Zodiac Braves. Each era had its own Zodiac Braves. Uh, Mullenkamp was a star seer. Saint Ajora, the Assassin, Ashley. I can hardly list. Uh, I can list at least five others. By far the most popular has always been King Delita. Following the death of its king, Evilus's long standing Akasha dynasty finds itself without an heir. In an attempt to claim the throne, the Order of the Northern Sky, under the banner of the White Lion, and the Order of the Southern Sky, under the Black Lion, wage a war, resulting in the death of thousands and a veritable stalemate. When all of Evilus was at war with itself, he and eleven of his most trusted companions set out to bring order to the realm. Though not of noble birth, the leader would ultimately unite the land as regent, and the twelve became known as that era's Zodiac Braves. There have been much debate as to whether the legend is based on actual historical events, or merely fiction. <coughs> so much talking! Ah, <sighs> drink. Actual historical events are merely fiction, but most scholars agree that there is simply too little evidence to substantiate claims of Evilus' existence. There are no ruins, there are no relics, and the stories we are left with, well, they're just that, stories. 
What's worse, there are so many of them, each with its own peculiarities, that only the most basic elements actually light up. Even some of the most recent renderings of the legend feature dramatic deviations, and most notable being that Valida was assassinated before even taking the throne, instead of becoming king after his marriage to Princess Ophelia Akasha. But has always been the trouble with bards and minstrels, you can't trust a single one of them not to change the story here or there for the sake of a bribe. And so here we are, left in the dark without a light to ponder the mystery of only the gods know. Excellent, excellent. How is the Majestic's telling different from legend? Unsurprisingly, there are many plays which attempt to tell a Zodiac Brave story, but none have ever been as well received as the Majestic's rendition. When Genomus told me that he was considering his own retelling of the legend, I was not remotely surprised. When he subsequently revealed his intention to make it a musical, however, I nearly spat out my mead. Not content simply to write the play, he composed the music, penned the lyric, and even saw the damn choreography. I will never see anything like it. With the com completion of the Zodiac Brave story, he proved his genius once and for all. The music was divided into five acts, the first three focusing on the lead to service in the Church of Gal uh, Glabados, and his first encounter with Princess Ophelia at Kasha, and a subsequent oath to see her become queen. The final two acts moved to the War of the Lions, culminating in Delina's betrothal to the Witt Princess and their tragic end. The ensemble piece in which Delina lost his web of lies reveals the truth of his plans to the gods on one side of the stage, while on the other, Princess Ophelia swears the self-same gods that she will put the past behind her. Genius! A masterpiece of modern theater. <laughs> it sure sounds great. I would love to see that rendition of it somewhere. It's a shame it's not here. What happened to Dalmasca? The Dalmasca Desert is a vast wasteland situated in the southern reaches of central Othard, sharing an eastern border with Nagja. So large is the desert that it is divided into two regions, the, Easter, the Ester Sands and the Wester Sands. Thirty years ago, the kingdom of Dalmasca was invaded by the Guardian Empire. When the king and his council refused to pledge fealty to the empire, war erupted, resulting in the end of the royal Benagan line. Benagan line. For a thousand years, Dalmasca had maintained independence, only to see it crumble in a matter of moons before the might of Solus Sos Galvis's metal-clad legions. Even the royal city of Rabadaster, the fabled Desert Sapphire, was not spared. Emboldened by the uprising of Doma and Al uh, Almigo, resistance groups within Dalmasca have attempted coups of their own, yet all have been silenced. The Empire has always seemed to know exactly when and where the insurgencies will begin. When I was a boy, I accompanied my father on one of his caravans to Ravanaster, and considered myself fortunate to have seen the royal city before its fall. Aside from the, uh, the minarets ba bathed in gold and sunset, is something I will never forget. Who are you, and what is a dramaturge? Who am I? A simple question with a not-so-simple answer. I begin by telling you who I am not, namely, a member of the Majestic Theatre Company. I am a playwright like Principal Lexentail, but unlike him, I have chosen to remain independent. Genomus is an old friend, and when I heard he would be making a journey east, I asked if I could join him. You see, I too share many of the ideals that have fallen out of favor in the Imperial Court. And for who is better than a writer, well, it's not for me to say. I will, however, admit to being a considerable slower writer, as my publishers are all too readily attest. To make matters worse, I also have developed a passion for cookery of late, and spent a great deal of my time here asserting the, the galley staff and this, assisting the galley staff in exchanging my passage for the Prima Vista. Perhaps a change of profession is in order. Ah, so, if the wandering minstrel is Yoshi P, the wandering dramaturge... is Matsuno. Ah! You teased me! Yes! Yes. How convenient that with the cue pops right as I get through all the dialogue! How convenient! I have a big smile on my face. Come on. Come on, load faster, game. Oh no, red chocobos. There's our drop point. 
There's our destination. And there it is. People love their rings. Behold us... I, I didn't even have time to read that. Before us lies the royal city of Rabanasta. My father is somewhere inside. I can feel it. Those are no ordinary birds. Something foul prevents our crossing. Where is the number... Where is number numbing breath? You shall not fear me. You will. I need to target the correct thing. Okay. I gotta get my buffs up. I'm lagging really bad because there's so much going on. So, uh, this is Mateus. This is Mateus from Final Fantasy XII. Rise, Dark Water, and grant me strength. Goddess of Ice, be my blade. Alright, so there's this dancing ice thing in the middle that will freeze me if I get caught up in this path. And it will also freeze uh, other things. I, I need to hit that. Yeah, these are actually... Oh no, I'm tanking this. I don't know if we're gonna... The ice burns hotter than flame. You are to be branded for your heresy. It's a neat design, isn't it? Oh, there's so much going on, so much to talk about, but here we are. Here we are, I just sit here in silence. Living shield, protect me from evil. Note that they all have these cantrips, just like Final Fantasy Tactics. Unfortunately, this boss uh, does not sink well, so we might not see all the mechanics that they have. Freeze, Dark Waters, steal my body. Uh, I should be able to make it over to that safer spot. Yeah, I'm fine. Get back here. Let the Ikor flow. Let birth new. Le ah. let, let, let the birth mire be drowned, mine enemies. Toxins begin to spread through your body. It is becoming difficult to breathe. But we kill these frogs, and they make bubbles. And then we can breathe as long as we're in the bubbles. But the boss is nearly dead. We're not going to get to any more mechanics. It's a shame. It's a shame. Alright, that airway is coming through me. Fools, you have not yet seen the limit of my reach. And they fade out to nothing. Sid was not mistaken in his assessment of your skill in battle. Still, I worry that something even more sinister awaits us in the near. The gear here looks like stuff that you would find on a uh, Final Fantasy Tactics uh, unit. But these are hats, they're not great. Seek bandits. It appears that the deplorable creatures are here to raid the abandoned home. Yep, there's our Seek! Those are the pig guys! Sparrows, kind sires! The pain, all the pain! Release the birds! Over here! The bastards never saw it coming! More, more! Trap them flat! There's so many birds! So many black chocobos!
so very many black chocolate bars. But wait, there's more. Yet more black chocolate bars. But now for something different. Out from the corner flies a red. Which drops? Our chocolate meter. Quick! Everybody has to run. It still did that much damage, even if we were far away from it. But now the treasure chests were all mimics. <laughs> oh, I, I love this raid. I love this raid. Like, this is just a mob pack. This is just a, a, an interesting non-boss encounter. But it has so much story to it. Alright, we're finally able to go through. Some rubble has cleared. We're able to move through. My father mentioned the Empire using their might to put down the rebellions within the city, but this destruction is too widespread. What of that creature we fought earlier? Another that's twisted others? This is not the work of the Empire. Something is wrong here. And so we have Hashmal, bringer of order. Without order, creation is doomed to descend into chaos. I will bring order. You will kneel. Wake four. Some random attack going after some random people. I do not want to be in front of this boss, however. Earth Hammer is appearing there. It's in the air way above the boss. Let's see if the boss has moved. Let's see if the boss has moved. Nope. Ow. The land seeks order. It will not suffer the chaos of the pedal. Nor will I. And so he raises a tower. Ah, oh, shoot. What alliance am I? I am B. Ah. Da, 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 da. Why do you resist? Because I must! Couple of other enemies to dodge! Resistance will be met with retribution. The land shall bear your streams. To defy order is to defy creation itself. So, have you done uh, anything in the Gold Saucer? This was here first! Okay, fortunately they're leaning the other way, so I can just stand here. And those kill you in one hit. If they land on you. More towers. I'm not hitting the optimal side. I don't care. I'm alive. I'm still alive for now. I'll be stashing. Come. The cleansing flame shall seal all wounds. That side is all powered up. And as he slashes through the arena, he hits the other half too. Which makes him burn to death. It can be saved by a healer if they're fast enough. Another quake. That's a tank buster. More of those earth hammers. Now there's three of them. Even the laws of life itself are mine to bend. Rise, sand. Rise, stone. Heed my bidding. But we're going to beat the boss. Your order is a lie. Again, you're proving your worth to this expedition. Let us see what is beneath the city. More bandits, despite the creatures we've encountered. I know not whether they're brave or foolish. I can't really read what they're saying. They appear and disappear so quickly. But what's inside the box? Ah, old 
Invincible Demons. We are familiar with those. Anyway, I'm going to go after the Chimera first. Dragon's voice. It was stopped. That's good. It looks like we're just splitting up our dad. I, I got hit by something there. Okay, deleted that one. Now for the other next one. Paralysis sure is awful. I don't get paralyzed a lot, but when I do, it's always bad time. Okay. I'm not going to be able to read the papers in this. There's no way I can keep up with the group and read the papers that are in this channel, which is a true shame. There is lore here. Lore of the world, like, of the rabbit aster that was this place. But first, we go down the hole. You enter the Garbassian Gateway. Uh, Garbassus Waterway, rather. Oh, wow, that's a lot of text. And it's gone. Welcome to Agamemnon's Waterway. These tunnels are said to have existed since before even the Kingdom of Damascus was born. As the city grows, channels are widened and new outlets dug. I would venture to see some of the pools are so deep, no one alive has ever been seen at the bottom. Yeah, it's that famous place from Final Fantasy XII! I have to dive underwater here? Yeah, look, there's dialogue there! I don't have time to read that. If you're in a different raid group and you get a different part, then you get different areas. You don't necessarily even have all this hidden, sunken water dialogue everywhere. I would love to take the time out to go and read it, but I have to keep up with the group. I have to keep up with the group. We got the longest pass, the other two groups are already there. They had their own set of fun. Gateway opens, revealing a new route through the waterway. Teleportation stone glimmers. So, here's an original enemy that was not able to be included in Final Fantasy Tactics or 12. It was intended to be in Final Fantasy Tactics, but just, they couldn't add it. They couldn't add it. There wasn't enough development time to make the sprite, and they didn't know where to fit in the story. So look forward to something unique to this telling of Avalis. These ruins? They're no longer in Ravenaster, my friends. This is La uh, Lazalia. Lazalia of Evelician legend. And here's a great big arena. The creatures here are no mere beast nor void scent. The secrets of Lie Beyond must be ones worth keeping. It's a Ronald Kale, who's a guy who's worked into his steed. Hawk! What enemy marches on Rodot Hill's immense? Get my buff. Ill fortune befall those who dare gaze upon me. You see that helmet buster he did there? Just like Foul Vazzy Tactics. Just from, just like from the Holy Knights. Or the Divine Knights, rather. There's a chariot ride. I'll head over there. I'll do a cry of victory and hit half the field at random, aimed at somebody. All oh, escapable hell awaits you all. He's targeting the DPS with the. Uh... Yeah! Yeah, look at those! Yeah! It's just like I remember. They're hitting me right in the nostalgia! Right in the graphical nostalgia! Oh, that's Trample! I gotta get out of this unique figure 8 design of AoE! I walk in the shadows! You do not see me until my lance has already been uh, transfixed upon your very soul! He's been clones! Very impressive. Didn't hit a single person. That's okay. Crush Helm, he's going for the tank again. 
Here comes a wonderful spell effect out of the corner. Yes! <laughs> ah! I'm so easily pleased. Sound the battle horns. Soldiers to me. More demons. He's going to travel around the edge, but we have to keep the air we aim to the away from... The oh no, it's going to the other groups. But we're fine. Our damage is so high. If I will continue to ride around, it'll ride around so hard, we can't help the other group. I don't think anybody's stuck in there. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, I don't think enough people went into that hole. Come on, guys, you can do it. I was Alliance B, so I went north, right? That's how it... Oh no, we lose. We wiped. Not enough people went there. The heavens tremble in my wake. He continues to ride up. And ride up. And ride up. And ride up. The Orosite gaze upon its undying brilliance in the heat of battle. Well. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, we wiped. We wiped. We finally wiped on the raid boss. As a samurai, there was nothing I could have done. I mean, I guess I could have gone to a different group, but like B was supposed to be there, right? Oh man. Oh man. And this is only the third boss. I already read the dialogue on the previous attempt. I'll read dialogue again when I get to that point. Uh, it's just it's such a, a delight for my senses right here. I love these raids. I love these raids. Get back here. Okay, maybe I need to... Inescapable hell awaits us all! I'm really glad that's not going for me. Over here. Hey, Fonz! Welcome to Evilus! Yeah, this is a cut design enemy from Final Fantasy Tactics we're fighting right now. We just wiped because uh, our raid did not divide itself properly. Yeah, look at the spell effect and tell me this isn't straight from Final Fantasy Tactics. <laughs> I love it. I am, I am, I am absolutely delighting everything. Yep, this is north. This is B. This is where B goes. I am in the correct location. Okay. Do we have enough people in all the holes? Okay, we have enough people. Okay. Yeah, now the gauge barely filled at all. But the boss is still going to ride up. The heavens tremble in my wake. They're making a barrier. That's a little bit early. He has to ride around and get heaven for a while. Oh, sight! Gaze upon some dying brilliance, and know your folly! Ha 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 ha! Even a hound knows when to turn tail. Would you have to? Would you have a sneakless less than chatter? Ride in the lion's embrace. Oh, good! Now there's traps everywhere. So let's not step on a trap. 
Yep, that person activated that trap. Which trapped me too. Fortunately, I was a Suna, so I'm good. Trample? Yeah, so the first two bosses, no problem. And then this guy comes in. <laughs> ah! Maybe, maybe let's not be there. I don't have enough gauge to get to Gap Poser back in. I got too greedy with my damage, I guess. More ground traps. Yeah, let's not step on the ground trap. If I get hit by one of that, that's better than the trap. More tank buster. Come on, show us the other mechanic. Don't die yet. Don't die yet. Couple of ground traps, but there's also that. Burn and darkness, board of light, come forth, my children. We have to interact with these things. We don't just stand at them. The tip of my lance is ready on your necks. Submit or die. The light, it blinds. So that was all of his mechanics. I sure am glad that we got to see them all. Alright, let's put that away, let's put that away, let's get ready for a cutscene. I'm going to watch a cutscene, I don't care. Oh, to die a good death. I can't, I'll read that later. Do you remember the boss of Chapter 1 of Final Fantasy Tactics? Yeah, he feels wrong. Hi, you look a little bit familiar. A little bit scaled up, but I'll recognize that hair anywhere. And there's that aura sight. But what's happening to you, guy? Oh, we've seen this kind of transformation before in tactics. Haven't seen that before, though. It's slightly twisted version of what we saw. Who dares disturb the slumber of Arga Thadalfos, rightful king of Ibanis? Descendants of House Beowulf? Then by my sword shall I banish your souls to the deepest hell! Bond has no idea what Beowulf is. Yes! 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 They waited for me! They waited! It's a miracle! Chrono Guy has run this. Chrono Guy has run this. I have run this before, but I am so happy! They waited for me! It's Argath! Against Argath for the We got to beat him up again! Hold on, let me dodge a couple mechanics. Yeah, this is old, old, old content. This is from Stormblood. We are several expansions away from this. I was very happy to have run this the first time. So, his mask, his mechanic is mask. That was the white mask. The voice of God commands you to flee and not stop. So I have to run. Until it resolves. Judgment Blade! 
Up, I have to stand in the middle. Okay, now where is the meteor mark? There it is, and there's my sword in the middle, away from the meteor mark. That person plays theirs wrong. I did mine right. Boss lands over there. What a design! Draw forth from the shadows, my pet. So now all, we all have a uh, we all have a zombie tether to us. Uh, that dialogue is so jumbled and fast that there's no way I have any possibility of reading that. No, 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 no. Does it grieve you to see the depths of your own weakness laid bare, maggots? Okay, but now we have to kill the crystals again! Because he's going to use them to burst. They get a defense buff for being stacked on top of each other, but... That sure was an attack! Ha! Huh. You have yet to witness the Arsite's true might! Liar mask. I have to do the opposite of what it says. But commend you to flee and not stop, so I have to stop. I have to push no buttons. Okay, my controls are all messed up. This is confusion. Other way, other way, other way. I still think that got me. Yeah, just go through it. Ah, oh, no, I got turned into a chicken. I got hit too many times. I'm dead. You will be I had to obey the mechanic. Thanks for rescuing me in, but like I, I had a, I had a mechanics problem there. The confusion really got me. Turn away. No, that was a liar mask. I'm good. More confusion. Okay, this way. Alright. If anybody looks like they're not going in the right... Yeah, there we go. Good rescue. Good rescue. Ah. Uh. Oh. Yeah, Argoth sure got a, new tr a couple new tricks. All he had to do was get some, uh... All he had to do was get some Arasite. That's what we're calling it now, right? Yeah, these holy stones, so-called. Oh no! I can't move! <laughs> Zodiac <laughs> Even in his last moments, he still calls out for Ramza's help, the person he tried to portray. I CLEARED THE MAP! YES! HAVE me WRITE IN THE NOSTALGIA, PLEASE! What were the Golden Tactics? I'm pretty sure they were just Holy Stones. I'm pretty sure they were just called Holy Stones and Tactics. Okay, uh... The healer who rescued me isn't here. Uh, I'll give it to... The, I think the tank did a good job? Uh, 
Gear! I would like music, yes, please, yes, thank you. Give me... Yes! I got one music. Okay, so, uh, like I was saying before, the armor from this raid looks like gear that would be on tactics for Final Fast on characters for Final Fantasy Tactics. The gloves are for the calculator class. It's called Astrologers, but it's for the calculator. Uh, let's see. Lancer Gauntlet. I'm pretty sure this is just a gauntlet from the uh, Dragoon class in the game. Uh, let's see, what else dropped? Yeah, yeah, this looks kind of like uh, Olan's gear. or o No, it's, it's not... Ta Hold on. Let me compose myself. It looks like the Astrologian class, which was uh, Oron's class, or Olan's class. We met him for one map, remember? He was Sid's adopted son. So it just looks like that. That just looks like that. Uh, what was the Fusilier's jacket? Yeah, that kind of looks like a... That kind of looks a little bit like somebody we know. Looks very similar to Mustadio's uh, jacket. So yeah, I'm... I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Uh, which rescue? Yes, I got rescued twice. I got rescued when I was turned to a chicken near the edge of the map and about to die. I also got rescued uh, away from a death trap on uh, Reta Scale. But now we have cutscenes! First one was you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Miss Pepper. I'm surprised you're not a uh, dancer. We worked hard on that. But if you wanted to be a scholar for these because you don't trust the Lions Raid healers, I believe you. So yeah, we got some Arasite. It's the same as the one you showed me on the ship, right? Oh, you're still alive. Good. You alright, guy? Uh, where am I? Father! Umza, and the Warrior of Light? Yes, I know you. But that you should come to my rescue? But words fail me. A poor playwright I might seem. Oh! Up oh, there's those manga that we saw in the previous cutscene, and a knife to his throat! Seems like I acted a little bit slow there. It had me looking for us, thank you. Upon which note, I, Bugadon, Bounty Hunter, do humbly thank you, Warrior Light, for delivering me this fine gift. Now hand over the Orsite, unless you wish to see the desert sands turn red. And be quick, Gidget here does not have the steadiest of hands. That one. That one. She will bring it to me. Oh, here you go. They don't trust me because they know I can defeat them. Good of you to run. Glad you didn't become hostage number two. Ah, oh, the Taurus symbol. He likes it. Yes! This is it! The Duba! I think we found it so close to Doba. The Duba of Doba! <laughs> oh, he got shot for that? Wow! Enough, Waggy! Do not have our guests think us under, uh, underbred. You have what you want, you thieving lizards. Now unhand him. Of course, a bongo is always true to his word. They'll be keeping this, though. Father! They have such a nice airship. You're only yourselves to blame for this. If you mistake my thoughts, you can always blame the gods, 
Now that they're listening. <laughs> oh, it harkens back to... He said the thing. Get up, you fool. We're leaving. Yeah, he just got shot. He's fine. Just hanging on for dear life. What a band. You're going to be all right. They cannot see your father's hurt seer. Come on, we must get him back to the Prima Vista. So what happened to all those other adventurers? I'm pretty sure that all 24 of us could have stopped a couple of bongo like that. Ah, well. Let's see. The tanking coat dropped from the third boss. You linked it in party when I'm out cutscene. Might want to show it off too. It's very familiar for anyway play tactics. Oh yeah, that one! Oh yeah, let's see here. So yeah, if you want to look like this, you know, this looks like um, a little bit more armored than I remember. A little bit more armored than I remember. Uh, it, you can't dye it, so that's a little bit unfortunate. I've always been waiting for a dyeable version to get released in the future, but this reminds me a lot of Rumza Squire outfit from Chapter 1. So if you want to get yourself a, a, a Rumza cosplay, a Rumza glamour, you absolutely can. Just run this raid a couple times as a tank and hopefully get your drops. Ah! Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. Tell me the principal will be all right. If we were to... I can't bring myself to think what would happen if... if... Words cannot express my gratitude for the part you played in the principal's rescue. Ramza insists that I will make a full recovery, though, after what happened to his mother, Tia, uh, what else could I say? The others tell me you risked your life to save uh, Genomis, a guardian citizen. Perhaps your view of us Imperials is less simplistic than I had assumed. You have my thanks for aiding the Robinson and the, pr the Principal's rescue. The entire company, nay, the entire world is in your debt. I didn't stop... whatever. Well, I think of your Principal lying there, the muscle of my heart aches. One, two, three, one, two, three, huh? Now is that the time to be practicing what the principal unconscious? Nonsense! Now is the perfect time to practice. I want this performance to be flawless by the time he comes to. <laughs> well, some people are dedicated. Anything new, Dad? Dramaturge? Allow me a moment to deviate from my normal routine and thank you personally for rescuing that my dear friend Genomis. Thank you. With that out of the way, what is it you would like to know? Nothing new. Yet. He is unchanged. Father, wake up! Father, please! Mother, don't take him from us yet! Uh. Genomis remains deep in slumber, but his breathing is steady and his fever has subsided. For now, all we can do is wait. I've sent word to Sid. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, sure, bring Sid back in! How'd you get here so fast? I guess you do have the Enterprise. Alma, Ramza, can I ever forgive me? And you, Sid. It was never my intention to put you to such trouble. I am ever in your debt. You would have done the same for me, Genomis. Besides, it was Monty who went to all the trouble. If anyone deserves your thanks, it's him. Yeah. He's right. I have done not to deserve your kindness, yet I am in its uh, beneficiary nonetheless. So the job's done, right? I can just go home? But I want to learn so much more about your story. 
So if I understand correctly, you're saying our site does not work to facilitate the possession of a living host by an icon, as it was assumed to be the case with the sail and the archbishop, but rather absorbs the host's aether, its very soul, and somehow transforms it to become the, the host's body. Uh, the thing that Fawns mentioned earlier, is that different from Nether, uh, Nether site? I believe so. I believe so. Our site is, like, full of aether. And it's used to contain aether. Nether site, not so sure. Is that another Final Fantasy reference? I'm not catching it, if so. If that's the case, our Charlotte and allies will need to be informed immediately. Well, I suppose the real question here is, did you find what you came looking for? The legend would have us believe that Delita Haref, the commoner who would be king, was the sole hero of the Zodiac Brave story, but as I have discovered, there was another. Two others, in fact. Siblings whose roles faded from the subsequent retelling of the story. A brother and sister by the names of Ramza and Alma. Then... To prepare us for this assignment, I poured over every published work of the Velasian legend I could find my hands on, and nowhere did I find a mention of these siblings. Twelve takes place in Evilus. Yes. We fought many iterations of Evilesian guys there. Maybe Nethosite and Arasite are the same thing, but translated for different worlds. But I did. I uncovered irrefutable evidence that the leader had close correspondent or a companion named Ramza, who aided him to his right as power. This in turn led me to Alma, and that I might never lose sight of the truth, I named my own children after these lost players. I am sorry I never told you any of this, Sid, but you must believe me. Evilus has never been a mere pastime of mine. It is and forever will be my calling, my purpose. My family's purpose. Go on. The world knows me as Dunomus and Lexentail, yet that is but my stage name. My true name is Arslam. Arslam Durai. Ah! The guy who runs the tutorials in Final Fantasy Tactics! Countless generations past, it was my ancestor who penned the Durai papers, an account of Evilus in the War of the Lions that details what truly occurred during the turbulent era. You are tired, father. Rest. I will continue. Long ago, an orphan by the name of Oran Durai crossed paths with both Ramza and Delita. After Delita's rise to power, Oran found himself in the service of the Papa become king. Following the War of Lions, Oran believed that the people of Evilus had the right to know what truth of Ramza's involvement, and set about documenting his deeds. When the church learned of his intent, however, they branded him a heretic and had him burned at the stake. The Durai papers were never published, and any existing copies were gathered and sealed away in the church vaults, the truth of Evilus being burned, uh, being buried along with them. But a so damning it would drive the church to do such a thing. Hmm. This cough's about as bad as mine. Maybe worse. The answer to that question can be found in this book, the only surviving transcript of my ancestor's chronicle, copied from an early draft and passed down the untold generations. With this, my father and I plan to reveal the truth and restore honor to my family name. Nice! Forbidden Chronicles? A secret family legacy? Not that I taught you, Genomus. But how do I expect me to convince people of all this when you're well nigh every soul in the realm believes evilness to be nothing but a bedtime story? By proving that it is anything but. And when people see that Evilus is real, the rest will fall into place. Well, it's simpler as bringing forth a chronicle and submitting it for review. We, of course, have done so long ago. But alas, it does not. The derived papers, you see, are written in High Evilesian, an ancient tongue long extinct. My father, his father, and his father before him labored tirelessly to decipher this tome, but for want of other sources made only pitiful, uh, fitful progress. A word here, a phrase there, it wasn't until a recent expedition to Ravenaster turned up several well-preserved artifacts and were able to translate a small portion of the papers. 
that the diary was stolen by the bonga, uh, bounty hunters. I'm afraid so. Everything we learned in the language was contained in those pages. Then we're back to where we started. Not necessarily. We still have the transcripts as well as some few translated passages. And of course, my father's impeccable memory. I have come too far to allow so simple a setback to deter me from my purpose. I will show the world the truth if it is the last thing I do. It is as Master Galvin said. He is a man obsessed, and I fear Evelis's grip on him will only grow tighter. Father was fortunate to escape Ravenaster with his life, and already he speaks of continuing his quest? Promise me you'll keep him safe, please. I mean, I guess I can be a bodyguard for a little bit. You guys are technically paying me. But wait, what's back there on that desk? Oh yeah, your Arasite. It's glowing in your box. That's not foreboding at all. But we are here, back in Kugane. If it loads. I'll take this moment to refresh my... I did not play a lot of 12. In fact, I played none of 12. I've seen some of 12. I always look at Final Fantasy 12 and I'm like, Ah, oh, yes! Final Fantasy 14 offline. It sounds like a wonderful time. But I'm not sure if I want to get invested in such a long game, like, like that's as grindy as this, if not, at like, more. It seems like a lot, and I'm a little bit scared that I'll become obsessed with it. Similar to my obsession with this, but this I can put down and I can play once a week. Anyway. After what I've seen here, I'm all but convinced that even this exists, at least in some form. The problem will be getting sufficient evidence to convince the thousands of scholars and historians who have based their careers on the presumption that it doesn't. Not that I've ever been one to shy from a challenge, especially when it means the story of the century. If you're in Bond, then I'm in. If you're not, well, I'm still in. Either way, you'll be hearing from me again soon. That much, I promise you. Two music! So we get the background story. And the protagonist theme. Delightful. Did I get a music? No, or did I get a card? I do not think I got a card there. Shame. Ah, oh, well, I might win one of the cards eventually. Uninvited. Lady Millen appears to be ha been waiting for your arrival for quite some time, but I'm still here. Bond, where in the world have you been? Did you not receive all my summons? Principal Lexentail's research to the site has finally borne fruit. We must hurry to Prima Vista before they embark on some grand perilous adventure without us. They wouldn't. After all, I drive the plot. We go up the tower. In her message, Alma mentioned a guest from Charlene. Some the, someone your companion Sid Garland believes might prove useful in assisting their principal's research. An archetype, I think, is a term she used. Hmm. I think I'm familiar with this character. I'm not sure what voice I'm going to be giving her. I'm not sure what voice I'm going to be giving her. Giving, given present company... Given present company, uh, I might give her the more nasal voice. If you would follow me to the shuttle, good sir. Hello, everyone who is important. I am here. The plot can commence. Aunt, Lady Muria, thank you for answering my summons. Master Garland was kind enough to send for an Archon from Charlene, and I thought it only right that you be present to hear her findings.
To be frank, summoning Minkoto was more your stolen idea. I simply came along to see what you would uh, shed some light on the mystery. Oh, hi there! You're new! I am Mikoto of House Jinbei, a dolmen, though my years in Charlene have made me a stranger here. You must be Mont Megamer, fabled liberator of men, slayer of false gods, warrior of light. I thought you'd be taller. Well, sorry, I didn't max out this height slider. Yep, that's the R site in the box. It's not glowing right now. Let us speak of the crystal. You have to find a place to begin? Um. Notious. One of but many of the R site shards that aided in a noble deed has rise to uh, regent. My apologies. The Ochius is no ordinary crystal, even discounting its obvious historical importance. The specimen is more than a simple manifestation of elementally aspected energies. It is, rather, an ethereal lodestone which facilitates it in both the absorption and transmission of distinct frequency NRR type harmonic vibrations has been observed to promote ethereal amplification. The result of neuroharmonic disturbance allows a highly unique emittance of CPERS waves that, instead of radiating outward with a delineation factor of dispersal, instead resonates inward at a frequency so labored my estimates place it on the VRT decay of upward of several centuries. Though I must admit I lack sufficient var uh, varieties to compare a truly comprehensive graphical assessment. Those are words you chose! <sighs> Well, explanation might elicit admiring nods from your professors in the academy, or earn you only blank looks here. Take a deep breath and try again. This time in a language those of us without the echo might comprehend. Sorry, we're a little bit dumb. My apologies. I merely thought. Apologies will save us no sooner to an nearer to an answer. A simpler explanation will. Simpler, right. Um, Aether is not only the building block of all things material, but those immaterial as well. Thoughts, memories, feelings, one's very will are all what understood to be ethereal phenomena and can be measured as such. Unlike most crystals, which only emit elemental energies, our sight is tuned not only to absorb Aether, but Aether specific to the immaterial. The Aether is then stored and multiplied within its crystalline confines until external stimuli precipitates release. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Very good. Uh, under appropriate conditions, a strong will or desire can become imprinted upon the R site and stored until uh, fermentation, at which time the desire becomes manifest. Fermentation? What my studious young friend is trying to say is that Ogius takes one's deepest fantasies and makes them reality. Ah, yes. Yes, that is simpler. You may choose to think of it as a process akin to that of summoning a primal. There being one marked difference. Primal summoning requires a supplemental energy source, such as a horde of elementally charged crystals. Our site, on the other hand, has the capacity to serve as its own source of power. By feeding on souls, right? I've also handled Arasite in the past. Namely, White Arasite. We have known for the derived papers that Argath was never king of Evilus. He was slain in battle during the War of the Lions. Yet the Argath encountered during, during the events of the expedition carries himself as if he had been crowned regent. I believe this was merely the R site in his possession making manifest, uh, realizing his desire to rule. I am informed that the, I am informed that he uttered the same words over and over again during the duration of the con confrontation which unfolded. That if that is the case, it is possible that it was not actually Argath who uttered them, but the R site itself. The Dry Papers are accurate. Argath was a weak and petty noble who believed that his blood entitled him to power. 
Yes, I took that belief and twisted it into the abomination that we bought put to the sword. Then you're saying the crystal could prove a threat? There are sight armor, and not necessarily. Rumsa seem to fare well enough. There's no record of the young regent being manipulated by the artifacts he gathered. In the hands of the just, the Arsight should prove harmless, even beneficial. But who's to say who's just? The paraphrase. It's not the weapon that kills, it's the one who wields it. Now where have I heard that before? Oh yes, it was Emperor Galvis's justification for taking the marvels of Magitech and applying them to the manufacture of arms. Where, after all, was the harm if it was allowed to bring order to the three great continents? You draw an intriguing parallel, Master Garland. The proprietors of these crystals are so singular, I do believe they will have to wonder if they will, like Magitech, are produced of science, not nature. They were created by someone to... But who? What manner of person would even be capable of such a feat? That's a great question! Oh, someone getting a call? You need it back with Omega? Now that is an interesting question, answer to which I look forward to hearing. Regrettably, I have pressing matters to attend to elsewhere. Fair not, however. Recorder's insight will prove far more beneficial than anything I might accidentally contribute. Good day to you all. Your, ex your explanations were so succinct in comparison. Oh well. Hmm, I wonder what it tastes like. Probably salt. What I don't understand is... If this Duma was imprinted with Argas' deepest desires, then whose desires are rattling out inside the Orthus? I have the self-same question, and thus conducted a thorough inspection of the crystal upon my arrival. The results were inconclusive. Traces of ethereal activity were present, but to all interests, intents and purposes, the vessel was empty. Empty? But what are the voices I heard? Voices? I heard nothing of the sort. The only voices you heard, Alma, were in your stubborn head. Ramsa, why won't you listen? Shall we speak of voices, then? What of yours, Alma? Our resonant voice of dissent. You have done naught but question the wisdom of research from the moment we left Garlemald. Were you putting your petty worries above your family's calling? No, I would never. You would never? Then why involve a gossip mongering, a goody two shoes, and this 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 flying mole? What? Oh, right, it's a miracle. Please tell me you can see that. Normally, Moogles are only seen by people who have the Echo, so I'm glad everybody here can see it. Also, it has a white palm. That's a little bit different. All the palms we've seen up until now have been red. With one seasonal event having a heart-shaped palm. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Can we keep it? Most intriguing. Is it alive? A Moogle. It's a slightly dusty one at that. Might this one be one of your acquaintances, Bond? Nope. A Moogle. Ah, uh, yes. Don't just stand there. Get rid of the thing. You're the Liberator. Liberate this vessel from the pest. <laughs> well, if they want me to manhandle a Moogle, I've done that a couple of times. I'm the Knight! Ah, oh, the waltz. Am I interrupting? Oh, please, do go on. By acceptance into your fine troops ranks, you can wait until all the others have said their peace, Kupo. 
Guards! Guards, get this this Mont Blanc. The name is Mont Blanc. Denizen of Dalmascus Deserts, seeker of thrills, adventure extraordinaire. Well you may call me Mont Blanc, Coupeau. Dalmasca has been long been known to be a melting pot for myriad cultures, where minor races such as Sikh, the Banga, and the Viera might live in relative harmony with Hura, Elzen, and others. Yet there's no record of a prominent Mughal population. Most likely because we are neither prominent nor populous. My people are nomadic by nature, ever drawn to the elusive frontier of the freedom of the promises, Kubo. A uh, Mughal? Of course I'm a Mughal, Kubo. Do you think the adorable wings and the fluffy palm would have given it away? Now about my admission to the Majestic... I will not allow no such thing. The Majestic is the Empire's premier theater company. We will not sully its good name by granting refuge to a fluttering ball of fur. And they're fighting. With words. The most boring kind of fighting. By means of his wings, why well, I guess, as was well a mission to our company, I do not seem to recall race, creed, or allegiance to my last uh, on my list of prerequisites. Do you? No, father. Very well then, Mont Blanc, was it? What is exactly that calls you to the stage? Our stage. What else? The Zodiac Brave story, Kupo. Never before have I witnessed something so amazing, so moving. Sitting, well, technically hovering there in the audience, as the story unfolded around me. I knew I was witnessing something special. Something positively transcendental, Kupo. It was then that I realized I either had to be a part of it, or go to my grave a bitter and broken mughal. Was it this realization before or after you swore it simply had to become the realm's greatest marauder, Kupo? Purdy? With a blue palm? Purdy, how did you? They're multiplying! Perhaps you'd be a more success at uh, simply running away if you did not reveal your grand designs to every other fool you happen to meet, Kupo. Was it not about two score nights ago you took up your axe, Kupo? Now here you are, professing a passion for the stage before carving even a single notch in your haft. Do you not remember? To who turns the butter goes the sweetest bread? But how is one to savor the buttered bread? It was that as a belly of a fearsome bre a beast. You accused me of giving up when I merely came to the realization that continuing would end in failure. Only through a change of course could I have reached my final destination, Kupo. And that destination is what? Mama? Are you sure it's not Geomancer? And our mathematician? Templar? Do not bother answering, Kubo. We all know you'll be seeing a different tomb come to uh, Cockcrow. Ah, yes! All classes we can't be! Rubbing it in! Trying to egg Yoshi P to add them to the game. That's not where you're mis- That's where you're mistaken, Hody. I was destined to be a thespian. I can feel it in my fur. The role of the leader was made for me! Made for me, Kupo! Kupo, 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 Kupo! Enough! The actors in our company trained to the Empire's finest institutes. They represent the pinnacle of the profession, not only in Gullamold, but across the entire world. A vagrant bat mole like you could never hope to share the stage with such artists, let alone pay to an expert hero like the leader. You yourself admitted you were but too craven to face a solitary beast. How do you think you imagine you would fare against a pack of theater critics? Any troop would need a proof of valor before it could even be considered. Craven. You call me a cheat and call me a cur, but do not, sir, call me a craven. I accept your challenge. Slay but one foul beast in mine own hand, and the Majestic Theater Company will accept me into its ranks, Kupo. Well, I issued no such. You are all here, witnesses, Kupo. When I return with the head of a terrible beast in my gore stained hands, you will be on the honor bound to welcome the Mon me, Mont Block the Mother, into the fabled ranks of the Majestic. Good day! Wonderful. What do we do now? What do we do? We do nothing. If his bubble bat wishes to throw himself onto the home of Stampeding Zoe, I will not stand in his way. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Some of these voices are really taking their toll. 
I believe the proper term of derogation is Molbat, and I should warn you, Moogles do not take kindly to those who use it. Hydrate, yes, sure, thank you. That one's empty. But this is why I get two drinks. I must you always put yourself above others, brother. Did you learn nothing from Argos' wretched example? Mount Blanc would never have set off on this fool's errand had you not made the challenge. If anything but falls my brother, his blood will be on your hands. Bont, you're the only one amongst us capable of locating Mont Blanc and preventing disaster. On behalf of my brother, I beg your assistance. I guess. I guess it's up to me to save Mont Blanc. You saw the poor Moogle. He won't last a day on his own. You must find him and bring him back. I beg of you. I I apologize. I must learn to control my anger. But sometimes it can be difficult. Yeah, you are only like what? Fifteen? Shortly after arriving here, I was presented with a study which suggested that consuming large quantities of honey improved brain function. The results were so compelling that I almost felt moved to try. Until, that is, I saw the work had been commissioned by one of Eorzea's foremost confectioners. It made me long to return to Charlayne. Forgive me. Was there odd that you wish to ask? Tell me about Aurasite! In simple terms, I know, from what I've been able to discern, Aurasite displays the uncanny ability to draw upon the will of its possessor and manipulate the formless Aether into a corporeal manifestation. The resultant form can be maintained for as long as there is Aether to sustain it. Principal Genromus has been recently uncovered evidence which appears to corroborate my suspicion that Aurasite is not a naturally occurring substance, but one created to serve a purpose. I'll be at the purpose I have yet to identify. Tell me about Orcheus. Despite being the principal's possession for an extended period of time, the Oceus exhibits none of the ethereal imprinting present in the Duma. In other words, the Aurasite is yet to absorb any of Lord Genomus' aether. It is, for want of a better description, empty. But that as it may well be, we still have no idea how it might be filled, its creators having neglected to include a removable stopper. <laughs> and the Duma! I just saw in the ruins of Lysaeli, the Duma makes manifest the desires of its owner. On that occasion, Argath Adolphus. When he defeated the would-be king, his Aether was released from the Arsite and the attunement broken, rendering the crystal empty once more. Neat! So we have two empty Arsites. That also explains why they don't have the same demons that we encountered in Final Fantasy Tactics. However did Ramsa come to be so thoroughly obnoxious? He and his sister couldn't be more different. Moogles are prominent players in the Evolution Legend, but none of the tales uh, mentions the capacity for flight. Something lost in translation, perhaps. Ah, yes, because the Evolution Moogles are more like Lollafels. They're more like Lollafel sized. How about you guys? You all saw it. You're all staring at the Moogle right now. Huh? A Moogle? Never heard of them. Are you quite certain it's not a Kami? Or a yokai, perhaps? It took me five summers and ten auditions to earn a place in the Prima Festa. That thing is in for a surprise if it believes the principal will grant it a role in our stage. A Moogle? Oh, they bear no resemblance to the Moogles in our production. Our mo poor cost uh, costumers will have to start from scratch. Not a Maggle, you say, but a Moogle. Eat, pray, die says nothing of Moogles. Are they delicious as Maggles? No, not nearly. The Moogle creatures are utterly adorable. Do you think you'd mind if I stroked him? I always wondered what a Moogle truly looked like. Something about the costumes we use here always seemed a little odd. The rabbit-like ears for one, the long limbs, and the wispy uh, singlets. I did not know better. I would say that our customer had absolutely no idea what a Moogle was. See, they just keep on... Ugh. They're painting the image of an Evolution Moogle in my mind. Ah. Ah. Moogles, you say? Uh, I play a Moogle in the Zodiac Brave Story. I can tell you, true Moogles are little like, the, are little like those portly vermin hovering before us. So you played a Moogle? Oh no, they got it all wrong. Uh, that said, 
That said, I legitimately prefer Evilus's take on Moogles over these. These might be more, like, true to form of what Moogles are in other Final Fantasies, but I still love Evilusian Moogles, and kind of wish that they were a different kind of offshoot. If only there was other, some other small, rabbit-like race that had, like, unique animations and unique forms of spellcasting that were available somewhere in this game. If only. Alas, we shall never see. Unless I continue. Alright, I have to talk to Hurdy. Our brother can be rather simple-minded when it comes to matters. Thinking to impress a warrior of light to his companions, Mont Blanc would likely choose the scene of your recent exploits to prove his worth, meaning Ravenaster, if I'm not mistaken. Pardon my language, but Haram's is really is an uh, incurable little prick, is he not? How dare he speak to his sister and Moogle in such a manner? I couldn't decide which was worse, the things he said or the way the principal sat back and let him say them. But I suppose it is none of our concern. For now, let's concentrate on the task at hand. Finding that Moogle before he does something we'll all regret. Let's say we start nearby. Pier 2, perhaps? Okay. Yeah, Moogles aren't exactly common. Especially here in the Far East. And we do have a Moogle. So we go and question some of the locals, like, Hey, have you seen one of these? Like, we should get something. Alright, let's see here. Here, too. Ah, the exit. I think for the next one I'll be a monk. Just a little bit of a change of pace. The Falcon Portrait tells us that he saw a, a traveling blacksmith away to Yangja, not a bell passed. And why would that be of interest to us, you ask? Because said peddler of iron steel was seen be carrying a bag stuffed to the brim with, and I quote, albino mole fur and purple bat wings. Mont Blanc. Not that we look anything like that, Coupeau. The quickest route is at Mount Vasca is via the One River. The One River, even. And has western tributaries. If Mont Blanc is bound for Rabanaster, it will seek passage from the Kittenberg Basin. The glittering Basin, even. So that's, uh, way over there. Fortunately, we have a way to get there faster. We have a way to get there faster. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the Domen Enclave and then take the boat. As I take this moment to stretch a little bit. Couple of my messages. Goes a little bit backwards. Maybe I should have the uh, clouds as my mount for the monk. And maybe I should have this as my mount for the samurai. Oh well. I'll have you take us back. Oh yes, red chocobos. Okay, so funny story here. Funny story here. There are YouTube videos that will show this. Um, on day one of when this patch was released, this was hilarious. Imagine for a moment. There's two red chocobos here. There's two red chocobos here. I'm gonna paint an image of my like of what's going on, like while well, I'm not doing anything. I'm gonna use my words instead of showing you. So imagine for a moment. This is just me. 
The second I go in here, two red chocobos are going to spawn, and I have to defeat those two red chocobos in order to be able to progress. However, patch day! Imagine someone in the neighborhood of 50 players coming in here, all summoning two red chocobos at the same time. Okay, with that painted, let's fight them. So, this is two red chocobos. Yeah, this isn't so bad right now. Oh, Charco Meter. Charco Meter. You know what? I'm going to get hit by this. Ow! Now imagine a hundred of those. It begins. Charco Meteor. Charco Meteor. Charco Meteor. <laughs> Yeah, let's, uh... Uh-huh! Uh-huh! Being the only player here? Perfectly fine. Valid. Works just... It works good. A hundred of those? Everywhere? All the time? <laughs> uh, patch Day was a massacre. Uh, I was playing as a paladin at the time. I just turned on hollow ground, went in, spawned my two, and then went to a, another place, like, slightly behind, like, over here. And I thought that would, like, I went all the way down over here to be able to not have my chocobos interfere with everybody else's chocobos. But, oh, Patch Day was... Uh, there is documented footage of that event, and I do highly recommend using it. However, I'm not going to steal someone else's content. I'm not going to steal someone else's content, so... Ah, uh, great. Ah, uh, great. A uh, bug. What are you thinking? Have you had any idea what you put your brother through? He has been worried about you. Both Hurdy and Robzo were right all along. I'm a failure. A flop. A flailing, flapping, foolish failure, Koopo. How could I play the part of a hero if I cannot even ruffle the feathers of a single measly bird? The audience would see right through me like a spineless jellyfish I am. Now wait, Monk Blanc. Not everyone can be a hero. Not even the most heroic. Not even most heroes can be a hero. Yes, the bards sing of a man who deals the final blow, but what of his cadre of loyal companions? Do you think Delita united Evilis on his own? Do you think Bond Hero was alone when he liberated Alimigo? Uh, I did have help. Now, let's see. You're never alone on the battlefield, or not all wars are won on the front lines. I'm going to say you're never alone on the battlefield. Because there's always your enemy, after all. Never alone. So saying that you'll always be there for me? For Mont Blanc? No, not necessarily. Uh, I think it was speaking metaphorically. Let's not dwell on the details. The day is saved and Mont Blanc has escaped uh, sans scratch or singe show for it. We shall return to the Prima Vesta before our luck runs out. Back to Kugane. On that day, everyone suddenly learned that Red Chocobos were a big deal. But it was not the end of the Red Chocobo meme. I hope that one day I will advance the story close enough that I will be able to show that. I do not think we see any more Red Chocobos in this raid series. But we will see Red Chocobos again in the future. 
please look forward to it. All right, take me in. Yep, I beat up some birds. Oh, hi. Yep, they have a gun. Please, the ship is a place of peace. Release my sister, or you will answer to me. When the cat's away... Put that damnable thing down, Ramza. You're not helping matters. We have no quarrel with you or yours. We only seek one to aid in our finding our leader, Bagamungun. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were the leader. You seek our help? You who threatened to kill my father, who stole his work and made fools of us all? Never! Silence, Ramza. They have armor. We hear what they have to say. As I said, we have no quarrel with you. We only did what was necessary to secure an audience. We surrender our weapons and offer to your, your journal as an act of good faith. Yeah, you're holding a gun, man. That's a good impact. For this game, that's a good impact. Weird to see the person with a gun surrender, but here we are. This is all rather a lot to digest, but your claims do coincide with what we have learned about the other side. You're saying that Crystal did something to our captain? After being emptied of Vargas' will, the Duba sought to, uh, that of another to say to appetite for Aether. You're saying that Crystal ate our captain? I like his tiny hat. Not his body, no. Only his soul. His soul? Tell me, what in your opinion was your leader's deepest desire? What was it that he longed for above all else in the world? Why waste your breath reasoning with these these lizards? They showed themselves to the beast they are when they put a knife to your throat. Those small bats, now lizards. This one's tongue is pure poison. That was sure a look. <sighs> People love hiding behind me. Boy can call us what he pleases. Four past failings, we deserve no better. Your failings? Booty summers have come and gone. Yet not a single night goes by that I do not wake in the sweat of that memory. There are fessineers in the Dalmascan army, stationed at the royal stronghold at Na Navina. Navina Fortress was reputed to be impenetrable. Its fall to the 4th Legion proved to be a turning point in the Imperial Campaign, dealing a crushing blow to Dalmascan morale and ultimately marking the beginning of the Kingdom's end. We gotta see a flashback? We do! Oh, and art! Bagaman was our captain, and once it was clear that the day would not be ours, Prince Razia, commander of the garrison at Nabida, asked him with one final mission. Our unit was to escort His Highness's twin sister, the Princess Ashella, away from the fortress and thence to safety. But things did not go as planned.
I still remember the words she uttered on that day as she lay dying at the captain's arms, with a stone's throw from where the government's waterways drains into the sea. Even as the fog of death descended upon her, she smiled and told us, the very people that failed her, to survive, for as long as even a single Damascan stood, our nation would never truly perish. But it should not have been us who st uh, survived. By failing to protect our charge, we betrayed the princess and her memory, and brought shame upon our race. So yes, we are not but cold-blooded lizards deserving of whatever scorn you drag to heap upon us. Uh, I think you may safely assume a deep-seated hatred towards the invaders of his homeland, coupled with a self-loathing born from a sense of powerlessness. The darkness that lurks in the heart of Bagaman is little different than that of which drove Argath, the self-same emotions which would uh, nourish the Duma. Time to find another one! Stop speaking in riddles, Charlene. She's saying your brave captain will eventually turn into a monster, or rather, more of one. Gallian lies! What they say is true. If we do not find Begamin and, uh, and the Duma soon, none of us are safe, present company included. Do you have any idea where he might have gone? Any at all? They just shake their head. I like the way that their ears flop and dangle. Wait, look at this. Something has been added to the final page of my journal. How convenient! And the captain must have put it in there. Only he had access to it. Until we found the bag that he's left behind, that is. Is this Dalmaskin? Indeed it is. It says Rutorada. The lighthouse? Why would he write that? In the old man's journal, no less. Perhaps he translated it? There's a place on the Vanard Sea, far to the south of Rabinasta. But the ocean tumbles into a gaping mall, more than a mall across. The Ritterana Cataract. Neat! So I get to travel more of the world? Legend would have us believe that the ex is the entrance to hell of water. Many a scholar seeking to prove otherwise has descended into the chasm, some even by airship, but not a one has returned. Hmm. Well, I tend to return from places where people don't return. So give me a ship, and I'll go try it! All that I know about Ritterana I learned during my lessons on Dalmasca geography, but no mention was made of Ivalician legend. While Principal Genomis seems convinced of the connection, I believe I shall reserve judgment for until more is known. Is there aught else you would ask of me? Tell me about Ritterada Lighthouse. There's a place on the Valnard Sea, far to south of Ravenaster, where the ocean tumbles into a gaping ball of more than a across, the Ritterana Cataract. Legends would have us believe that is the entrance to Hell of Water. No one's returned. Bounce on the lip of a raging gulf as it sits a tiny islet atop which rises an ancient lighthouse, its origin unknown. For centuries, the tower was manned by Damascan candle keepers, who labored at dusk till dawn to warn sailors of the perilous drop. Since the kingdom's annexation, however, the structure has lain vacant, assuming it has not been claimed by the island's wildlife. It appears yesterday's enemy is tomorrow's friend, but then where does that leave us today? With new enemies! Hey, Temple Wolf! Yep, I sure am! I'm having a time reading! This is a great big book, and I am happy. The Bonga who took us hostage were once loyal fusiliers. Whatever could have driven them to this life of villainy? Tell me, is Ritterana truly as magnificent as they say? 
Huh? You've never been there? And I was thinking you might have something to contribute. Well, I mean, I do hit things really hard. So I will have something to contribute. Ever since laying hands on Duba, Bugaban has acted strangely. He has begun speaking of the stone as it were Prince Razia himself. At first, my brothers and I thought it was in jest. But he continued long after he thought us all abed. It is true. My brothers and I were fugitives in the royal family, and the Gaman has was our family, our captain. We only laid down our flint blocks once we realized our failure. The Banga lived long. Any other race would think it a blessing, but to me and mine is a curse. More summers means more suffering. Rotorana, it were up to me, I would never go near the place. You see, we desert moogles are not, how you say it, in our element around water. All right, we cannot swim. Sink like sledgehammers with you, Kupo. Do I know Verderano? Of course I know Verderano. Now, have I been there? No, can't say that I have, Kupo. How about the other actors? Before Sid left, he handed me this queer contraption. Said it was an Alagon storage node. And I, if I activate, I'd hear the principal's voice as if it were standing right beside me. Would you care to try it? Records found. Initiating query pr uh, protocol. Yeah, this way, if you want to talk to people who aren't there because the plot demands that they be somewhere else, or if you want to hear old dialogue, you can use this thing. Fortunately, I'm pretty, uh, pretty on it. My fellow Thespians and I are one to claim the Ritterada Cataract as one way gate to the Seventh Hell. Well, I'm not too about to take their word for it. They are inclined to put their theory to the proof. Given what the Empire did to the Banga's homeland, and the fact that we hail from you-know-where, do you think we should be worried? Experience has taught me that one ignores one's intuition at one's own peril, and something must definitely does not feel right about all this. One, two, three! One, two, three! Not like a well-choreographed routine to see you through testing times. Oh, wonderful. A trip to the Southern Seas. Not that I will be disembarking, mind you. I do not condone the brutish tactics employed by a trio of unwanted guests. I feel it would be remiss of me not to commend them on their immaculate musculature. Ah, one brain cell. <coughs> That's a good stretch animation. I will admit, since arriving here in the South, there has not been a dull moment. Not that life back in Gotham was dull by any means. Only that you foreigners seem to embrace chaos, but a sane man would seek to prevent it. Fair. Fair. I must admit to knowing little of Ritterana save for that which Lady Mikoto shared with us. Before we expend valuable time and resources traveling to so remote a place, I must review my notes and see if there is any mention of the Abyss. We shall share our findings as soon as we learn art of interest. Desire, with music. Genomus and his son are ready to present their findings on Ritterana. I'll take a drink. Our studies reveal that Ritterana is the name of both a massive gap in the southern valley seas and a lighthouse once manned by the Royal Damascan Navy to prevent ships from succumbing to the cataract's currents. I stress once manned as the tower has lain empty since its candle keeps abandoned their post at the fall of the Rabanaster. But if Pharaoh Sirius offers any indication of what can befall a lighthouse in the absence of caretakers... Oh yeah, the siren. Yes, but the real question is how all this ties in with Ivalisian legend. A cursory examination of Zodiac Brave Story reveals no mention of a Ritterana. Yet, it seemed foolish to assume that a name could not change the centuries since the tale was writ. And so I thought to cross-reference texts on modern Isabaudian history with our translation of the Durai Papers. And after an exhaustive re-examination of my ancestors' notes, I discovered that there was not a single entry on Ritterana. And while mention of a Valna Sea was abundant, I found no reference whatsoever to any cataract or lighthouse within its waters. 
So that means it's fairly recent. Bombs has discovered prompted me to examine the mystery from a different perspective. What if there was no mystery at all? What if at the time of Delita's rise, the chasm did not yet exist? There is more, but only a visit to the lighthouse will enable us to confirm our theories with any certainty. So we're going to the lighthouse! In the middle of the ocean, somewhere! There is a world map, hold on. Can I, can I zoom it out? Can I zoom it out, please? Oh, this button. I'm using the wrong buttons, my bad. That's not the right button. That's not it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is Aorzi over here. That's Garlebald, all covered by fog and smoke and, like, clouds and everything. Uh, over here is Kagane. Over here is Doma. With the Azim steps, like, up here. Like, yeah, up here. Which means that, uh... Alright, Thavnera is this island here. I have no idea where we are. I have no idea where we are. Oh, that I know about Ridorant. Okay, same dialogue. More. Why the sudden reluctance to reveal their suspicions? A lack of certainty never stopped Ramza from pronouncing on things of the past, or his father for that matter. We are bound for the lighthouse, then. Of course we are. But do not try and tell me that it has anything to do with helping the Banga. I am not afraid to speak what my brothers are thinking. The captain was a fool to believe that Duma could bring her back our fallen. Now that his faith in legends and fairy tales will be his end. We are not asking you to forgive our past actions of my leader, only that you show him the same kindness that you would to anyone in need. If anything would have happened to the captain, I... Alright, we progress. The Ritter on a lighthouse lies far from civilization. We do wise revision for the trip here in Gashi. Adventure always comes prepared. I shall return soon. Let's not tarry. If Duma has gotten the damnable lizard's head, we may have another fight in our hands. Adventure always comes prepared, or usually comes prepared. I shall return. You <laughs> Good twist. Of course. If I remember right, wasn't this a location that you could get via uh, the bar explorations? I think it was named something else, but... Yep, there's the, uh, there's the chasm. I can see how boats would not survive that. And there's a lighthouse. Well, that sure is a lot of... Clockworks type machinery going on in there. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, lush green forests are nice and all, but there's something, some kind of beauty in seeing a ruin like this on the precipice of death. Something is very wrong here. Map is best if we split our fellowship into two parties, one to delve into the tower's depths and one to observe from afar. As acting expedition uh, subleader, I appoint you captain of the first. You may use the spyglass to aid in your search for a missing lizard. Alright. I guess you stay behind and stay safe, kid. Oh, my brother. 
Where are you? We're here. Ah, oh, some 12 music. The lighthouse looks like it has seen better days. I dare say we have a handful of Imperial Dreadnoughts and 30 years of disrepair to thank for that. Shivering? Me? Or something as simple as standing on end from all the uh, ambient aether? Yes, ambient aether in the area. C can't you feel it, Kupo? Nope. Don't worry, Captain. Uh, the slot are with us. They won't hurt you. What is the king's name of your hiding, Captain? Is it allowed to just go further? I know it wanted me to interact with that thing there, but... If it's not stopping me... If it's not stopping me... Alright, I know there's nothing there. We'll go there when we have to do the raid. I imagine it would let me go all the way up to that door. And that's nice. I'm glad it, let, it would let me do that. But my objective is all the way back here. Alright. A spyglass, huh? The location appears to offer adequate view. Climb up and view scan the area for any sign of Bagaman. I do not remember where he is. I would think that would be a little bit obvious. Ah. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, sometimes you just get a Werewolf's Waldo quest. But it was just out there in the open. I ride right past that spot. Back to the tactics music. You found him? Let me see. He needs our help. Where's Razia? Where's the Zagella? I know you cannot forgive me. Nor should you. It's all my fault. I could not save you. I could not save anyone. Anyone but myself. I'm so sorry. Long run, wait! Oh, the stone's making him see us as something else. Traitors! Have you no pride? You treat me with the very men who laid waste to our homeland! You're mistaken, brother. There are no Imperials here. We've come to help. Now they're all Imperials. It's what the stone wants him to see. Oh look, I'm a viper! I know what I see. My own kid aided with the enemy. How dare you try to slay my audience with the princess? The Duma. Yep, the sun's shining. The yeah, house of Kubo, enjoying him what he wants to see. Oh wait, upgrade the vision. Witch! Murderers! Nope. Not gonna let you shoot her.
Yeah, you definitely heard that. Gunfire? Did I knock her down? No, I punched him and he missed. I see. Bhagavan! So this is the end. Recite the words, satisfy the covenant, relinquish thy soul unto me, and be granted that which thou desirest most in all the world. Sword in hand, a warrior, clutch a stone to breast. Oh, I know, he's saying the things from the beginning of the game. Look at me, brother, look at me! And sword, actually, his fading memories. Don't do it. Don't you die. Not yet. In stone, his tempered skill. We promised we'd all go together when our time came. You can't leave us here. By sword or tested, by stone, revealed. Have we seen this? Many times before. That light. Where have I seen it before? Oh no! Well, that side looks as fine, Hale and Hardy. But what about the other side? Oh yeah, his eyes are all twisted. That is. Wow, he's got anchor arm. I think he skipped leg day. And other arm day. Whatever you're doing, we need to leave the lighthouse right away. Right away, do you hear? I guess. Normally it's my job to go in after all that, but I guess you have to get 23 other adventurers first. Good thing you just have them in the hold, right? Oh, the world map theme! Oh, that's good. I was fully prepared to fend off the abomination when he vanished, Kubo. I dare say you took on one look in my eye and lost the world to fight. Oh, you told me he's gone. He's not. He's stronger than his look. He's the strongest manga you'll ever meet. He'll tear his way out of that Lukavi and crush it under his foot. Oh good, we're using the word Lukavi now. There can be no doubt now. In the wrong hands, the Arsite is a danger to us all. Something must be done, and quickly. Had Bhagavan not stolen the Duma, he would still be alive today. We would not be forced with confronting another Lukavi. The lizard is only himself to blame. The captain said, I saw a light leave his eyes. Now we're alone. I cannot, will not believe that there is a chance among the Garmin and that, that creature. We can still save him. We can. According to Father, the Durai papers speak of the Arsite as a holy stone. But I see nothing holy in what it did to Argath and Bagaman. Yeah, there we go. There's the reference. Holy stone. A most interesting twist. I assumed the RSI would act more swiftly upon the weak willed, but maybe I was mistaken. Could it be that the opposite is true? That those possessed of a strong will are more susceptible to the influence, not less? <sighs> there are so many questions. No, we are not entirely without answers. Is there anything else you wish to know? Uh, no. Nothing new from you. I think my brother has had more than enough fun for one day, Kupo. Perhaps it's time for a sleep spell. Alright, make it a sleep three. Ah, we can't use those. How about repose? Is that good enough for you? Ah, the lighthouse is up on screen and everything. It is as we feared then. But Gohan's soul was lost. Music! World map! Annihilation! A solid plan of action must be devised before facing the Bonga transformed. Much as I wish it otherwise, I fear Bagan is beyond saving. Yet we cannot suffer what is left of him to become a distraction.
Father, is now not the time to abandon this quest? Or are meddling with forces beyond? Enough, Alma. We adults are talking. While Bont was searching for the lizard, I inspected the area of exposed foundation at the base of the lighthouse. Why are you so rude? And? And you were right, Father. The lighthouse was built entirely atop the ruins of what can only be the clockwork city of Gog. Ah, oh, yes! Now that is a city that we know, although it was translated poorly. The what work city of who? According to the Zodiac Brave story, the Clockwork City of Gaug was a metallic metropolis where airships, automata, and other technological marvels of the age were first conceived. Little is said about its location, however, save that was far away. Well, the Dorai papers do not say. Yeah. While the Dorai papers do not say a great deal more, they do mention that the land upon which the legendary city was built was severely limited. It inconceivable an inconvenience that forced the inhabitants to build up rather than out. Which led me to ask myself, what was the reason the land was limited was because the land in question was an island. But that still would not explain the omission of the cataract. It was inconceivable that the authors would neglect to mention so prominent a landmark which existed. And then I found it, a lone passage regarding Gog's Fall. While the particulars here were missing, it appears that the city was abandoned after an explosion left half of it in ruins. I believe that this explosion may have undermined a portion of the seabed, and it need only have been a small area at first, one which could well have gone unnoticed during the exodus. As the time passed, however, the waters would have continued to wear away at the rock, slowly widening the gap until, well, until we have what lies beneath us today. That would explain why there was no mention of Rodorana prior to the present era. Come, father. Will you not tell them the rest? Of the possibility that we Garleans are descended in part from the displaced citizens of Gaug? Ooh. Is that... That really lays credence to the, the machinations of your people. It would explain how the Empire was able to forge its armies of iron even before the discovery of the application of the Alagon technology. Oh yeah, that too. And it may also explain why the legend of Evilus has resonated with our people for centuries, despite the fact that the Lost Kingdom was, as far as we can tell, in quite a different corner of the world. An interesting, if somewhat ambitious, theory. But to return to your original claim, it is your belief that the Ritterana Lighthouse stands atop what is left of... Yeah, Alma was shushed again. A necklace. Where did you get it, girl? This? It was my mother's. Your mother's? It was my late wife's most cherished possession. Why do you ask? Bagabon had a talisman that he would wear beneath his jerkin. He refused to take it off, even when bathing. He said it was special. I always saw it a few times, but it looked exactly like the one your daughter wears. And? What are you implying, Lizard? Are you saying my sister stole it? Or my late mother? Neither. I, I spoke of their similarity, that is all. Can you believe the nerve of this boy? Enough, Ramza. Our guests are merely concerned for the well-being of their kin. But what of our kin? What of them, Ramza? Do you imagine our kin to be better than theirs in some way? Or anyone else's for that matter? I... I apologize, Father. She looks ready to punch him. She really should one of these days. We have but one purpose, son. It has to prove the existence of Evilus, and our pe our clear our family's name. We do not allow anger or hate to lead you from this path. Now, we have a lost city, long lost city to explore. The Ritterana Lighthouse is now accessible. I imagine the queue will be about the same length as last time. Uh, I'm going to do a quick ready check.
now, right? The Ritter of the Lighthouse. South of Ravenaster, in a remote corner of the, uh, the Valdard Sea, gapes a fathomless small that, for centuries, has slowly devoured the world around it. Ritterada! Whether you believe the cataract natural wonder or demon torn gate from the very underworld, journeys to her edge should be made with the utmost caution, seeing as none who have stumbled into the darkness have ever returned to tell their tale. An ancient spire, once used by the Damascus, uh, by Damascus as a lighthouse, rises defiantly above the churning waters to warn forethoughtful and foolhardly alike. It is in this spire that the transformed Bagaman has fled. It is into this hell that you must follow. I think the Dramaturge might have more stuff. This necklace? Why is it so special? I'm frightened, Bont. What, you think it's our site? I cannot, will not believe that there is nothing left of Bagaman in that creature. We will save him. Well, it may seem that I only call upon you when danger is, uh, rears his ugly head. I assure you nothing could be further from the truth. You seem unconvinced. Yeah. Perhaps we should speak of this upon your return from the Clockwork City. My heart cries out to you, join you on your journey in depths of the Galg, but my head tells me I would pay for the privilege of my life. I received no martial training. Bont, whatever wonders await you in that place, my place is here at, on the Prima Vista. Now, is there aught you know before disembarking? No! Since my brother and brother insists on going ahead with this farce, you have a responsibility not only to ensure that he returns safely, but he does so as a full-fledged warrior. Though it's all for return safely part of it, it comes to, a push comes to shove, Kupo. Now is not the time for your further frizzle, Mont Blanc. Breathe! Breathe! I'm a warrior of legend. I am a warrior of legend, Kupo. Oh, you thought I might be joining you on your journey into the heart of the thousand-year-old nest of fiends? Sorry to disappoint, Bont, but a detailed account of my swashbuckling upon your safe return will suffice. Or, uh, or filing that a body. That would make for a, quite a story. I'm going to win. I'm not going to lose, girl. Oh, you tell me that he's gone? First Leslie, and now Gaug. What other wonders might be stumbled beneath our very feet? Very proud Garlean there. Very proud Garlean. Get rid of that for a bit. Actually, let's put that over to the log. I can have the log showing. You know, yeah, I can have the log showing. I just can't have chat showing. Another bout with a soulless desert of the deep. No rest for the righteous, eh? If things take a turn for the worse, do not hesitate to flee. There's no shame in yielding the battle if it eventually wins you the war. Ah, uh, nothing from you. I sense much danger ahead. Do not allow your desire for adventure to cloud the sound judgment that has seen you this far. Leaving so soon, I would sing you a song to, uh, I would sing you a lay to send you on your way, but I shall save it for the moment you return. Whether a lighthearted or a somber is solely up to you. Wow, that's a stretch. Garleans descended from mysterious inhabitants of a legendary clockwork city? That sounds like it has to make him a marvelous tale. Now, if there are only some place to tell it. Off to heed the call of adventure once again, are we? I won't say I envy you until I hear a full count of your unspeakable horrors you faced, or lack thereof. The fanciful claims about the Garland Mold having its roots in Gaug. Might you have more than a mere hearsay to support them? I thought not. One, two, three. One, two, three. How is it that in the face of danger you find the courage to stand firm? I can barely take the stage without losing my supper. Wait, don't tell me. Show me! No. What's this? You say your expedition might have use for a man of my build? Ah, oh, but you must understand, my friend. If I were to blemish this fullest frame, all my work would be for naught. Ah, uh, yes. Muscles for the show. Not for the use. I see. How's this cue looking? 
Well, we have half the DPS and third of the healers that we need. It says the Q's there. So, uh, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna miss the Q. I'm gonna use the bathroom. <laughs> I'm gonna use the bathroom, come back and check on it, make myself a drink, then come back and check on it. Let's see how this works out. Seems I return with plenty of time. Uh, this is perhaps the worst part about raiding. Or uh, rather, the Alliance raids in this game. Just the wait for people. Yeah, s s uh, Circus Tower? Crystal Tower? No problem. Get people uh, all the time, because everybody has it unlocked. This? They have to be the right level, they have to be doing their roulette for the day, they have to be doing... They have to have unlocked it. All sorts of requirements for this. And even then, what are the odds that, like, maybe they only unlock the first one? All the people that we got in our first raid, they're probably only doing their daily roulette for once for the day. So yeah, this slows the content down a bit. This slows the content down a bit. I'm still happy that this is here, and I'm happy I'm doing it. It's a shame this isn't mandatory content, but, like, you know... I'm just happy it's here. I feel represented. It's good when your thing makes a place in the game. Like, like, Gunbreaker happened, and then the people who were like Squall and uh, Cypher from Final Fantasy VIII finally felt represented. They're like, yes, I can finally play my class. I was able to do this stuff, and I'm like, yes, I'm finally able to listen to my music, and other people are able to appreciate it. And then the next expansion, we're going to be getting the Viper class, and all those people are going to be like, Yes! Finally I can play as Zidane! Or, uh, the Judge. The Judge from Final Fantasy XII. Or Surge from Chrono Cross. They finally feel represented, and that's good. That's good. That's it, how do you guys say it? Is it Surge or Sergei? For, uh, the primary character from Chrono Cross. 
I've seen it both. I've heard it both ways. I suppose it doesn't matter until they finally make a voiced adaptation, you know? I wish I could get that as a wall painting. It would be so easy. Just give give me one of those. They have, like, dreamscapes available on the vendor. Why can't I get one of Ritterada? They could add it to the game. It could just be loot that drops inside these raids, which might be more incentive for people to come into these raids. Ugh, I want that. I want that. I want to put that in my apartment. How's the queue looking? Well, we're getting people. I can go and wait somewhere else if I want to. I think it'll just teleport me back here. It's been a while since I've been to my apartment. It's going to look more like a closet than it's going to look like an apartment. I hope everybody's enjoying the story so far. I forgot who gave me that bed, but thank you. <laughs> that definitely makes this feel less like a closet. Yeah. I don't think I can take things out of my storage while I'm in this. Oh, trisection. Right, right, okay. Uh... If it fails, I at least get to put down my housing item. Come on, DPS! Come on! Just one more of you! Gah! Okay. Well... Yep, this is my little mole instrument. And I got a tea set. And I got a banner. I don't remember where I got this banner from, but I sure, get, I sure did get one. <sighs> okay. I want to put down the items in my inventory. Or get into the raid. Getting into the raid would be preferable. Barring that, I would like to put my things down. Okay, we're in the raid. We're in the raid. I'm still smiling. It doesn't seem that tall from the outside. It might have weird warping dimensional space on the inside. That's a hydrate. <sighs> Thank you. I appreciate that strange basin. Let's see. There's some good place. We'll discover what become in here within the lighthouse. With it, I am certain of it. Am I might get a little bit closer. Did Bugaman, the Duma, give life to that creature? Long has it been since I gazed upon the open sky, and the vermin who scurry beneath it. His tank buster is called Tidebond! Because that was relevant at this time!
Welcome to our Brine, are we born? And unto Brine we shall return. Oh, the crushing waves cleanse you of your sins. Tsunami, tsunami, that is what he casts upon me. He spins the urn. As aimed at me! Oh no! And he pivots and fires! I think he was what? Darkness Elemental in Final Fantasy XII? He's got fire behind him. One more spin for good measure. Same direction. Another area of water. With this vessel shall your doom be met. Where's the water tornadoes? There they are. Oh, darkest of vessels, you are my sword. You are my rain. Another pod there. Let's not sit there. Oh, darkness of vessels, you are my bow! You are my brain! Up now they're just scrubbing the inside. That's gonna go around in a circle. That one's gonna go in a slightly wider circle. So I'll stay nice and safe on the inside. Round the inside, round the inside, round the inside. And I got hit by a flashbang and I couldn't see anything. Took a lot of damage for no reason. Behold this water's most foul spill to defile this land. Hey, look at that! In darkness you are no true fear! Up Doritos! Up, thank you, thank you, yep, yep, we stacked the Doritos together, yep, thank you. That person did not stack with us. Please, we gotta get this before it explodes. Guys! Ow. Okay, we're fine. We're fine, it was just one. Oh, the crushing waves cleanse you from your sins. This again. I do not have a Dorito. Ugh. I did nearly die, thank you. I messed up my rotation and everything. Ah, not again. Ah, well, I'm not the only one who died to that. I dodged other things, so I dodged right into the cup. That's on me for not looking up. That's on me for not looking up. But I'm also not the only one who died, so... I'm not doing an attack yet. Okay, thank you. If we hit a level 3 limit break, I might use it. With this vessel shall your doom be met. Oh, talk is of vessels. Ah, oh, there's the sword again. So that means we got that pattern. Yeah, final heaven! As I get hit by more random water!
I'll be fine. All we just need, all we need to do is make it, make him die, and then it'll be over, right? Back out of melee. Probably in the same direction if I fall over this way. That water's still coming. Ah, so much water. As appropriate for a water aspect of element enemy. The night beckons me once more. Okay, archer's boots. A seal of the gate is lifted. We can now venture up into the lighthouse. Uh, these kind of look like uh, the archer. Like, yeah, these will look like the archer class once I assemble the full thing. And the chicory. I'm not sure what a chicory is. It might be something from uh, the evilest job board. This pattern is unmistakably. No, it cannot be. Just say it, man! The city remains functional after all these centuries. Let's access the transportation nodes. Are you saying it's Elegon in design? Could be borrowed Elegon technology. The Elegon Empire was vast and wide. The city's defense is also seen operational. Destroy them if you must. There's some, uh, there's some things. There are three enemies, so I should do AoE right about now. Oh, there's more enemies. How about... How about I focus on these? I kind of want to save my cooldowns for a boss, because I know they're coming up next. Oh, right, they explode when they die. Good thing we're killing them one at a time, sort of. Yep. What fun enemies these are. Didn't have enough charges of gap closure for that one. All right, and it generates a bridge out of blocks. Neat. This lift goes up. Oh, that's fire. Oh, it's you. The heat, it's almost unbearable. Can the heat service the lighthouse's beacon? It's Belias, Velius. Children of war, I am Belias. Come, warm your hands on my fire. Yeah, you remember Wygraf, right? Harder as a man than he was as a demon. But they got him in full 3D rendered model glory! Isn't it great? Time waits for no one. Okay, so Slowcock. And then the fast clock. You cannot withstand my rage. He makes clones that he dashes from two ends. He'll turn when he has set on its weight to turn. Like so. Fire one is a tank buster if I remember right. Yep. Fire four is the area damage. Let's support that. Oh yeah, the time-stopping things. I don't really remember what you're supposed to do for this mechanic. If other people run through that, they get slowed, but I think so many people have to run through it in order to keep you from taking massive damage. Usually it's better if people just stand there and take massive damage.
Fire four, that's area damage. Nothing I can really do about that. I could faint it, I guess. Roy's loyal minions, heed my call. They need to be separated. But I'm not a tank. All right, looks like they're just separate. Nope, nope. Okay, now they're separated. Good job. Nice provoke. It doesn't matter that I'm hitting the wrong one. All that matters is that they die before that meter fills up. Step into the inferno. Step into my hellfire. Yep, that's... That's a lot of fire. Are you not yet ash and bone? All hands point to death. Oh yeah, we have to turn the clocks outside by stepping on them. But I'm not going to do that because if too many people go for them, they will turn, turn them back around inside. And that's bad. They were optimally turned away from the middle. Good job, team. I did nothing. I contributed nothing to that. But... By not contributing anything, it allowed them to better do it themselves. So good job, people who did mechanics. So we get the mechanics. It looks like they're not turning through the middle again. Oh! That person was caught up in the crossfire. What a shame. Yeah, let's use Fate for this one. Middle slow, that's fine. Hey, more of those uh, clocks to spin. I trust that they're doing it right. Even if we get hit by one, we should be fine. The problem is it only arises if we get hit by two. Uh, this nonsense again. We're not gonna get level three. Actually, no. I was, uh, wait, I was supposed to use on trash, wasn't I? Uh, I should have saved it for the mob pack afterwards. Oh well. Oh well. Can't take it back. I pushed the button. Fox again. Oh, he disappeared. Oh, right when I got to my tornado kick. Once again, he's not going through the middle. Sometimes he can go through the middle. He just chose not to today. Tornado to kick! Yeah! Out of wrath! Might eclipse mine! I leveled up from that! I've discovered another device. Good for you! So, Thief Gloves, if you want to look like the Thief from uh, Tactics. What is an Ulan? I'm not sure. Architecture here is similar to that of, a, that of a lighthouse, yet something feels off. The air, it's so thin. Well, yeah, we're very high up. That happens. I believe you succe succeeded in clearing another path. Oh, that looks a little bit familiar, doesn't it? Uh, let's see, I'm Alliance A, so I should fight the ones on the left. It's Golems. I believe you know where we are. They're just Iron Golems. They're not like Iron Workers or anything like that.
A couple more here. Now we're back in business. I will focus on the one on the left. Yep, they did a stomp. That's your hurt. Energize, huh? Ah, yes. The generator, which protects them. We've encountered this before. Garleans use the technology all the time. What a cool city this is. I like clockwork stuff. This is... I, I, I don't know. I'm... I'm... Ah, this is good. This is good. Okay, so what's this note on the ground here? Crude scrawling. A wise arithmetician once told me that primes were the most lonesome of numbers. That is to say, bollocks. All these numbers, and on to eternity. There are enough digits here to start a fellowship. Hmm. They're telling me what all the prime numbers are. I wonder why. I lied. Note that one was not a prime number. The area's final line of defense is upon us. We must proceed with... It's him! Warning, warning. Entry prohibited. It's worker eight! And he has all of his abilities from tactics. Destroy! Which punches the tank? Accelerate! The stack marker ran away. Understandable. Intruder alert. Readying variable weapon system. Pulverize! That's a get out of melee if I ever saw one. Compress! <laughs> He's here! The, the concert cogs begin the world. Initiating subject dismissal. I worry for all these guys. Intruder alert. Reading variable weapon system. Dispose! He's wound up! And he's getting ready to spin! Firing his chest cannons! Yes! Ah, he's so neat! Incinerate, huh? That sounds like uh, raid wide damage. Anomalies intelligence level detected. Reducing authorization. Booting up basic computation protocol. Basic computation protocol loaded. Initiating lesson. Subtract! My health is now! <laughs> My health is three! Command. Alien current vitals. Uh, Allowing current vitals to specified numbers. Elaborate vitals to multiples of four. Uh, I'm currently three, so I need to go stand on one. There, my health is now four. I'm doing math! The boss is making me do math! Calibrate to multiples of five. I need to stand on two. I got a damage buff for doing math, and now my health is nothing. Inaccuracy will be punished. The healers get time to get everybody up to full health. Re-education failed. Subject of this approval. Booting to, uh, terrain protocol. Or Tartarian protocol. Tartarian protocol loaded. Initiating process sequence uh, uh, countdown. What? Are you made a black hole? Process sequence in three, two, error. System initiated. You're slowly being drawn into a, into a rift toward the thunder by Tartarus. 
You think this is how they made that hole at the bottom of the ocean? Alright everybody, let's do a lot of damage! That sure was a mechanic. If we get to the middle soon, uh, quickly enough, we'll see something special. Please, let's see something special. Yes! He's dancing! Look at him go! Subject to a failed. Subject termination approved. Booting annihilation protocol. Warning, warning. Research staff, evacuate the shelters immediately. He's red hot now! Hey, Mills! Destroy will now hit extra hard! I don't know if he used the tank <laughs> cooldown or not! Yep, I need to go to the stack marker. Oh, we all got hit a little bit there, but it's fine. It is destroying. Relaying available weapon systems. Four-way compress. All of his abilities are much worse when he's hot. Use a feint there to try and help with the damage a little bit. Intelligence level detected. Re-education re protocol loaded. Time for math again! Incineration increasing difficulty. A light card vials with specified multiplier. It will be primes. Let's see, my health is five. Five is the prime number. I can stay out. Calculate vitals to primes. Indivisible. Math! Calibrate the variables, multiples of four. Uh, three. I need to stand on three. I'm so good at math! Basic math! Tornado kick! That's a level three limit break! Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Do the thing! He's taking off! He's over there! Initiating subject dismissal. Now he gets to spin faster! Readying variable weapon system. Which way is he going first? Which way is he going first? That way! Yeah! The raid is dead! Everyone is dead! I'm still here! <laughs> ah! Ah! Ventilate. Overheat. Overheat. Co activating cooling units. There's another tank buster! System damage, 95%. Entering safe mode. Systems offline. We didn't kill him! He's still alive! Chemist robe! Math! Good job, Mathletes! We did it! We did it! We beat Math! And now for something completely different! So you got your dose of tactics. There's no mistaking it. We're the legendary clockwork city of Gaug. It's like a paradise up here! But we got our dose of tactics! How about our dose of 12? Have we had a dose of 12 anytime soon? Or anytime recently?
Yep, there's Anchor Arm. Long have I waited for this moment, Garlean Swine. Stop, guy. You don't want that candy. It's too salty. The blood of my fallen brothers feeds my hate. I guess hate tastes like salt. What kind of Luke Hobbit do you think he'll be? Oh right! The super ultra, uh, like, mega boss from Final Fantasy XII. The one that had 99 health bars. Complete with music from twelve. Oh, I'm, I'm like a kid in a candy store. And not rock salt can't flavored candy either. So fortunately, he's not nearly as bad as he is in 12. Alright, that's just a tank buster. Nope, you can't dodge that. You have to take a tank. Circle AoE's under a bunch of people. That's fine. This is a giant cone. So let's see those people who are in front of the cone. Push. Yep. It was not projected on the ground, so they didn't know to dodge it, I guess. Sea salt ice cream or taffy? Yeah, basically. That's a tornado. Good thing I was on the ground and I wasn't affected by wind damage. <laughs> you are suffering. Is not yet over. A donut where you have to go right into the enemy? Magnetic field, huh? Okay, so I'm positive, and I'm floating if I'm positive, but I want to be on the ground to take less damage from all the other stuff he does. Nope, that's a smidge! Nope, 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 get out of that! Even if I'm floating, that means I just, I need to not be there. A lot of people have taken a lot of damage. Uh, alright, we have a couple deaths. Oh no! I also took damage from being in the wrong spot. Don't think that wasn't the bad one. I'm still floating. Oh, he's stepping. He's stepping. Here he goes. And then he turns. As indicated. Ah. Here, guys, have a damage buff. That's one limit break bar. But look, the boss's health has barely moved. There's so many dead already. He can't wait to do raids while this looks amazing. Uh, the first couple raids are a little bit easy. The Crystal Tower raids are a little bit easy. They did not age well. This, on the other hand, uh... Yeah, um... The first, the first one was a little bit easier than this, but this one is, uh, this one's beating my group pretty handily. Ads! I'm a good DPS, I know when it's time to kill ads. Oh, no, 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 Under, 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 okay. Stay on the ground, stay on the ground, stay on the ground. Alright, that one's up to the other DPS. I have to stay on the ground. I can't hit that from here. I have to stay on the ground. Cyclone, if you're floating right now, you're dead. Whip. Let's see how many people died. How many were floating? Up oh, one, per two people. <laughs> Ha 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 ha! 
Ads! Uh, let's see, I am Alliance A, so that means I get the one in the northwest. This is this one. It's like one of those unspoken rules. A gets left. Wah! Wah! Kill this blue copy demon. There's a stack marker, but I have to fight this. Okay, the neck is exposed. We have to break the neck before he finishes that cast. Just look at this guy! Yep, that was his best attack, I think. And the stone's still showing him what he wants to see, which is us as an enemy. Here comes the big steps again. With all the everything else? More steps. Oh. Is 50 million health a lot in this game? Uh, not really. That's a real tank buster. Going out on the real tank. The health, mo the health bar moved. More magnets. Uh, I, I want to stay down. Oh, there's tornadoes everywhere too. But the tornado knocked me away from getting stepped on. So thanks, tornado. Stay down, stay down, stay down. It's like they say, get low, get low, get low, get low, get low. Another cyclone? How many people are dead today? Looks like one. Death strike, huh? I didn't even see that stock marker. I heard it. In the corner of my ear, I heard it, but I don't know where it was. Oh no, he's about to buff up because we got him down to his health threshold. Growing threat! Red! I think he moved out of melee, so I won't be able to do this. Oh, he stepped on... Oh, oh! He stepped on me, but I win. <laughs> Don't stop! Make it pop! You may have escaped me in this life, but I... I shall be waiting in the next! Awesome! Thank you! And there's the Aura site! Now expended of Aether and ready to receive another vessel again. So here, have some Final Fantasy XII victory music! We've earned it! And what a beautiful place it is up here! Thank my party! I'm dead! <laughs> Oh, we get up, we get up, we get up. I will commend the other healer. I like their afro. Uh, let's see. Yasmat card! Let's get me a Yasmat card. If I can get some lore from the Yasmat... Ooh, the Construct 8 minion! Give me music! I crave... No, I didn't get any. That's fine. I probably didn't win anything, but that's okay. I had a good time. A good time was had. Ah, oh, that's a hydrate, the posture to stretch. Sure thing. Ah, oh, look at this place. Got this. I wish we could explore this. This would be delightful. Voltage looked into the oven. It's a deep dish pizza with loads of sausage and pepperoni. Ah. Ah, pepperoni pizza. That was plan B for dinner today. I was going to make myself a pizza in the middle of the stream. 
Uh, pizza's always plan B. It's a good thing to just have in the freezer and ready to go. Uh. Let's say I got takeout burger today. Let's go change of pace. Uh. Not something you want to eat every day, but it's something that's nice. Ever, it's a treat every now and again. Uh. That's a good leg stretch. Thank you for the posture of the hydrate again. All right, onwards we go. Thank you again, Miss Pepper. Ah, uh, the forbidden candy. This has killed two people now. And there's that necklace. Just like your sister's, right? Mother's necklace. What is it doing here? Unless... Oh. Too much Aether in it for you. It's okay. I've stuffed Rogan into my bags before. I can carry you back to the ship. He'll be fine. Just let him rest. Alma. Alma, are you there? I'm here, Ramza. Extraordinary. The stones are different, but the craftsmanship is identical. However, did he come to be in Bagamay's possession? Eh. Uh, although they are indeed a different shape, the stones appear to be cut from the same crystal. Oh, they are. Our sight. Our sight? What makes you say that? How do you feel it? You can feel it. Can't you hurt me? Yeah, I guess Moogles are sensitive to aetherical errors. Aether of the air, rather. So that's why they're irrelevant to the story somehow. You recall me telling you that Bagaman considered the necklace special? Yeah? It was special because it was entrusted to him by the Prince Ra Rosler. He went to return it to the Princess uh, uh, Ashilia upon delivering it her, her highness from Nablia Fortress. A family keepsake. Of course! At each necklace, each our sight, had acted as like a lodestone, drawing both of our parties closer and closer to evilness. Indeed, Father. Your side guides us. Ramza, are you recovered? Thank you, sister. I am well now. Hmm. He's acting a little different. From what we know of the Duma and the uh, uh, Ophlas, uh, vestiges of one's will may endure in our sight. Could it be, then, that his desire for the former owner or creator? Of these necklaces was simply to return to Evilis. Oh, the title drop of the Raid series! There it is! But who could it have been? Ramza. Ramza Bjolf. He wanted the people to return to his homeland and uncover the truth behind the kingdom's founding. But then why show us the Zalia and Gaug, you ask? Simple. We are being tested. Your sight is measuring our worth, seeing if we are deserving of that truth. You say these things as if you knew them, but how could you? Nothing we have uncovered suggests us anything of the kind. I know you have your doubts, but I can assure you that they are misplaced. For now, I must ask that you trust me, Lady Mulina. Lady Mulina? 
Since when did you? Ramza, are you feeling quite yourself? Of course I am, sister dearest. I have never felt better. Yeah, he's way too nice. I sense a disturbance in the Aether. Father, these necklaces are gifts. Gifts of the old gods who once watched over the, uh, the Avalisians. It is proof that we have their blessing. With the necklace and the Atlas, we can finally prove... And the Aether's gone. Thank you, Bont. I know not what came over me. I feel like everyone should know what's going on. They should just, like... But honestly, it's such an improvement that we should probably just leave them this way. Ramza, you must rest. Leave me be, Alma. Did I not tell you I'll be fine? Yeah, there he is again. Okay. Okay, now for the bad part of the quest series. Well, okay, the first bad part was waiting in queue. Now for the other bad part. Another adventure under our belts, eh, Bont? I'd best put pen to page before the details fade. It's Alia, and now Gaug. One would think our discovery is more than sufficient to prove Alexentil's claims, at least with regards to Ivelisse's existence. But something tells me that until Ge uh, Genomus has proved that his ancestors were not the heretics the Church painted them to be, he will not rest. And then there is a curious case of Ramza. At Alma's throat uh, one moment, and Sister Dearest the next. He was like a different person when he came to, yet I seem to be alone in wondering exactly what happened to him back on the lighthouse. You asked this lady, he must have taken quite a bump to the head when he fell. Then again, it didn't take him long to turn back to his spiteful little self, so all's well that ends well, huh? Eh? A chapel! It's ours now. We can never be taken away. The path most the path of most resistance. The worried look on Lena Mulina's face suggests that uh, she bears grave tidings. Or not. Greetings and salutations, Bont. I suppose you are wondering whether or not the good Ger uh, Genomus has finally determined where in the world our next adventure is to take us. Yeah? Has he? The good news is he has. The bad news, however. Now, while it is not my nature to be a sensationalist, sensationalism is my job. This would, uh, in my job description, rather. So please bear with me while I tell you that's not all right aboard the airship Lexentail. Something about Alma has me deeply worried. I would not trust this information in the hands of my publisher, let alone in some sullen gate guard. Shall we continue our conversation on the Prima Vista, away from inquisitive ears? I suppose. Let's go back up. But again, I, I don't remember. I think they said in a patch that they cut this bad part out. Because I think it was just spite against his writing that Metsuno put this leg in there. Or maybe it was just to poke fun with the, with the blessing of Koji. Principal Genomis claims that he's learned much from his continued study of the Durai papers. Still, he appears to be frustrated by the lack of information crucial to solving the mystery. Back on the boat we go! The question is then, where exactly did Robinson the solo journey uh, next? I am here. The plot can continue. Ah, Bont. To what do we owe this unexpected visit? I had not panned on summoning you for another several turns of the sun. 
Uh, is something wrong with Alma? I apologize if we have caused you any worry. I suppose one cannot allow a reporter in their midst to not expect her to report what she sees. Though I did expect a tad more discretion from Miss Melina. Alma has, as of late, been experiencing difficulties with her health. Perugians have been called upon to discern what exactly it is that ails her. But as far as I can tell, there is nothing physically wrong with my sister. The consensus is that the rigors of an extended stay in the foreign land have taken their toll on her fragile heart. Aunt, when did you? Up, oh, yep. She stepped out and then collapsed. Alma! I'm fine, brother. It is obvious you are not. You must return to your chambers and rest. Forgive me. Perhaps we shall speak again once I regain my strength. Until then, please, look after my father. I can do that for you. He is a very interesting man. Now then, where were we? Ah yes, the matter of our next expedition. As we discovered during our most recent foray into the Easterlands, the Damascan capital of Rabanastra appears to lie upon the ruins of what can only be the royal city of Lazalia, ancient capital of the Lost Kingdom of Evilis. Shortly after, we stumbled across the remnants of the legendary clockwork city of Gog, cleverly repurposed into a lighthouse overlooking the Radarna Cataract, remnants of we now uh, sit suspended above the fathomless chasm. Lazalia, Gog, what they have in common, you ask? I shall tell you. They both appear in my ancestor's account of the Rise of Evilis, the Terai Papers. And with each new discovery, the Forbidden Chronicle is now proving Evilisian legend to be more fact than fairy tale. There is no denying that's proof, it is but a matter of time before scholars and historians from across the world come to the same conclusion. But as you are all aware, my aim has never been to simply prove the existence of Evilis. No. I shall not rest until I have revealed the truth of a young Ramza's role in King Delita's ascension, and cleared my ancestor, Oran Durai, of those false accusations made against him by the church. <coughs> uh, let's see, then what are we waiting for? Or should we not see the Alma first? I'm gonna say the latter. Because I'm nice. The goddess Kyrugians would have us believe that she is in no immediate danger, as her illness is not where the body, but where the mind. To borrow their words, her spirit is in a state of imbalance and merely requires time to right itself. I muted in time for a big cough. Alma will be fine so long as she remains in bed. The last thing she needs is any further excitement, especially at the paws of these meddlesome mole bats. Though I must admit, both Montblanc and his brother have proven more useful than I would have dared to imagine. Yeah, by detecting Aether, and that's about it. When well, it comes to usefulness, I'm the first in the field. Or was it furriest in the field? Who would like to feel my fur, Kupo? And you wonder why Ramza despises you so, brother. They do all the work when all you do is jest, Kupo. Ah, but you are mistaken, Hurdy. I bear neither you nor your brother any ill will. Any further ill will, that is. If anything, I owe you my thanks for your recent contributions. Hmm. Yes, thanks? Are we hearing what I'm hearing? What happened to the venom-spitting adder we used to know and hate? 
Alma certainly seems pleased with the change, but forgive me for not buying into this all too convenient transformation. Yeah, he's probably possessed by a ghost. Simply showing the world that Iblis actually exists and will not validate the claims chronicled in the Durai papers. That is correct, Father. The key lies with Ramza Biolv. If we can find evidence of his hidden role in history, it will prove Oran's testimony true and safeguard our family name from ridicule. Which is why I turned the focus of the research to the leader's forgotten companion in his act during the War of the Lions. It was only when I discovered something most intriguing an underlying struggle within an unknown force, a force that the powers of bring about calamitous ruin. Hmm. Calamitous ruin, you say? Our sight! The twisted abominations we encountered in both Latalia and Gog, the Lukavi, they are born of these unholy crystals. While nobles of the north and south squabbled over Evilus's crowd, Ramza silently sought to rid the world of a darker evil. Evil manifest from the deepest desires of men and women, whose minds had fallen prey to the Arsight. And with each confrontation did Ramza's fellowship grow smaller. Countless companions lost their cause that would go unwritten, yet as far as was more important than the clash of armies. And so did they endure, until re reaching their final destination, the Orban Monastery. Yeah, because permanent death was a thing in Final Fantasy Tactics. If you didn't revive a unit before the battle ended or three turns passed, they were gone. So that's being reflected in this story here. Oh, I know this one. The Orban Monastery is where Princess Ophelia was raised. This is a scene about it in the Zodiac Brave story. After Delita emerged victorious in his final campaign, he married the princess to legitimize his claim at the throne of Evilus. Oh, I see someone has been paying attention. But I don't understand. Why would Ramza's, cru Ramza's crusade against Lukavi take him back there? According to the Dari papers, the sinister being who enda endangered the Arsite was said to have slumbered beneath the monastery. But who or what would have the means to create something so powerful? Ultima, the High Seraph. Oh, there it is! A Seraph? Uh, what's a Seraph? Seraphs are believed by some to be servants of the gods, divine beings whose only purpose is carry out the will of their immortal masters. As to whether or not Ultima can claim this title, however, I cannot say. Just as there were those who chose to worship Ultima for her otherworldly might, there were equally as many who feared the visitor for her deadly magics, often referring to her as the Angel of Blood for the carnage left in her wake. I've also fought against the spell Ultima, the Ultima weapon, previously. Interesting. What if the spell Bont claims to have experienced in the Praetorium, coincidentally also called Ultima? was in fact an Oligon interpretation of the very magics introduced to Hydaelyn by the High Seraph. But that would mean... What would that mean? I have spoken with several colleagues back in Charlayan regarding their opinions on the ancient incantation, and while they have little to show for their research, they all agree on one thing. The manner in which Ultima ethereally manifests should not be possible, at least on Hydaelyn. So it would be naturally... To so it would naturally make sense if we all discovered that the Alagons learned the spell from a being not of this dimensional plane. As to exactly how they convinced the being to impart that knowledge unto them. Not of this plane. What manner of creature are we talking about here? Hey, Sid! Like a one similar to Omega. Oh, you've learned more about Omega? How long have you been listening from the shadows, my friend? Oh, enough. I'm here to deliver the item Mikoto requested. Said, there was no need for you to deliver it personally. A Moogle would have sufficed. A Moogle? And trust I won't tear up with the package and show it to some random adventurer? No, this is far too important. 
He too did not mind. The principal was about to tell us how to find the Orban Monastery. Would that I could. You don't know? Then what have we been doing here? At ease, Lady Mulia. The Durai paper spoke of a cat uh, cataract situated on the river uh, Zerachel, several leagues northeast of Rabanaster. They supposedly lies in the monastery. Zerachel is not the name you would find on any modern Dalmaskin map. Rivers, however, especially ones as large as Zerachel was established to be, are rare in a nation more than half claimed by the sand. The rivers we seek can only be that which uh, uh, bisects Goldmore and the Nagian border. And for that invaluable information, we owe thanks to our brothers Mughal. Their travels have made them veritable authorities on Dalmaskin geography. Wait, but earlier you claimed you didn't know the monastery's whereabouts. I'm confused. Its location is not what concerns me. Perhaps the Mughals themselves should explain. Why, certainly. The verdant valley of vines and vipers to where we must voyage next is home to the Viera, and therein lies our little problem. The one thing Viera do not suffer is trespassers, not even lovable Mughals, Kubo. Yeah, we Viera are a bit of a territorial bunch. Our glamour's kept us hidden long enough for us to see the jungle west teeming with uh, ruins much like those we discovered in Lesalia and Gaug. But the Viera trackers eventually found us and took us before their elders. We barely escaped with our palms, Kupo. So that is why we are still here talking instead of bound for the border. The Avir have spurned the strict code of their tribes, abandoning their people to come and live in the cities of the Dalmaska. Finding and recruiting one to our cause might prove us with an insight as to how to reach the Orban Monastery ruins. Oh, a Avir from Dalmaska? I wonder who might that be? Unfortunately, the nation's current turmoil has not made it easy to accomplish this task. We still require more time. Well, it isn't me. Before boarding the shuttle here, I was stopped by a ba uh, bonga on the docks. He asked me if I knew a Pont McEmmer, and I bid deliver him a message. I told him he was welcome to accompany me to the Prima Vista, so he might deliver that message himself, but the man refused. Alright, what's the message? Mikoto. I saw the suffice craft to your exact specifications, but cannot guarantee that will function as intended, seeing as I had an area subject to test it on. Of course, Master Sid. If any trouble is met, then most likely my design is to blame. It looks like a wand? It kind of looks like the, the fangs that we used to open up the gates in Alagon and the Crystal Tower. The confidence in my craftsmanship is flattering, but you sell yourself too short, my dear. Here's your success. Good day. What about that message? You told me you had a message. Where is it? Look at all that text. There's no question that Ivalis once stood in the lands we now call Damascus. But the passage of time has remnants of those eras past faded beyond recognition. If only the great library of Rabanaster still stood. My knowledge is limited, but there is aught you would wish to ask. Oh good! Oh good, even more! Even more dialogue! Ready, here we go, ready to read! What was the relation between Ramza and Delita? As I believe I explained before, the hero Ramza Beol, with the pauper become king, Delita Hyrule, were the closest of companions for most of their adolescence. Ramza was the youngest son of House Behove, and old and respected bloodline of warriors. Zelita was the son of farmers and servants of the Behoves. Normally one might have expected a pass of the two such different backgrounds to uh, cross, but fate chose to intervene. When Delita's parents fell victim to a terrible plague, Ramza's father takes the orphan boy and his sister into his home, and raises them as his own. Sensing greatness within young Delita, uh, Barnabeth elects to enroll him in the Royal Military Academy with Ramza. However, not but several months before the graduation does great tragedy befall them both. Noble children from across the realm are being abducted by radical factions of the dissenting knights and ransomed their families. Amongst those kidnappers is Delita's only sister, Teatra, mistaken to be of high birth for her place at the Barnabeth Beolf's table. Or at least so they thought. 
As it turns out, the whole affair is a plot set in motion by a petty noble by the name of Argath Adolphus. Yes, the very corpse you, uh, corpse you encountered deep within the ruins of Lasalia. You see, Argath and Delita were classmates at the Academy, yet the former despised the latter, jealous of the base-born upstart who was always first to his class to his swordplay to letters. And so Argath approaches the renegade knights and tells him of Ram's sister, only instead of describing Alma's features, he gives them to Yetras, that they might kidnap his true rival's kin, and they do so. However, when the commander overseeing the rescue efforts of these noble children learns that it is not Alma but Yetra they have taken, he abandons all attempts at peaceful exchange, and refusing to waste valuable resources on a mere commoner. Ramza and Delita plead with the officer to reconsider, but the order to storm the knight's hideout and burn it to the ground are carried out without cold precision. The mission is a success, and the dissidents, including Argath, are slain to a man. But so too is Portietra. Having learned the true worth of his blood, Delita leaves both the academy and his friend Ramza behind to forge a new path, one that would ultimately lead to war. Five summers will pass before the two meet again. What is the relationship between Ramza and Oran? According to my ancestor's writing, Tietra's passing did not only serve to shape the leader, but Ramza as well. Ramza was possessed of two older brothers, both of who have built reputations for themselves as fearless and cunning warriors, worthy of the Beold name. However, soon after the raid that sees Tetra slain, Ramza learns of his brother's involvement in the affair. The shock upon realizing that his own kin's disdain for a common man is too much to bear, that Ramza abandons his duty as son of House Beolv, choosing instead to consign himself to a life of wayfaring. It is while serving a band of mercenaries that he meets Oran Durai. Oran, adoptive son of General Sidolphus Orlando, is tasked by his father to discover the identity of those truly behind the War of the Lions, though what he discovers will mark him for life. Orlando will long be an enemy of House Beolf, but the general had always been a proponent of peace. On many an occasion did he attempt to stave the hands of conflict by providing a resolution that would benefit both sides, only to find his efforts thwarted by forces unseen. Throughout all this, the church maintained its neutrality, openly refusing to endorse another order. Either order, even. Yet there was little more than a facade. The truth was that they uh, silently wielded their influence over both sides, seeking to draw out the war with armies might grow ever weaker. It was during this time that the church began to search for zodiac stones, or what we now know as Arasite. Their aim is to gain support of the war-weary small folk by dangling the promise of peace delivered by legendary warriors descended from the heavens, the zodiac braves. Oran Durai suspected the plot might bring him harm in the realm, but lacks the proof he requires to implicate the church for any wrongdoing. <coughs> Sorry. When all hope is nearly lost, Oran encounters Ramza, already branded a heretic by the church as his discovery for several of the clergy's inconvenient truths, and learned that altogether, they might also be able to make a difference, for Ramza holds a shard of our sight. Threatened by Ramza's actions, but unable to successfully subdue the young man or his Arasite, the church turns their attention to Sidolphus Orlando, and condemns the general as they did Ramza, in a ploy to drive him from their kingdom. The betrayal of the church only serves to embolden Sidolphus. It is not long before he joins Ramza and his son in their efforts to prevent the Arasite's blight from spreading further. How did Ramza use the Arasite? While Delita waged the war for all to see, Ramza remained hidden, choosing to de deal with the Lukavi from the shadows. But the tiny fellowship was not hunting the horrors spawned from the Holy Stones. They were hounding the knights. They were hounded by the knights and the brigands that were set upon them by the church. Yet despite this, Ramza off found his thoughts returning to his old friend Delita, now an intelligencer with the Order of the Southern Sky. Delita had also not forgotten about his childhood companion, learning both Ramza's troubles and the church's scheming soon after joining the Order. He could not, however, come to Beolv's aid. Etral had proven himself a capable warrior and the charismatic leader, and was using this momentum to uh, silently orchestrate the play for Iblis' throne. If he were to openly oppose the church, it would prove disastrous. Ramza, though, had already been branded a heretic. Though Ramza, through Ramza, the leader may freely raise the sword against the church without consequence to himself, as long as their allegiance remained unknown. Now, one might view this as a future king simply using his companion to see his own desires to fruition. Why, even Orad himself opines the matter in his papers. However, both Odelita and Ramza were quick to recognize that as long as the blight endangered, or engendered by the artisite was allowed to spread unchecked, 
that true peace could never be realized. Their solution was ingenious. The leader took his place in his field of battles to bring an end to the war of the lions, while Ramza took it to the shadows to excise the otherworldly cankers which befouled the realm within. What was the Orban Monastery? The Darai papers tell us that Orban Monastery overtook a grand cataract on the, right, on the river known as uh, Zishel. The building was allegedly ancient in Oran's time, with no record as to exactly when or by whom it was constructed. We do know, however, that the building had deep ties with the Alkasha dynasty, who was at the time of the War of the Lions. It was often used by royal families to house prisoners, before finally being converted into a place of worship, a tradition that seemingly continued even after the conversion. Orab writes that the Princess Ophelia Atasha, the last rightful heir to use the Evolution throne, was confined on the cloister for much of her young life, before her eventual marriage to Delita. Yet through the uh, uh, Kenobles of Orban were part of the contemplative order within the Church of Glabados, they remained oddly exempt from the High Confessor's authority. Now, you may ask if Orban was a monastery, then why was Ophelia, a girl, admitted? Well, it appears early scholars may have misinterpreted an important term. In ancient Evolution, the word for both monastery and convent are the same. However, seeing as Orban was inhabited not by monks, but by nuns, it would seem a better matter suit would have been rendered as Abbey, which itself is more encompassing. Wow! Nomenclature! In addition to their daily prayer, these nuns crafted uh, ales and wines from ingredients grown on the land, and sold them to desert townships and lacked ready access to potable water. While the Durai papers indicate the monastery, or abbey, as Ramus, Ramus' final destination before his disappearance, it does not state why his journey was to take him there. Considering that Oran actually accomplished, accompanied Ramus on his quest, it is hard to believe that the Chronicler would not know, leading me to think that there was a reason for the omission, one that I believe will unlock this entire mystery. Where is the Gomorrah Jungle? The Gilboa Jungle is an endless swath of pristine emerald situation on the southeast, uh, southeastern corner of Damascus at the Naxian border. The hot and humid climate of the region has given rise to a nigh impenetrable expanse of towering sentinels and noisome bogs, all of which matter of flora and fauna are allowed to flourish without the interference of man. Our very own Mont Blanc, however, claims that as his short uh, trips through the region, he stumbled across numerous ruins of unknown origin. From what we have learned of their own research and expedition, I would surmise that the sites are somewhat connected to ancient Evilis. While it is true that the Durai papers make no mention of a jungle like Sir Gilmore, more than a thousand summers have passed since my ancestors penned the chronicle. Any number of things could have given rise to a ma market change in the environment. Even one of your calamities, perhaps. Ah, and one cannot speak of Gilmore without mentioning the enigmatic inhabitants. As you know, the Rainforest is also home to the Vieira, self-proclaimed Guardians of the Wood. Though those who would claim the title count themselves fewer with each concerning coming spring, as more and more of the Leoprin abandon their ancestral homes for the comforts of the cities. Ah oh, yes! You're acknowledging the fact that playable Vieira exists now. Good. Still, many Vieira continue their adherence to strict code that has governed their people since the era age of Ivalis. None may enter the jungle, and none may leave. To the Viera, Gomorrah is sacred ground, and they will not suffer this view, for, view as a desecration of their sovereign domain by outsiders. This is especially true for those who would dare to hunt their lands. I would one day wish to see their ruins of mine own eyes, but without the consent of those who call the jungles home, I fear that day may never come. And finally, who is the High Seraph? Very little was known of the High Seraph, other than that she was, it was he who created the Arasite and scattered its shards across Hydaelyn. As for the entity as an angel or demon, well, that depends on which fairy tale you choose to believe. Though, after witnessing the terror of the Lukavi firsthand, it is difficult to imagine that one truly pure of heart would design something that might have given rise to such evil. That said, it appears the Arasite itself contains no evil. The stories merely served as an amplifier of sorts for the desires of those who came to their possession. If desire is one swollen fat with rage, one of the dominance or vengeance, that is made manifest as Lukavi. Such was the case with Argeth and uh, Bagaman. Conversely, if the wielder's intentions are just, then they will be rewarded with what can only be described as miracles. Legends provide us with countless tales of zodiac graves granting succor to those wounded or even fallen in battle. Perhaps this is why history cannot decide on the alignment of the stone's creator. 
If the being truly hails from some other plane of existence, as Mikoto suggested, then we would be fools to think that she might be holding to the same value we hold dear. Well, that's a lot of dialogue, wasn't it? I think that was like, what, 20 minutes of just me reading? <sighs> but both Mogonk and his brother Hardy have proved invaluable to our expedition. I owe them my thanks. And I suppose an apology. I admit when I first arrived I was wary of their ability to contribute to the cause. However, over the past moons they have uh, done their damnedest to prove me wrong. I used to believe that we guardians were inherently better than, well, everyone else. I suppose a part of me still does. It was what we were raised to believe. It is what all guardian children are. Only now have we begun to realize what a fool I was. That's a hydrate, thank you. <sighs> Our exile here has forced me to face the arrogance that has controlled me for my whole life. And what I found was that I was simply frightened, frightened of change, frightened of admitting I was weak. And so I lashed out, and I'm sorry that you, Mbonk, Boggy, and others had to suffer. He loves to write. So where's that song? I did it, friend. I took our principal's word to heart and spent a moon traveling the island of the Ruby Seas. I finally ended up on Orokoro, where I was taken by a merry band of confederates. What characters they all were. We feasted and drank until morning, singing the songs of our people. When the Prima Vista first arrived at Kugane, I told myself I would not let my grief overcome me. I put my head down and concentrated on my craft. It was not until much later that I realized that by paying that grief no heed, I had allowed it to swell like a storm held in winter. But now I found I can be happy once again, or at least try to be. A body is but a vessel for the soul. A puppet which bends the soul is something. And lo, the body is not eternal for... Ah, you must forgive me, Bart. I was lost in my work. Several of my patrons are expecting returns to their uh, considerable investments, you see. Ah, you're busy writing. Oh, boy! Okay, the quest isn't here. I thought that was the quest. No, the quest will be given by either him or her. At first, we thought Alma was merely a, a tad under the weather. Now that it winds up, we can brew up, we can ride chili, but now... One, two, three, one, two, three. I must stay ever limber for... Uh, why the stage, of course. Who, I mean, what did you think I meant? I see. My friend, why the hurry? There is little in this world more important than a chest of steel. Unless it is calves of granite! Would you care to join me a few thousand lunges? Your body will thank you in the warning, as will your lover. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I see. I see. Lunges. I took in a performance of Mizukoka the other day, and I must say it was quite an experience. I, of course, had no idea what was going, to, what was going on, but it was all sounded brilliant. The local courtesan who accompanied me explained that it was a tale of 13 samurai. Ronin, I believe she called them, who embarked on a journey to avenge their slain lord. All in all, it was a bloody affair that ended in the death of everyone save for a tiny fellow in charge of the lighting. But the Arnians were on their feet, cheering them for more. Principal Genomus claims that the rifts between our two cultures can be bridged through telling of tales. Though I worry that anyone who would cheer at an ignoble death in the service of one already dead will be unable to appreciate uh, art we may offer them here on the Prima Vista. There's a bug. I got it. Oh, and I said that loud, didn't I? How careless of me. It's okay. I squashed the bug. Well, hello there. Are those uh, engines out here? I do hope we are bound somewhere exciting. I sense that you're interested in the package that delivered. I have every intention to apprise you of its contents, but first I believe we should speak of Alma's condition. Do you not find her illness all too timely? Genomus and Ramza would like to believe that her bouts of vertigo are not but a result of mind fatigue by the... But the answer is clear. It is the Arasite that plagues her. Yeah, I thought so too. 
Alma recently confided to me that she would hear her father speaking with the Otlas, well before even his first foray into the Ravenaster. However, I do not think this is entirely true. Which is not to imply that Alma is trying to deceive us. Rather, I think she saw something that led her to believe her father was conversing with the Arasite. Moreover, I suspect it was the Arasite itself that granted her this vision. You recall my hypothesis on distinct, uh, distinct frequency NRR-type harmonic vibrations and their tendency to promote ethereal amplification? Or when I mentioned that despite being the principal's profession for extended periods, the Oatless exhibited none of the imprinting presence of Naduma? No? Yeah, it was a little bit past me. The Oatless has never resonated with Genomus. It has always been his wife's uh, pendant around her, uh, its Arasite shard, the Virgo, that fueled the passion for Evilus. No. The Oatless is bound to all most deepest desires, whatever those may be. The only reason I can fathom that Alma has not fallen victim to Arsite's grasp is that our desires are not as strong as those we have witnessed in Argath or Bagenmin. At that and the ethereal interference caused by other nearby shards. I have explained all this with Alma and recommended that she destroy the necklace, yet not only did she refuse, but she begged me to keep this revelation from her father. Hmm, but I didn't make that promise. And so I did the only thing I could. I devised a means which I might impede, or at least lessen, the effects of the Oathless. This device, while still incomplete, will, suffice as the, will amplify the NRR wavelength emitted by the Virgo. It should work and interfere with those emitted by the Oathless, thereby granting Alma the brunt, thereby shielding Alma from the brunt of their effects. Oh, neat! The city below is all buzzed with words of Bonga Brigand. I loiter about on the airship landing. Do you think it would be someone we know, Kupo? I'm glad I gave us that music for all of five seconds. Any more? Anything new? No. It is all still the same. I have to go talk with the bonga. Hey there, guy. Apologies, bot. I need to speak with you, and you alone. Oh, don't bite me, Kubo. I'll just be floating over here, perfect earshot. Why? What makes you think I won't lay you low right here, right now? Because we're here to offer you a proposition, that's what. We need information on Goldmore and Jungle, and I thought a man of well-traveled as you might be persuaded to provide some. Goldmore. No more creatures should know that's Vera Land. What are you offering, then? Why the opportunity to tell us what you know? Genobus believes our next adventure is be lies beneath the jungle canopy, Kupo. <sighs> I shall expect as much. Very well. But, I came to ask you if you would meet if you would meet someone. Now it seems that someone may be the, uh, able to assist Genomus as well. Seeing as you and the principal did right by us, I do not see a reason why I cannot take both of you. That was far easier than I thought it would be, Kupo. I know when you are ready to depart from the Ravenaster. We'll travel in our airship. The Prima Vista would draw too much unwanted attention. Who board Blogging's vessel? The one that looked like something that might be built inside of a company workshop. Yeah, this thing. And so now we get on airship. What number airship is this? I think this is like our eighth airship that we've ever been on. Quite a number. Back to the life of uh, brigandry with the clouds, are we? Of course not. Now that didn't cross our minds. But when we faced with the decision of what to do next, we needed simply to remember the dying words of our leader. Kashuk, Renok, and I decided to re-enlist in the Damascan uh, Fusiliers. 
Had the occupying guardians actually said yes, Kupo? Not exactly. We're now with the resistance. Neat. Though I no doubt heard the uprising in Damascus that follows the Dome and Liberation, and how it was crushed under the Iron Heel of the Fourth Legion. Yeah, I've heard about that. The Resistance leaders were captured, tortured, and publicly executed. Yet, much of the Empire's chagrin and gruesome display only served to further rally the survivors. We move one head and two grow back in its place. Move two and then there are four. A person can die, but an ideal will live on. Now, there exist several factions throughout Damascus, who belong to one known as Lenta's Tears. And when we told her our, coming, our commanding officer of recent crossing with you and yours, she simply insisted that we introduce you. Uh, me? I was even supposed to be here, Kupo. No, they're talking about me, you little guy. Not you, Hairball, him! Meet with the general and her, hear her proposal. But if you're not interested, we shall return you to Kugane unharmed. You have our... Hmm? Oh, got your tongue? Grab an Aster ahead, lads. The sure is Ravenaster again. Still surprised we're not getting shot out of the air. This way. I got many moments to cover before nightfall. Oh, we're back in those ancient waterways. So you guys did know about it. What's my picture on uh, Dark Knight? Dark Knight's pretty good. And how hello! It's that person that was I was vaguely referencing previously. Of course we can't do something about Final Fantasy XII without having her. I've done as ask. I bring you the Liberator. And here I thought he'd be taller. Why does everybody say that? I knew it! A Vera! Well, I mean, I'm also a Vera. I'm also a male Vera, which defies all logic. I am Fran, proudest daughter of Dalmasca and general of Lentis Tears. And yes, Mughal, I am a Vera. Are you surprised? Why, yes, in fact, I am. Her kind are all supposed to be living amongst uh, the trees, having ch uh, shunned contact with the outer world, Kupo. You don't say. There are supposedly a few who have left their homes. Well, I most certainly did not expect to see one here in the sewer. Indeed. Is all Viera all lesbian ladies? No! Behold, I am a male Viera! They did not exist in lore before this game. Well, uh, no, they did exist, but they are... By lore... For every, th like, thousand female Viera, there is one male Viera. And due to the way that their sexual dimorphism works, you're not really able to identify them as male until they get to about 14 years old. And then they're usually claimed and, like, taken by, like, uh, an older Viera man and, like kept as a woods and kept separate from all the rest of their society. The Pongar claims you seek Oravon. Does he speak true? I believe Fran also in Final Fantasy XII was married to Balthier? I think so. Those ruins lie deep within the Ogamora jungle, a place most sacred to my sisters. They would take great offense if you were to defile them with your presence. 
What is more, Baki tells me you travel to the Guardians, openly aiding those who would see our nation burn. How can we place our trust in one who would do such? Let's see. Genomus and his family were de uh, defected long ago. They are not your enemy. Or, my blade has tasted the blood of too many Guardians to count. Both of these are true. I'll say the latter. And then you know the Empire and its people are one and the same. If you stay an Imperial soldier, you are not staying an individual. You are slaying the enemy. Your companions, Liberator, are the enemy, despite their supposed change of heart. You must understand, Kai Genobis does not approve of the Empire's warmongering. He wants to help Dalbaska and his impoverished masses, Kupo. And what would Imugul know about my people? Does your blood run Dalmaskan red? Have we caught you open and find out? General, there is no need for threats. You're right, Barky. Then let us parlay. A uh, parlay? Parlay. For what the resistance requires men, men and women from Doma and the Eorzean Alliance, to join us in ridding Damascus of its Imperial invaders. Your past deeds have made you well known as the leaders of both. They will listen to you, or if not, they will listen to those scions of which you claim allegiance. Second, the resistance requires gold. Gold to strengthen our forces from within. Your allies are in bed with the East Autonaut Trading Company, which continues its dealing with Gullimald even as you raise your sword against them, profiting from the Empire's rampant aggression. As targets of that aggression, I believe my people are entitled to a portion of these profits. Grant me these simple things, and I shall personally guide you to safety to the ruins of Orobon. And what are the looks of the Luxon Tales? See me to victory, and you will take the Emperor himself. Those are my conditions. What say you? Uh, well, until we request the signs, we can promise no more, or... Promise me first, my companions will see no harm. But I cannot make promise until promise. Okay, uh, I'll make the request. Because, like, after all, you're asking for people and gold. For practically nothing. So all we can do is exchange words. Tell them my demands. But know that the fate of your expedition hangs on how well you do so. I'd say we have one our work cut out for us, Kubo. Buggy, you and your fusiliers are to accompany the Liberator. I expect a detailed report on how my demands were received. Yes, General. Not that I expected them to be taken seriously. You're a fool to trust them, Princess. Ah, oh, so the General is the second in command. They're keeping the Princess safe. They're keeping the Princess safe! Or at least the Princess's words. Wasn't the Princess supposed to be dead? No, they want people to... The Princess wants people to believe that she is dead. That's the safest course of action. I'll be put off by Lady Fron. I throw us quite next to her. But it's only because she wants what's best for the resistance. Nope, not you again. I finally come to accept Argum and is gone for good. But I will never forget how he met his end. I cannot allow my hatred to consume me as it did him. A girl is not too bad once you get on her good side, but her only good side being her backside. We didn't hear that from me. Ah, yes, a butt joke. What an adventure, Kupo. Just think, by tomorrow, we can all be the newest members of the Damascus Resistance. Uh, not that I'm ready to give up my place on Prima Vista just yet. Welcome to their jungle. Mont Blanc is eager to return to the Prima Vesta and report on your findings. Hurry, hurry. If I don't tell someone of their adventure quick, I'll positively burst, Kupo. Seek passions of Prima Vesta, sure thing. Where have you been? In Rabanaster? With Mont Blanc? 
Why didn't you think to tell me? How am I supposed to report on something I've not been there to see it? Uh, through second-hand information, like me. I have no issue with Rums as I expect a change of heart. Just as how it actually came about. I fear it might be ours I'm playing with his heart, Kubo. I sensed the search in Aether at a precise moment he came in contact with the necklace. Though the search has since passed, Kubo. Uh, let's see, same as before? Let me tell them, Bond! Let me, Kubo! And let me guess, this is all roughly the same? Alma was not comfortable with me using the Shard of Virgo found in her necklace, so I instead took one from the necklace Bogdan wore. Ah, for your thing. Gotcha. Alright, and the rest of the dialogue looks like it's going to be the same. So... The woman asked much of us. The Via have ever been aware of outsiders. For centuries, and many tribes have remained hidden in the jungles, contented with their self-imposed solitude. Each tribe has its own strict code and will meet swift punishment to any who dare defy these laws. As such, many of you will spend her entire life bound to the territory of her ancestors, both unwilling and unable to venture beyond its borders. And while the tribes are wholly un in independent, they have agreed to uphold a single standard, shun all contact with the outside world, unless it is to protect the jungle. That said, with every generation, there are those Vio who long life is beyond the verdancy of the trees and abandon their tribe to start a new life in the kingdom cities. My guess is that the Fran is one such individual. Who also happens to be the only individual I know of who can guide us to the monastery, Kubo. It seems Bond's sword arm would be enough to see us through this predicament. They'll need to don the right mantle of a diplomat if we are to convince the Alliance of the East Alternate Trading Company to grant us aid. What could go wrong? That's a lot to ask for, actually. Really? I don't think I should do that. Alright, fine, I guess I'm ringing him up on the phone. This is why I have a Link Pearl! I'm so glad I didn't have to go and walk up to them in person. Up, oh, and they're ringing back. Yes, yes. I know you said not to call unless it was urgent, but this is urgent. All right, not exactly, but my superiors have come to a decision on your request, and I thought you might want to hear what they had to say. Oh, and let me preempt my request for an immediate disclosure with a reminder that the information is much too sensitive to discuss over Link Pearl. Meet me in the Ruby Bazaar post haste, and I shall duly deprive you of their judgment. Fine. Well then, Bond, what are we waiting for? <sighs> it saddens me that I cannot be of any aid. You have every right to think of me weak, Bond, for I am. At least now I might admit it. A trip to Ruby Bazaar? Will there be refreshments? No? Well then count me out, Kupo. Has my brother been behaving? Here I ask him already knowing the answer, Kupo. I pray for your success, Bond. Not because I'm a man of religious tendencies, mind you. It simply feels like the proper thing to do in these sorts of limitations. The Viera possess a beauty that cannot be matched by other races. Yet now that... Yet how they stalk the jungle in those uh, stilettos, perhaps you will never know. <laughs> Completely fair. Completely fair. Stilettos do not serve the jungle well. The device is operational, but its ethereal outfit is still far below what can be deemed optimal. I shall require some more time to calibrate it. What is this Vero of whom you speak? Not much in the way of meat on their bones, yet nor is there a surfeit of unnecessary flesh. Their arms, their thighs, their hips, they are one and all finely sculpted goddesses, not like those of mages of Amdapur once carved from Abalathia's bounty. But there is magic in their limbs, magic to set my very loins aflame. Wow. It's good to be open about that. I guess this is the definition of horny on main. Maybe. 
must feed on the flesh of others, lest it return to dust whence it came. Therefore the soul deceived, despise and murder something... What was that you ask? Oh, a little something commissioned by a local noble. It has been several boots except as coins. I figured it was high time I pet pen parchment. Was there aught you needed? Tell me about Viera culture! Ah, uh, yes. I've learned much of the Leopian folk uh, during my travels, so let's start off with the most basic of details. There exist two distinct clans, the light-skinned Vina Viera and the darker-skinned Rava Viera. The word Viera itself means people of the woods, and true to their name, both the Rava and Vina make their homes exclusively in the Golmora jungle, or the primeval forest where the southwestern foothills of uh, Skate range, respectively. Until recently, perhaps the past several generations, a Viera living outside the homeland was unheard of, and those who abandoned their tribes were branded outcasts. Was Viera a playable race at the time? No! In fact, in fact, at the time that this was put into the game, the Hrothgar, the Hrothgar were already being coded and slated to be put into the game. Because Yoshi P wanted to add a more bestial playable race to add to the game. However, Fran launched a thousand ships and a thousand requests. Fran's model here, Fran's model here was supposed to be a one-off occurrence. However, Fran's model here sparked a, a dire interest in Viera playable characters. And people are like, where are my Viera? Where are my Viera? And Yoshi P was like, okay, I guess I can add Viera. And then the higher ups of Square Enix at the time said, no. We can't keep doing this. You can only add one more race. This is the last time you can add a race. So your GP was torn between a rock and a hard place. He can either add Viera like the players want, or he can add Hrothgar like he was originally planning in order to add a bestial race to the game. Because up until now, everybody just kind of looked like people with parts. Like human with parts. So, your GP made the ultimate sacrifice. At the launch of the next expansion, at the launch of Shadowbringers, he launched two genders. Female Viera and male Hrothgar. That was his only way out. That was his only way out. It was the last time he was allowed to add a race, but it wasn't the last time he was allowed to add a gender. He found a loophole. Well done, Yoshi P. Until recently, perhaps the uh, past several generations, a Viera living outside her homeland was unheard of. Yeah, notice that the word her is there, because only female Viera. And those who abandoned their tribes were branded outcasts. You see, the Viera follow a strict code called the Green Word that binds them to their land and prohibits all contact with the outside world unless absolutely necessary. Similar to that of the Mikote Keepers of the Moon, the Viera societal hierarchy is strictly matriarchal. They will find no males in the village of both Avina or the, and the Rava, let alone in any positions of rule. Yet, that does not mean that they do not play an important role in Viera's society. The males take up the mantle of wood warder, protectors of the forest, and serve their tribes by seeing no evil encroach on their tribe's sacred events. Males, for the most part, are reclusive, sh uh, shunning contact with even their own kin, save for the rare occasion that they return to their village of birth to sow their seed and claim the boys which have reached adulthood. But I shall speak of that uh, queer custom at length later. To, in other words, tread not the wood with hopes of finding a male Viera, for you will be that which is not but disappointment, or worse, death. This, however, is not to discredit the martial powers of the female Viera. The women of the wood are as formidable as the men, and merely choose to devote their attention to protection of the hearth and young. Without the support of community, the males must uh, constantly struggle to survive. Food, clothing, weapons, medicines... All must be procured or crafted by the individual, and without the aid of another. The male lives alone and dies alone, and has gone unchanged for countless generations. I spent many a moon in the desert sapphire, and while I saw all manner of wondrous creatures, not once did I lay my eyes upon a, a male Viera, nor did I hear of one living in the city. They simply do not exist to us. You say, talking to the male Viera right in front of you. Tell me about Viera physiology. For the Viera, the hands of time move at a far more leisurely pace than they do for the rest of us. Whereas a hero might consider themselves fortunate to see, say, 80 winters and the return to the livestream, a Viera can endure up to 12 score or more. 
It is estimated that upwards of 8 in 10 Vieira are born female, though it is not until the la at least the 13th name day, uh, when the individual moves from adolescence to adulthood, that the individual's gender becomes apparent. Okay, so there's a lot more males than I thought. There's a lot more males than I thought. Then, for the next two centuries, will the Vieira maintain their physical youth, rendering it nigh impossible to discern one's age simply from outward appearance. When it is revealed that the Vieira kit is a male, it will be given to a case of another, that is, it may learn the ways of a woodwarder, protectors of the forest. Once every three to five summers, male Vieira will descend from the trees to a nearby village to mate. It is at this time that there are any uh, recently discovered jacks still living among the females, that the older males will make his wars and teach them how to survive with a without the crutch of companionship. Only following countless seasons of training and strict adherence to the green word will the students themselves earn the title of master and be allowed to seek solitude. More than few will perish during the brutal rite of passage, further thinning the uh, tribe's males, until only those with the strongest seed remains. As I explained before, the duty of a Melviera, a wood warder, is to see that the tribe's immense remains untouched by the destructive whims of outsiders. Yet, they do so from the shadows, off choosing to shoot first and not even bother with questions. The females, on the other hand, are much more open to their relationship with the wood, though I use the term open in the most loosest of sense. Most of them simply defend the forest, they seek to also nurture it, clearing undergrowth, removing fallen trees, planting seeds, eradicating vermin. Efforts by past kings to bring Vieira lands under Damascan rule have been met with either indifference or violence. As of late, Rabbanasser has suffered the Vieira their self-governance, and their promise of village will not take up their bow bows against the throne. When I was younger and far more the fool than I am now, I asked the Vieira if she did not find her tribe's way awkward. Was it not within their natural order for males and females of species to coexist? The woman answered me thus, The value of coexistence would not be found neath a loincloth. Long has our kind endured to understanding what the distance twixt two bodies does not dictate the distance twixt two souls. Neat! Incredibly neat! Feeding your cats, got it. I mean, I probably have a good hour before I get to actual combat. Whatever is he waiting for? A signed invitation to my chambers? Pah. <laughs> Unless... Unless I should send him a signed invitation. No, no, he would think me too forward. Or would he? He's dropping on Maiden's private musings. How graceless of you, Bond. Uh... Okay. Of course I heard the Vieira. What do you think I got the idea for half the company's wardrobe? You spoke with the Vieira, you say? How explicit. How exotic! I recall reading the following of the Empire's occupation of Dalmasca. Several Imperial Army units were sent to the jungles to round up in the hairs and bring them to Rabinester. As you might imagine, only a few of the soldiers returned, and the few Vieira with them that appear to have followed on their own volition. Those Vieira who would take up residence in the cities tend to be held in high regard, their small numbers lending to an air of mystery. It is not unheard of for members of the upper class to part with the great deals of their wealth simply to be seen with one of their elusive ladies. You should consider yourself lucky to have made this Franz acquaintance, my dear friend. Perhaps with a nudge or two, you should might consider joining our troop? I doubt that. Leader of resistance, you say? Ha! Ah, do have time to do that between the rehearsals. <sighs> but no, they are not programmed to acknowledge that I am, in fact, a male Vieira. Oh, dearest brother, will you forgive me? Huh? Oh, come to gloat over this accord with the Damascan resistance? They are traitors, and allying ourselves with such rabble would be that amount to treason. Not that you would care. Your mission has ever been to see my people underfoot. Leave me be. Alright, I guess. That one speaks very differently than the others, doesn't he? Anyway, let's continue. I've read about how you uh, united the whole of Eorzea under a single standard, and convinced the Holy See and the, the Thousand Year Conflict. Compared to that, asking for a few soldiers and a coffer or three of gill should be a piece of uh, rolling berry cake. I suppose we should inform Blocky down at the Kugadi Landing of our progress. You mentioned they was keeping an eye on us. Alright! I talked about Viera this whole time, instead of looking at, um, instead of progressing the plot. I kind of left uh, Hancock waiting. He deserves it.
I have informed Wagi of our situation. We are ready to make for the Ruby Bazaar when you are. So an answer from the Sultan already. Impressive. It would seem that Lady Fraun has underestimated your influence amongst the realm's players. I assume you have no objections to me joining you then. Those two, those two are content to stay here, that's fine. There once was a little boy named Eustace, and he deserved it. <laughs> Ah, uh, let me guess. Ah, yes, at the office. Whenever you're ready, Bont. Hancock awaits us in the bazaar. Shall we, Bont? Let's enter the Ruby Bazaar. And you're not voiced, because of course you're not. A lovely lady and a bonga? And here I was expecting you would be alone, Bont. Ah, oh, but excuse my manners. I'm Hancock, representative of the East Alton Trading Company, assigned to oversee the assets here in Kugane. It is a pleasure to meet you. A good bow? Oh, more people! Oh, hi! It's you two again! And I am Yugiri. We apologize for making you come all this way. Not that it's far from here at the landing. Ahem. <laughs> Wagi, was it? I serve Lord Hien, rightful ruler of Doma. I have come bearing my lord's reply to your ent entreaty. And I am to tire tire of the uh, science of the seventh dawn, and I'm only here seeing that no one could uh, uh, be bothered. Well, that and it takes a bear and a massage from a leaders. It, that and to bear a message from the leaders of the Eorzean Alliance. Thank you both for coming. I am Wogi, formerly of the Damascan Royal Fusiliers. I am now claiming allegiance to Lent Steers. A resistance group seeking to accomplish what you have in Doma and Alamigo. What tidings have you brought us? I would expect a three-way no. Allow me to begin, then. While the East Alderno Trading Company sympathizes with your plight, we are not in a position to grant you the funding you seek. Yeah, I kind of figured. As you are aware, the East Alderno Trading Company prides itself in its uh, neutrality, be it in the matters political or personal. And what is our relationship with the Origin Alliance? Ah yes, what I mean to say was, uh, here in Hingashi, the Alderno Trading Company provides, prides itself in its neutrality, be it in the matters of political and... Uh... You must understand our position. Simply supplying coin to any one, any one group would make it appear that we have somewhat favor with that group over another. Seeing as we conduct business openly and fairly with everyone, doing such would be sending the wrong message and ultimately harm profits. Yes. And by sending for uh, selling to both sides, you will maximize profits while good men and women perish. How convenient. Yeah, you said that aloud. We are business, milady. We do what must be done to survive. That does not mean, however, that we are blind to the needs of our customers or our allies, which is why we support the Orsian Alliance in their noble efforts to safeguard their world's freedom through a mutually beneficial arrangement. If it were my choice, I would provide you a little resistance with all the funding it needs, but as my good friend Bont knows all too well, it's not my choice. How about you two? About the same message? Uh, 
Well, now the Hancocks are only lowered your spirits, you won't be as crestfallen when I inform you that the Orzean Alliance will also be unable to provide any assistance. Yeah, I kind of figured. I love your guess. You did everything in your power to try and convince the leaders of each city-state, only to watch as they politely decline your proposal, claiming an unfortunate lack of intelligence or resources. Wait, how did you... Lord Hien sends his greetings to you and yours, and under normal circumstances would welcome allies still suffering under the Imperial Yoke. However, word has it that the latest attempt at reclaiming your kingdom ended in failure, resulting in the loss of countless lives, including many of the Resistance leaders. You are not mistaken. Our army is not what it once was. The remaining having been forced to take refuge deep beneath the streets of Rabidaster. The Fourth Legion has already defeated you once. Lacking unity and leadership, the current resistance will not survive another uh, tiff against the Empire's disciplined ranks. If Doma is to join hands with Dalmaska as an ally, you must prove, first prove to us you will stand as one. Doma as a fully fledged ally would serve far better to strengthen our cause than a few temporary soldiers. Yet even if we are to able to wrest Dalmaska from the Empire's grasp, without unity amongst your people, the resulting chaos could prove even more perilous to the Kingdom. You understand much of our situation. And based on that understanding, you would refuse to aid Lynn's tears, am I correct? Do not mistake me. Lord Hien's refusal is but a message. A message to help you plan your next step. You have a wise master. He understands that without proper planning, driving one enemy from your midst it simply creates enough room for the next. Lady Frond will no doubt be pleased to hear that your response was exactly what she expected. <laughs> you knew the whole time that your demands would be rejected, yet still you let this farce play out? You have my apologies. This is all necessary to prove an important point to our leader. Yeah, she is new at the whole leading thing. Although I have heard her referred to as the leading woman. Lady Fraud needed to show your princess just exactly what she was getting herself into, and your honesty today will serve us better than any hollow promise. Thank you. Wait, what about Gomorra Jungle? And we're, they're all gone. Can you believe this? We're right back to where we started. Principal Genomis would not be pleased. Bye, Hancock. Thanks for the tea. Next time, get out real tea. Alright, let's head on up to the airship landing. I think it's just, yeah. Yeah, we can just warp there. Hi there. Yep, please take us aboard. What a big waste of time that was, huh? <laughs> As as you say, it is most unfortunate. But I suppose we did everything in our power. It is all that one could ask. I still do not understand. Why would Lady France send Bond on this wild Paisa chase? If she knew that from the start, that would be for naught. Well, he mentioned something about Fran proving a point to their leader. Whoever that may be.
People in a position of power can prove both naive and stubborn creatures. Simply telling a leader that she is wrong may not convince her of the fact. Seeing one's own plan fail, however, is often the best medicine. Naive and stubborn? Then the resistance is doomed. If Gabrosa is imposing as Fran is, uh, is taking his orders from her, the chances are this leader is even worse, Kubo. I would not be so certain, Mont Blanc. My guess is that the individual in question is still quite young and inexperienced, and that Lady Fraun is trying to teach her to be an effective leader through example. By allowing her to make her own mistakes, Fraun is granting her the ability to learn and grow from them, an experience that will ultimately benefit her when the time comes for them to truly be, make truly difficult decisions. Now, I seem to recall reading that one of the many faces of resistance before the recent quelling was a young girl of royal blood. Do you suppose... You may cease your baseless uh, presumptions, Defector. The door was open. And you would be... I would be here to on orders from the leader of Lent Steers. Against my better judgment, mind you. Greetings, Lady Fraun, I presume. I am Genomus Le 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 San Lexingtail, resident of the Majestic Theatre Company. You and your colleagues are most welcome on the Prima Vista. What is it your leader would hear of us? While you failed in meeting even a single of our demands, she recognizes that you are sincere in your attempt to see them fulfilled, and for that her effort, you are to be compensated. Oh, that is most generous. So are you going to tell us where the monster is? Can we see the monastery tonight? Yes, point to it on the map, please, with your finger. The ruins which you seek are hidden beyond the waterfall here, a point roughly equidistant to the river source in its delta. Nice! It even has a little mark on the map. Why didn't we just go there from the beginning? You have our thanks, Lady Fran. We will not forget this kindness. Father, I shall plot a course immediately. Ramsa, what's going on here? Alma, you should be in bed. I've slept enough, brother. Tell me, who are our guests? It appears you once again prepare to leap into dangerous more. Keep your wits about you, Bort. Lady Fraud is strong, but there again, so is Bakuman. Ah, if you'll excuse me. Are you mad? A trip to the surface in your condition? Listen to me, brother. The High Seraph beckons. She speaks to me through the, uh, the altars. The what? There's no need to worry. Mi Mikoto and I have already devised a plan. I can help clear our family name. The Charlene has no say in this. I am your father, and I insist you remain here on the airship. What would your mother say if I allowed you to befall you? Mother? Then that's what it's all about, then, isn't it? What has it always been about? You care not for Evelis or Oron's name. No, you only seek to use the Arsat to bring Mother back. Is that true? But you haven't been able to do that. You still don't understand how exactly it is that the shards translate one's desire into reality. That is where I can help. I can ask the High Seraph. Yes, he should create the Arasite. Ultima has bid me come to her grace her, her place of imprisonment. If we free her, she will reveal to us the secrets of her creations. Do you hear what you're saying? Even if there is the slightest chance of bringing Mother back, we cannot risk your life in doing so, Alma. Your brother is right. You have sacrificed too much already. I cannot bear the thought of losing either of you. It is too late. Wow! I am so lonely, father. Why must you love Ramza more than you do me? 
Do not be e cousin by your daughter's words, for they are not her own. <coughs> oh no, she was torn in an air thorough rift. Help me, Ramza. Alba! That looked like a void tear. No! No! Gods for Fend. I told you, no one can control the power within those shards. No one. But here, take this. It might be the only thing you can save Alma, but we must hurry to the monastery. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for your special weapon. Maybe I'll have enough Aether to actually use the thing. Come, we leave for the Goldmora jungle now. Yeah, so the story was like a real low point, and then it just jumped straight to the top, out of nowhere. I've been such a fool, and now I've lost my daughter. Will you ever forgive me, Tia? I cannot believe what just how witnessed, and I won't believe it, I won't. There, it didn't happen. That's not how that works. I have good news and bad news, Bond. The bad news is that it appears the High Seraph was able to employ the Otlas as a catalyst to propel her magic beyond whatever seal she was trapped behind. The good news is, this means that my device should function as intended. Its design is based off one of uh, Mombreda's. It repurposes the logic behind her etheric siphon as a means of disrupting aether flow by reversing common wavelengths and... And let's just say it has already been calibrated to match the energy emitted by the Otlas. As long as the Ultima continues to wield the Otlas, we should be able to interfere. But it only works if we can find Alma, which is why we must make haste. But I'm still gonna talk to everybody. What do we do? We can't- what do we do? We can't just leave poor Alma to become one of those- one of those monsters, Koopo! I think I saw enough to prove Ultima's no angel, Koopo. But if she's not, then what is she? A devil. Was that power I sense beyond the rift? Was that the High Sheriff? I told her. I told her that was a mistake, and now look at what happened. If you are wise, you toss all the remaining shards into Hell's Lid and cut your losses. You know more wisdom than Bhagavan, and that's why the High Seraph has already won. I imagine that's directed towards Fraun. Fraun was probably intending to use the Arasite as a weapon. If what we just witnessed was truly teleportation magics, then the amount of Aether required to create a portal to large enough for such a distance would surely be immense. Never before have I stood in the presence of such power. The whole experience spans my muscles a tingle. Yet I'm not afraid, for it's with might that we can stand against magic so foul. Ah, so you are a fan of might against magic. That... that was the officer's doing? Such power. And you're... stretching? I see. Would you mind telling me what that was and what it did to poor Alma? Uh, demon from a portal. Nothing to worry about? Nothing to worry about! <laughs> yes, I do appear to be worried because I am anything but. Worried, that is. And I'm not. <laughs> Keep away! I'm not about to be whispered in some void by some strange portal you've gone and dragged into my ship. Shoo! Nothing will become of Alma, will it? I can't imagine the Prima Vessel without her. I was secretly hoping you'd regale me with tales of Viera and their tribe's wa strange ways, but I fear now is not the proper time. Perhaps another day, where the Principal's daughter is safe. Welcome back, Jade. Uh, I just read everything about Vera, and then uh, Alma was dragged through a portal. Have I your permission to depart, Mart? Every moment we tarry here, my sister, she... Uh, let's see. Now is not the best of times. No, it is not the... No, it is the worst of times. I beg of you, do not ask me to wait any longer, for Alma's sake. Of course, Ramza. And hold on, I've set the engines to full speed. Engage! So that's a little bit of a slow start. It's fine.
Oh good, the jungle. They have fun in games here, so I'm told. Also lots of dead male Viera, apparently. Welcome to the land of my people. It would be a poor lie if I said I did not miss it some. I can certainly see the forest for the trees. Alma! Ramsa, help me. Don't let her disappear again. Oh my! Yeah! Right, I have a key for this. Is this how this works? Be gone! He broke the R site. Well done. Alma, Ramza. Lord of the Invokers, fulfill the ancient covenant and grant unto me the vessel promised. What just... She just snatched Ramza! Foggy, to me. The girl is not well. Uh, why don't you just we continue this back on the Prima Vista, Koopo? Oh, hi there. Have you the courage to face true evil? The armor. It is known to me. Where are you gawping at? The ship is this way, Kupo. I think this might be a little bit of a longer stream, guys. Looking at the time, I think this is going to be a little bit of a longer stream. Both feud and so in a rut, yet powerless to save Ramza from a fate worse than a pop building. If my muscles cannot prevent such misfortune, then pray, what are they good for? Displaying. You have returned with Alma. What is really... Wait, there's someone missing? It has been made more obvious that the R side is beyond our control. Beyond your control, even. It is a power that contained, researched, and managed. And then there's only one who might accomplish such a task. Yeah, who might that be? I see Alma is back, and now the worse for wear, but now Ramza has gone missing. When will this all end, I ask? When? Oh, Ramza, his selfless acts have now put his life in danger, as a brother never loved a sister more. While well, I was but a pup, I lived on the streets of Gullamald, or to be more precise, beneath the streets. My home was the sewers, and my family and the countless other orphans who kept the shadows let to be carried off to the cerulean mines, or worse. At least they were, were my home until the Senate voted to seal them off. Then the purge came, my brothers and I were given a choice but to flee, and so we ran, until there was nowhere left to run. Fortunately, a handful of influential families had taken a pity on us, fight, and demanded that the Empire see to take care of these uh, displaced children. For what, is nation, for what is the nation's future if not their children? Or so they argued. The Senate conceded a proposal of a system that would provide aid for families that adopted these sewerlings. It was a Lexentale family that took me in, and for many summers did I work for the errand boy of their troop. Or going to the school and learning to play the loot. I suppose you could say that's what makes Ramza and I brothers. Which is why I cannot bear to think of what would happen to him if you were not to return. I beg of you, Bond, save him! Thanks for your life story! At this point! Now! 
Yes, it would appear that Ultima has abandoned Alma, or to take possession of her poor brother. But riddle me this, Bond. What type of being would require a mortal vessel? Correct. One with a co without a corporeal form of its own. So the true question is, then, how is the High Seraph has one in Ramza, where exactly will she become? Hmm. Hmm, good question. You rescued Arma only to watch as Ramza was taken in the stand? Promise me, Bong. Promise me you'll see this right. I'll do what I can. I don't see the same fate that befell the Kibagabon for your Ramza. We must do something here, quick. The device should have worked. Is Ramza gone because of an error in my calculations? Hey, motivational sensation! Good to see you uh, pop in. I'm doing well! I have been at this for a long time. It has not been the entire stream, but I will be sure to timestamp it appropriately inside the VOD. If a magic drift was necessary to seize Ramza, there is quite possibly that Ultima is still incapable of traveling beyond the bounds of the Orobon Monastery. However, if our sight is all the High Seraph requires to do so, then we are in grave danger. Yeah, we do still have a chunk of that around all the ships somewhere. First armor, now Ramza. What does the Ultima want? Poor Ramza whisked away from under our very whiskers. What poor companions we make, Kupo. A poor companion would be one who sat around and whimpered while waiting for others to work on a solution of either true others. Troubles, Kupo. We must act for Ramza, for Valdemaska. And okay. Oh, Ramza's gone? Oh, dearest, yeah, what have I done? What have I done? The City of Lost Angels. Genomis is crestfallen and thought they might never see his son again. See if there is aught you can do to put his mind at ease. We need to do something. What recourse is left to us? This only means we had them protecting ourselves is now even... Uh, I could not even uh, prevent my son from... My son from... I'm sorry, Genomis. My design was flawed. Not necessarily, Charlene. We all saw how it succeeded in drawing Alma back from the rift and shattering the Oddless. The loss of the boy is not yours to bear. Our forces here should not be on your failures. Our focus here, rather, should not be on your failures, but what we have learned from them. The being beyond the rift. It spoke before claiming Ramza. It referred to you as the blood of its invokers. Could it be our ancestors who are responsible for Ultima's summoning? Most certainly not. I have discovered no such interference anywhere, inference anywhere in the Dirai papers. Besides, tales of a high seraph existed before, far before even the earliest of Yvonishian legend. Then who exactly did summon Ultima? And why does she think of them as your kin? Look! That little stone glows. I have a bad feeling about this, Koopo. What if I put that in the sword? Never mind! Headache time! Been a while since I had one of these. Oh, this goes away back, doesn't it? Ramza? Dead? You lie about as well as you kill yourself in battle, Oran. I did not say he was dead, my lord Delita. Merely that I had abandoned a mortal vessel, entrusting his ethereal soul to the Arsight. But why would you do such a thing? Peace has finally come to evilness. There is not to be had from further sacrifice. The kingdom is won, and the victory as much as his is mine. He risked life and limb to shield me from the dark that would have seen me perish. Without him, I would not be standing here before you. It is my duty as both king and colleague to see him saved. Knights, to me! We ride for Orban! 
My lord, wait. Adorag Lavados, the first of the Zodiac Braves, was not the hero the church would have you believe. He betrayed Mother Heidelin for a promise of coin and power, summoning forth a terrible evil from the depths of the Celestial Abyss. It was believed only of the lands chosen, only a warrior of light might stand against this threat. Yet while victorious in battle, Ramza was unable to see the darkness vanquished. If failure was all that awaited our warrior of light, then what chance do you presume any might other might stand? Are you saying I should do nothing then? No, my lord. Ramza is my brother. My brother's final wish before he sur surrendered his Aether was that his name be struck from the annals of history. Oh my, you're unhurt! I was led to believe none but a run returned from Orban. What was it you speak of your brother's wishes? Well, it became apparent when we were powerless to defeat the High Seraph. There is only a path left to us, to do what Heidelin herself did countless centuries past, imprison Ultima. And as you are aware, my lord, a prison is only as strong as a seal on its gates. Ramza sacrificed his body to ensure that the Angel of Blood would never again walk this land, and he believed that if people knew of the sacrifice, it would only inspire them to seek out the Holy Stones and repeat the mistake of those who came before. If you truly avouch yourself his friend, then you will honor this, his final plea. They seem awfully close. No! Romzo should not be forgotten! He should be raised up as a hero for his deeds, and claim his rightful place at my side! Only he might be my knight gallant! He is gone, my lord. Before Ramza was your friend, before he was my brother, he was a warrior of light. He did what he did for Heidelin, and for those who would one day too heed the crystal's call. Ah. It reacts to you. Or maybe it's... Oh, there he is! Claim the mantle of throne, my friend. Become ruler of Evelis, and restore peace to this war-torn realm once and for all. Wait, Ramza, don't leave me! Please, I beg of you! You will make a fine and just king, Delita. See so you do not stray from that path. Ramza! Yeah, in this story, Ramza did not win. After all, if he won, then there would be no story for us, right? The stones of these two necklaces, you are certain they will guide the heroes of a new era to Ramza? Is what Ramza wish, my lord. Oron, I do not believe I can bear another farewell this day. Will you not reconsider my offer to remain as a member of my court? It is but a matter of time before the Cardinal and his Temple Knights grow wise to my past. Or will not have my presence here implicate you as well. Ramza beseeched me strike his name from history, but like you, my lord, I could not bear the thought of future generations blind to the truth. As such, I penned this chronicle of the hero's journeys. I fear the world, however, is not yet ready for the gospel contained within these pages, nor would the church ever allow its circulation. 
In fact, I believe they will confiscate every written copy and lock them away in their library. And what better way for the words to remain forever preserved than one of the most highly guarded vaults in the realm? Then, one day, when the church has fallen out of favor, the chronicle will be discovered and truth shall prevail. I must admit your plan is intriguing, Oron, but once the church learns it was you who penned the chronicle, your life... I see, they've already... I see. I'm back. What a miss. Bunt. Plus the echo, wasn't it? Yep. Uh, I saw Delita, Oron, and Alma's meeting, and the last time they saw Ramza. The removal of the Ramza's name from the history book, the derived papers, the pendants, it was all set in motion by Oron himself. And if the Liberator's visions are to be taken as fact, it also appears we now know what the High Seraph meant by blood of my invoker. She was not speaking of ancestry in the sense of actual kin, but a line of those chosen by Hydland to serve as her warriors of light. But then why did she abduct Ramza, or even Alma, unless there is something you haven't been telling us? She was using you, us, to lure Bont. It's his vessel the High Seraph desires. Matron's teats, Alma. How long have you been awake? They do love their god cussing in this game. Ugh, I've been a fool. I told our leader that it did not matter if our request for aid was refused, for I had an alternative ploy. General! It is alright, Bragi. My intention is to claim one of the Arasite in the name of the Resistance and use its power to lay waste to the Guardian occupants. Only now do I realize how flawed my ambitions were. Yeah, we saw through that plan easy. You mean the whole time you were planning, playing us for fools? Why didn't we see it earlier? Never trust a woman with ears longer than mine, I always say. Rude? You've every right to be angry, and I apologize for misleading you. But believe me, I no longer have any desire to deceive you any more. You and yours, even. I shall see you at Orbon Monastery, and ask not in return but what you let me join you for the rescue of Ramza. Yeah, that's a much better offer! I would be a fool to not take that. Do not misunderstand me. I do not I do not do this for you, any or any one of you. I do this for my people in both Gormore and Ravanaster. People who may die if this high seraph is allowed to return to power. Oh, fair enough. I guess distantly they are also my people. The Orban Monastery is now accessible! My normal stream ending time is in 20 minutes, there is no way I'm getting through all this in just 20 minutes. I really need to use the bathroom. Uh, okay. But the queue could take a while. But there's no guarantee that the queue will take a while. So I'm going to use the bathroom first. I'm going to use the bathroom first, so, uh... Uh, let's see here. Squats. I can. Be right back. Be right back.
Oh, that was a Hydra. Well... Alright, I can do that now. Sure. Uh, wow, the camera finds weird angles in here. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Well, it was never my intention to deceive you. Alright, it was not... Uh, alright, it was not. Until it was. But you must understand that I was only thinking of my people. I have not once held you as an enemy, only as an obstacle. And now that I know that I, uh, and now I know that I know it to be false, I hope we can work together to save this land from the terrible evil that draws ever nearer. Uh, they did it when I AFK, and it immediately went to Franz Rear. I see. Of course. Of course. Well, I mean, it's in the game. It is not modded. It is not modded, so of course it went straight to Franz Rear. And with some of the camera angles that they've been doing, you know they know what they're doing. All right, I'll hit this button. Orban Monastery! Beckoned by the Aurasite, you arrive at the Orban Monastery, vestige of an ancient civilization lost beneath the twisted roots and vines of a forbidden jungle. The Darai papers claim the holy sanctuary to be where the tale of a young Rums of the Old began. Tonight is where your tale ends. Ah! All this! All this dialogue for just three raids! Oven is going off. Oh no, do you need me to withdraw? Okay, we can afford to get one penalty. We can afford to get one penalty. Like, the queue will be a while. Just go. Yes, it would appear that Ultima has abandoned Alma, only take possession of her poor brother. But riddle me this, Bont. Oh wait, this is all the same dialogue. Okay! Hi, Seraph. Ha. You defeated tougher opponents on both Aldenard and Othard. Aldenard will rule the, day she, rule the day she rose up against the one and only warrior of light. She will. Won't she, Bont? I will not see the same fate that befell uh, Bogaman before young Ramsa. Let's see, okay. Uh, storage, no beta. So this one keeps like- Oh, hey! Hi, Metal Sheep! Thank you for that subscription! Four months now, wow. Go to see your Prime. I really appreciate that. I'm glad that you- I'm glad that you want to support this. I'm glad that you're wanting to help support this stream. That does help. One of these days, I'll make that hour-long drive and replace my mouse with all the funding that you guys have been giving me. One of these days, I just need to get the motivation to go and do it. There should be plenty of motivation and the amount of frustration I get with my mouse with Dwarf Fortress, but here we are. Um, In regards to Evilist, though, like I'm so glad that this raid is here. I'm so glad that they got another take at this lore that uh, I'm glad it got to be represented in a new light, and I'm glad that all the models got to be seen in 3D. Well, some of the models. They couldn't fit everything in here. They only had room for 12 bosses. And between both 12 and tactics, like, they had to pick and choose. They had to pick and choose. And 12 ones already had tw uh, 3D models, so they were easier to port over. That said... Orban Monastery has, uh, very different bosses. Very, very different bosses. You'll be in for a treat, I hope. If you have not seen this content before, please look forward to it. It's... it's coming. It's coming. We just need to find enough people and then we'll be there. It says that the queue's gonna be a good long while, though, so we have plenty of time to discuss things. Or for me, I look around a bit. They have Chocobo costumes up there? Ah, yes, especially red Chocobo costumes, because of course they do! Because of course they do.
Yeah, they put a second note here in case you missed any dialogue from later. Let's see. Mikoto had stuff on uh, the Red Island Lighthouse and all that. Wonder Drama Tart had stuff on... Oh, I missed this! It has been already almost 30 summers since the Empire's conquest of Damasca, the annexation of the coming some years before the invasion of both Almigo and Doma. The campaign was led by Legatus Noah van Gabrant of the 4th Imperial Legion, that waged over six bloody moons. It was the fall of the supposedly impenetrable stronghold of Narvin, which lost some 70,000 Damascan swords that ultimately turned the tide of the Empire's favor. It was discovered that a list of casualties included both Prince Razzler and his twin sister, Princess Ashelia, all fight left in the embattled regions, and he soon thereafter conceded the crown. He passed not long after his surrender, and while the official explanation was that he succumbed to illness, rumors of suicide and even assassination persist to this day. What is certain, however, is that with his death, the uh, Benaga line, one that has endured for thousands of summers, finally came to an end. Show us about Dalmaskin upgrade. The Damascan took their new ruler about as well as one might expect, and in the years of the annexation, several sizable uprisings have caught their flame, only to be quelled by the Empire's might. That does not, however, mean that we garlands have emerged from these bouts of, un of insurrection unscathed. One recent example is the uh, Barheim incident, in which Barheim incident, in which scores of Imperial colonists met their end. In response to this rather arbitrary display of defiance, the Emperor sent the 14th Legion back to Damascus, where under the watch of Livia Sass Junius, suspected rebels were hunted down like rats and slaughtered without trial. Of course, this served only to embolden the resistance, yet this ended of the tale was not as happy as those told in Domar Al Amigo, as you soon have gleaned from your recent visit to Rabinaster. Which is not to say that the resistance is no more, if they may grow stronger, its members biding their time deep in the endless labyrinths that lie beneath the capital. I have ever heard of a whispering, even now rallied of a new leader, a charismatic young firebrand the people call Princess Ash. What? Of course it cannot be the real Ashelia. Even if she had survived the tragedy of Navrina, her highness wouldn't I now have seen nigh on fifty summers. Really now? Uh, what about... Oh, we get some lore on, lore on Yasmat. I missed this somehow. As to its origin and mythology, your guess is as good as mine. However, it seems it's safe to assume that the creature you encounter, most certainly a Lukavi, was constructed of the Duma, both born by Baganim's self-loathing and his desire for revenge. Behold the fall of Nabinab Fortress, Baganim was a fusilier captain charged with protecting the crown prince and the princess. When the royal twins perished, the proud Bonga blamed himself for their deaths. You said that when you confronted him in Ritterana, he believed you to be an Imperial soldier. I suspect this was a manifestation of Bakhtin's fears projected upon him by, uh, nearby by those in Duma, in their attempt to uh, send the Banga into a rage, making him more amenable to the transformation, a ruse which ultimately succeeded. While much of this con uh, coincides with what befell uh, Argath and the ruins of Lesalia, there is one important thing I would have learned from the second bout with the Lukavi, that no obvious correlation appears to exist between the Arasite's catalyst and the resultant beast. That would imply that the subject is determined with Lukavi and Manifest, and the Duma merely facilitates the process. What we cannot be certain of, however, is the subject must ultimately make the transformation of its own volition. We know Bagaman desired to be Duma's power to see revenge exacted, but did he foresee how relinquishing of both body and mind to achieve the end? Yeah, we might as well uh, read the Never mind! I was going to stop there, and I guess stop there I will have to. We'll see if Jade's back with the oven yet. Okay, that's all healers, so Jade is back. That's good. Uh, back chicken was not ready. Still cold in the middle. Ah, uh, That's the worst. Oh good, it actually went through! I like that when I clap, my mouth moves. 
I'm happy. The Orban Monastery. Also note that when I talked to him about Yasmat, we learned nothing! Nothing of Yasmat. The ruins of the monastery lie ahead. We do not think of them. I'm sorry. But do not think the path will be easy. Either here feels corrupted, Kupo. Poppies, my sisters would not allow these, unless. We probably shouldn't be marching it alone, Kupo. I could use this opportunity to try and build up some, uh. Up, oh, let's look away, mechanic. Just move through them. And then the spirit should come up. Oh no, I did the same one twice. Oh no, I completely ruined my rotation. Oh well. Let's just not get hit by any of that. In and out, and in and out, and to the other side, and here we go. Impressive. Perhaps you are deserving of your accolades. But do you have to answer the, this this mist? Or is it Aether? It all feels familiar. Like a back of Ritterada. Only the name of those ruins lies on to my people. We have no knowledge. Uh, we have no knowledge of, of its past. Nor do we wish it. Trespasses in the monastery will be avoided, except when necessary. I imagine this is what it's like to be swallowed by a mobile, Kupo. And here we come to the arena! Ahead, I see someone. No, something. Who is that absorbing is Aether? Yes! Yes! He's fully voiced! And he's made of guns! Energy burst. So just some damage. And of course I used the wrong one again. I'm shut for the, t uh, the tank. Left hand gun! But it doesn't end there. He also has a right hand gun! Nothing he cannot fix. Surprised it didn't play the line. But he also has these uh, worker constructs on the side. He channels them. The yellow lines will fire off these uh, AoE lines, similar to the worker. Targeting reticles. Energy burst. More area damage. We can't avoid it. That's fine. Gives the healer something to do. Another tank buster, because why not? Oh, I didn't emote to dive. That's okay. Oh, he's over there! And the Summer Stadio just pulls out his sniper rifle <laughs> and takes it at the raid. Okay, so the answer is clearly to show him our hole. Because he's analyzing every other part of me. And so he shotguns the entire raid for all their health, and people who did not show their hole are dead. 
Ah! Like shot? Yeah, let's not step on that. Left hand gun, so we stay on the right. Everyone fills with the power. Maintenance on those two on the active field. So I'll get those two quarters. We just need to be over here. Easy peasy. Only rarely, you say. Uh, I am on the left, so we're good on the right. Back off, give the other DPS more time to move. I think he's saying, run like rats from the catcher. Okay, so now he's mixing it up. He's combining it. So this spot looks safe. This square on the field. We're good here. We're good here. We don't need to move. Overlapping AoE! Get out melee. Uh, okay, so... This line here? No good. This line here is good. Okay. Yeah, a lot of us are dead. I'm surprised. <laughs> That's a level 2 limit break. That's a level 2 limit break. I see the chat. Let's see. You run this one more cyber attack. Uh, they baffled you at the time. Yes! The cyber attack gets everybody first time because you're thinking like, oh, it's a shield. Where is he? Where is he? That way, that way, that way, that way. Okay. We're still doing it. Here, have a chakra. Keep, just keep punching. That's not me, that's not me. Right hand gun, left, 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 left. Mines went off. Another energy burst, let's faint this one. And this is the first boss! If this is the first boss, what do you think the other three bosses are going to be? Well, we know Ultima's going to be the last one. I say with a great big smile on my face, knowing full well what is to come. This looks good. No, no, I have to go further. Looks like the tank wants to go to this corner over here. Bye, bye, me. Final heaven. Goodbye, Mustadio. text and it's gone <laughs> uh, 
last time I was here, I, the only thing I think of was hiding from those stones was a deafening silence. Could it be that the Guardians rose from its slumber upon sensing your master's sight? Neither here is different. Is this joy I feel, Kupo? When the Empire marched upon the uh, Rabanaster, many who lived in the desert to the east were sanctuary at the jungle. Many who were turned away by their sisters and said to have ha uh, uh, taken refuge here. The bell of youth guides your fate. It's her! Have you the faith to fulfill his legacy? It's the girl! Look at her! She's an angel now! It's Agrius! Unavoidable damage. Thunder Slash! That's a tank buster! That's a great big giant cone! Look at this! Sometimes a tank turns it around for some reason! Raise your shields against a failing light! To the current of life we succumb! It's judgment swift and final! It's it gave me a bonus action! Steel. So let's use the button, and... We're protected! Oh no, you don't! Aim that that way! Do not aim that over here! There's the Thunder Slash. Doesn't quite look like how it did in Tactics, so that's a little bit of a shame, but what can you do? They get hit! Oh, I know that animation! That's a shell bus stab, right? Or no, split punch! That was split punch! Raise your swords against the coming knight! Sword button! So a third of the raid was taken away, and a third of the raid is in prison. But I could use the sword button to break down the prisons. I got a couple out. I'm allowed to do damage now. I pressed the wrong type of button. Well, lines are we again? B? Okay, so that means we get middle. Oh, that guy stood in the front! You got clipped by a tank buster, sorry. Uh, this one's safe. It's not anymore. We should do a phase transition here soon. If I get that thing, I go to maximum melee and try to overlap it a little bit with another one. Judgment blade again. Kinda reminds me of Stasis Sword. That's probably the inspiration. The dreams of men are fleeting, yet they must be embraced if they are to flourish. Have you the faith to do as much? Okay, I'm not the tank, thank goodness. I was worried there for a moment. Uh, I right, I have to use sword. Yee, yeah, I'm getting hit by that. There's no way I'm not. Aha! It looks like one of the sword knights is free. Looks like Alliance C's tank is not doing their job. But we'll be fine. We'll be fine.
Yep, that was a lot of light. Thanks, Icarus. May I have another? I have been chosen to take damage. <sighs> Another tank buster. Unfortunately, Agarus is a little bit easier than Mustadio, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, you can very much die to this boss. Like, if the tank is silly... Okay, it looks like I don't get split punch. I don't get to show you what's inside there. Uh, you get to a run with lots of ghosts where you have to deal with some of them with actual damage and some of them with swords before they hit a rift. I will get frozen this time. Yep, now I am imprisoned. a couple of my teammates with my dash. And she's almost down. Yeah, you go and see Amelia, lady. She was a knight of the most noble, and her sacrifice would not be forgotten. My sisters will want to know much of her tale, I believe. Yeah, she is very popular with, uh... Very popular, for reasons. Speaking of... Holy Knights Gloves! So if you're a Dragoon, that's what your gloves look like for them. Yeah, so... Hold on. Yeah, Dragoons and tanks get her outfit, but Dragoons and... Like, they get a slightly different color of it. Slightly different color. So if you really like her jacket, her coat, her look, with her wide cuffs and everything. Yeah, you can get it. It's great. Shame it's not dieable, but it's otherwise great. Can you not feel it? An evil lurks here. One far beyond our ken. Well, they didn't use the other one, so... Uh, looks like everybody else got the mechanic, so I don't have to. Thanks, guys! I was too busy doing a limit break. This guy sure does spam a lot of area. I want to get to the rear. It sure does love to cast no on onto. Yet over and over and over again, no onto, no onto, no onto. Probably because it can't miss, and it does a lot of damage. Alright, looks like it's good. We're clearing mechanics! I hope you're ready for the next boss! Wow, that's a wall text! Once, when I was very young, I heard my sister speak of the dark city, where the horrors that ha haunt the world its nightmares dwell. The necro Necrohole, they called it. The Necrohole of Mulan. Your was foretold, servant of Ibelis. Or perhaps you serve another. 
I am Count Sidolphus Orlando. Your journey ends here. It's the Thunder God! It's the Thunder God! <laughs> Because of course Sid would turn into this! And what's his first attack? Cleansing Strike! Where'd our health go? And we're doomed! If people are healed up to full, some people are still missing it! Some people are still missing it, and they're dead! Good job, healers! Yeah, Miss Pepper, you're a dancer this time, right? No? Oh, I see. I am sorry that you did not have the power to heal. Was the other healer not healing? Up, oh, here comes the tank buster. And are they? They got it. All right, Miss Pepper's back up. More swords? Yes, Sid, yes! We will show you more! I love him! Seven shadows cast, seven fates foretold. Yet at the end of the broken path lies death and death alone. Is that part just difficult to heal with, um... Is that part difficult to heal with Scarlet? You know what? You're healing right now. You tell me if you go down again. Three on the left, three on the right. There's got eight people. We've got should have boarded enough. In the flames of hell. I also want to point out this music. This is not music from Final Fantasy Tactics. Is the blade that the blade. This is not music from Final Fantasy XII. This, this is music from another game. Vagrant Story! You would need to withstand far more than this if you are to stand against her. Spirits of heroes fallen, rise! Pass my judgment. On nine enemies. Oh, the bolt's going out there. There should be a stack marker after this. Yep, I'm just gonna stay right under the boss. Right where everybody can get me. Good. Good, 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 good. That was a little bit different. This was not the stack marker, it's a laser. Were we the last to kill ours? I think we were. Oh, no, we tied someone else. The god of thunder. Now know why. Upon my holy blade, the very world lies in balance. And now the scales will tip. Ah! That was merely the beginning, Warrior of Light. Merely the beginning! I keep doing my rotation wrong! Come, show me more. Escape is not so easily granted. I love his design, I love his voice, I love his attacks. I want more bosses like this. Were you expecting a modicum of rust? You will find my defenses quite impenetrable. That's the tank buster again. Oh no, they, they got killed by the chasing attack again. 
It is a hard attack to dodge. One more, one more, one more. No, 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 no time. It's gonna come at us. I'm gonna go to the left. All right, now there's gonna be a stacked heal check again. And Mantra. Good luck, Miss Pepper. Even the Everybody needs to be fielded up 100%. Okay, we got it. We got it this time. Oh, wait, no, that's me. Oh, no, I lost it. No. Me next. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have to split this, but not let the tank have it. Notice that those attacks are very similar to uh, the Heaven and Hell Knights. Rafa and Malak. Oh, yeah, we do have a level three. Oh, no. I had to cancel. That's going to explode in just a second. I'm playing very sloppy, but you know what? We're still winning. Yep, that hurts, but we're good. Three in the left, three in the right. The screams of ruin rise above the storm's discord. Shudder not in her endless cold. Ads? Yep, that, thank you for rescuing me right to where I... Thank you? Might be a misclick, that's fine. Ah, I can't punch from back there! Tornado kick. He's almost down, sadly. But, like, we have seen all of his mechanics. He does just continue to do them forever. When this guy was released, he was actually overtuned. Ah, Sid. There's so much dialogue. I, I'm missing so much dialogue. The mist I sensed before. The Aether. It flows so much stronger now. It was almost like the Guardians we defeated were somehow preventing it from escaping. Oh, look, Arasite. It's a big one, too. Many of them. Is it Sanctum you seek my way with children? Or perhaps you are come in search of power. That which lies at your feet, that blessed bauble can grant you both. You need but when it so. Now, take up your salvation and be gone. Mortal agency in matters divine shall not be suffered. I really appreciate that they pulled and put sound effects in the middle of the cutscene for me. I, th th thanks, guys. Alright, let me take a look at this loot first. I mean, I'm already out of the fight for a bit, so... So she's kind of locked into a wall, and we get to see uh, the final boss of Final Fantasy Tactics. Kind of. She didn't look like this in Tactics. This design is wholly new to this game.
Oh, there was a mechanic going on. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, well, it's it. Oh, she summons the old bosses, because of course she would. Oh, darkest of vessels, you are my sword, you are my ring! Oh, that's a couple dead. Ah, uh, you again! Time waits for no one. Uh, those are fast. Another one down. Leo? Okay, so we got uh, that guy again. To maintain order, one must first have control. They're both leaning that away, so I'll just be over here. Uh, we lost a few. Are we gonna transition yet? Yes. Here comes these three. Okay, totem over there. Slow clock here. Doritos? Yep, yep, no, hold on, get back. Oh, I, I don't have a Dorito. Okay, so... Tide Pod there. Dashing Blade on that side. Couple of AoEs chasing a few people. Oh, it's a shame I'm a monk and I can't help. But hey, we're about to receive some help, I think. The Hundred Blade suffers a villain's head. Endless is the path of slaves eternal to hell. It's time to end this. We're getting help from the previous three bosses. But she's breaking free. She weaves her foul magics. Only we can shield you from doom. To me, heroes, to me! And she's free, as is her monstrous lower half. You not we are taking damage, and now she's going to crunch on the mirror. What is she doing? No, we have to push that out. No, 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 no. You, you get away. The mirror will not last. We must stop her. We're not doing so good. I don't think we did it. We lost to DPS. We lost! We lost! We did not have enough people survive that phase transition. <laughs> I was hitting that thing as hard as I could. I was hitting the thing as hard as I could. I probably could have used the limit break. And she's there. The fight starts back over. You lose, you just load the game back up and you try again, right? You went to the wrong group on Sid. Oh, I see. That would explain it. That would not explain how you died. There you go. You Give everybody a big buff.
Lots of damage. Uh, this side looks nice and wide open. Never that mechanic I didn't see last time. Grand Cross. So she summons these great big blocks of salt, ice, and they appear in the back and everywhere. They're basically bomber bam bombs. They fire on a cross. There's only one safe square on the battlefield right now. It's always right up front, right next to her, and either left or right. That's a tutorial for the next half of the fight. Just keep hitting her. One more global. Looks like I'm fine here. I didn't get hit by water at all. And a lot of people in my party are gone. Just slow up front. Dodge that just fine. Now we have the totems again. Or the towers, rather. I probably could have stayed in melee and dodged that, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. I do stay alive for the phase transition. That is the most important thing. Okay, dodge this again. Uh, this is slow. That's fast. Do I have a Dorito on me? No. There's that water there. The totem was over there. The fire's over there that time. The fire's hitting that half again. Who gets AoEs on them? That person and... They're coming at me. I could just dodge by moving into the water, and a lot of the party's dead. Oh no. Well, I'm a monk, I can't help with this. Here we go. Here we go again. Simmered as the light of life before rising to the heavens in a cleansing conflagration of divine benevolence. Your sins, your souls are undone. She's so much, isn't she? I'm fire enough, Brotherhood. We are killing this thing this time. Okay, we broke it this time. We pushed her off. Is it over? I am the only god. And she shatters it. Such fury! Ah! Oh! And now we're really burning, but we're saved by one! Now is not the time to stay our blades! And so he bears the brunt of Ultima, the same way that he learned it in tactics! So we can survive to the next phase. Children of Hyd... Children of Hydlin, make it swift! You are our only hope! Now 
Now we get the final boss music from Final Fantasy Tactics. But you might be saying, but wait! Where is... Where's the model from the boss of Final Fantasy Tactics? Okay, uh, this AoE will move. So I need to be where the AoE is right now. Yeah, I was being fired by some unique late models over there. I'll see another version of that soon. Redemption, the tank buster. Oh boy, here it comes. Look at the uh, tank's health. Nothing, okay. All right, they were very well prepared for it. All right, Grand Cross going into the middle. Grand Cross going on top of me. The wood's going to push it all that way. So the only safe place is not this corner. It's the other corner. I'm going to get hit by one. Yep, ow. I'm fine. All right, now she's in the corner. I do a lot of damage, but the raid is really beat up. And I think I need to be... Yep. I see these out here. I'm getting ready to block. Hey, look! It's a boss model! From the final boss of Final Fantasy Tactics! It's her! She's just the minions of the, this one. Ah, uh, we're about to get phase transition, otherwise I'd use my cooldowns. No, no, I'm not using that here. Not right now. I cannot move along the edge of the map. We are stuck in the corner. Alright, okay. We'll go back this way. I know my place. I know my place. Hey, do you remember uh, the deep dungeon that was in Final Fantasy Tactics? Do you remember how we couldn't see the floor? Representation! I can't use any of my abilities. I have to stop. Meanwhile, the like wave of light is going over and trying to consume everything. Can we get around this edge? No. No, I went the wrong way. I followed people to my doom. If I get hit by this, so be it. It's fine. I cannot use my abilities. I did that very poorly. Hey, look, that's a flare. The Titan needs to run into the black. She is just kind of throwing the whole book of spells at us, isn't she? Uh, how are we looking? Shall I break? No, not yet. I'm blocking it. I see it now in you. This is not gonna move. Yeah, now's the time. Yeah. Or bone to pick. I finally beat Final Fantasy Tactics on stream. Kind of. Door mode monastery complete. Ah. Uh. Ah. Ah. The dancer danced for me. I don't know which dancer it was. I think it was that one. I'm not sure. 
All right, let's see here. So the light armor. Neat. The brave jacket. Hey, look, I can look like him. I'm taken. Sky Pirate hat. Not cannon, whatever. Can I get cards? Can I get a little Rumza? I cannot. Oh, well, that's fine. What's cool about the Rumza minion is that it will, like, kneel down on the ground and pick up grass to play the reed flute. It can play the reed flute, but I didn't get the minion, so I can't show that. I'll have to try and do that later. Ah! He decided to log on to Final Fantasy. Nice! <laughs> oh! Ah, here we go! Here we go! The story continues! The fighting is done, but the story continues! Yep, there's the boy! The Garlean Ramza! There's the girl! How the... How do you run in those shoes? It woke, Hoopo. Does it truly him? Thank you. Thank you all for coming to my aid. Is it really you now? It's him! The ghost of the hero. A former warrior of light. And you have my thanks, noble warrior of light. You have achieved what I could not. And you, bearer of my blood, and blood of House Durai. Thank you for seeing my final wish fulfilled. But it's not just him. It's Mustadio and Agrius. And Thunder God Sid, who looks really silly next to everybody else. My sacrifice has finally been given meaning. But there's the rest of the team! There's Boko! And there's the Heaven and Hell Knight, Raphael Malak, Elysi and Lavian! There's Islude on the right for some reason! Several other red, uh, NPC caster units! And the Construct 8 in the back! Now, my friends, let's retire to Mother Hydaelyn's bosom, that we may finally rest. I think that was Beowulf at the back. I think they were all well represented as best they could in the game. Farewell. You are the true hero of the story. And it's Delita! They finally get to see each other again in the live stream! Delita? Oh, I've missed you, old friend. Forgive me, Ramza. You deserve better than what history gave you. I... I could have done more. I am truly sorry. And there's Oran, and Alma. His countless centuries did I long for the day when we might once again. And now, the time has finally come. Hydlin beckons us both. I'm glad that they are friends.
I am crying. Yeah, they got the bad ending this iteration of their tale, but they finally have an ending. They can finally rest. You're alive! Oh, but of course you are. You think they come after this many triumphs, one might grow tired of saving the world. Consider us all fortunate that you have not. <laughs> well, they were there, Hurdy! Clear as day! The hero Ramza and good King Delita! Why would I lie about something like that, Kupo? My question is, why wouldn't you? Still, after all we've been through in the past few days, I might be willing to give you a benefit of the doubt. This time, Kupo. But it's almost sad to see our quest come to an end, though we have given the land scholars much to consider. Charlie and will have to open the School of Evolution Studies, as we and we are to keep up. Or if we are to keep up, rather. Despite what Lady Fraud said, I had no doubt that you would come through in the end. It has been an honor, but all I wish Begaman was here to celebrate this day. I owe you an apology, Bont. I was wrong, I doubt you. When it, whether it be in the council room or on the field of battle, you have proven yourself more than worthy, and have many praises of Bart Sings. I am glad to have counted you as an ally, for I would not wish you upon um, even my worst enemy. I don't know, I'm not that bad. You rescued my brother, and for that I shall ever be indebted to you. You will be in my heart always, Bont. And here we are, Bont. I cannot thank you enough for all you have done for my family. And that is before you saved me from the High Seraph. How about you guys in the back? Those cannot describe how happy we're all out to have Ramza back aboard the Prima Vista. It is literally my job to use words to describe things. You have saved Ramza. You have saved my brother. If there's anything I can do to repay you, name it, it is yours. Play me a song, Mr. Lootman. As you handled matters on your own, not that I believed you couldn't. Uh, with the amount of time that you obviously devoted your training, victory wasn't but guaranteed. <laughs> Tell me, Bond, what was it like? Did the angel scream when you clipped her wings? Oh, I apologize. I seem to have allowed myself to get caught up in all the excitement. I actually abhor violence. Which is why I joined the uh, Majestic instead of taking up the seal for an Imperial army. Well... Well, that, and because I also fell in love with Ramza the first time I laid eyes on him. I mean, I fell in love with his magnificent performance, of course. What did you think I meant? Is it hot in here? I see. You've done it again. Not that there was ever any doubt. Oh, there were things I'd... Oh, there were those who doubted you. I shan't name names, but I was not amongst them. I always knew you were a beast. A lion. A beastly lion. I'm also a bunny. You're back, and with Ramza. Oh, I'll so word for you for both of you. Oh, thanks, Bond. As odd as befallen Ramza, his mother would have risen from the live stream to haunt us all for eternity. Oh, you presume I jest? No, not at all. Hauntings happen regularly around me. I don't know why. Let's do the finale. Come on! We gotta get to the finale. I'm so sorry, Ramza. Alma, I convinced myself that my research was the most important thing in my life. All the while you two were standing before me. Can you find it in your heart to forgive your father? It's all right. We're still here, are we not? And we triumphed. We proved your theory true. Even this existed. Ramza existed. And Oran Durai was not a heretic, but a hero. Now all that reminds us to tell the world. No, my son. We needn't burden ourselves further. But father, we can't allow our ancestor's name to remain. 
and we will not. Yes, simply not in the manner you think. I shall bring in adding a final act to Zodiac Brave's story, telling of how Ramza and the Forgotten Hero, and his chronicler Oron Darai, smote the Angel of Blood and saved Evilis from the Age of Darkness, before quietly embarking on a final journey that will take them far beyond the horizon. And of course, I shall not leave out those nameless heroes who fought alongside Ramza, without whom the young noble would have surely perished. Is that what you truly want, Father? For the story to end? It will only end on the stage, my dear, and live on in the hearts of the crowd. <laughs> ah! ah, it's hard. Ah, it's hard. Ah, I can finish it. Hold on, I gotta wipe the tears. I gotta wipe the tears. I can't read if I can't see. Hikalita and Oran envisioned the Virgo as a beacon of which would least lead the future generations to the truth about the founding of their kingdom. They were right. And just as Appendix guided us, now we shall guide the masses through our play. And now do you see, my son. I would offer you my thanks again, Bont. But thanks are not nearly enough to express my gratitude for all you have given us. Perhaps after I complete the Zodiac Brave story, I shall pen a tale about the legendary Warrior of Light and his adventures across the three great continents. And you'll have your work cut out for you, my friend. Bond has enough battles under his belt to fill at least three tomes, if not four. But you stop doing that, Sid. His tales are far from over, isn't it? Yeah, you better believe it. We're still getting more expansions! More chapters! More! More! Hey look, they actually have a play on the ship! Like they always said they did! Alright, this is our final dress rehearsal for the night. Make it count. Positions, everyone. Yes, Principal. He looks good in it. Lights, oh, music. There will be no more mistakes from you two, am I clear? Oh, mother crystal clear, Krupo. They are going to perform the new final act. I know! Again! Whatever will we do, the church has branded us heretics. No home awaits us in Evilis. We shall embark on a journey. A journey together. Together? Together. The crystal's call has been answered and evil vanquished from the land. We are now free to soar like the griffin. Free? But how? By casting off our noble names and forging a new path. One not bound by fate. And on that path we shall meet new friends. Make a new family. And unto them we shall entrust the true tale of our deeds. That they may carry on our legacy. For all eternity. Sword in hand. A warrior clutches stone to breast. A sword etched as his fading memories. In stone he tempered his skill. By sword attested, by stone revealed. The tale can now be told. <laughs> Bravo, 
Bravo! Bravo! You are wonderful! Ah! I'm inclined to agree with the name you lead his sentiments, but there is always room for improvement. Back to your positions, everyone. Again from the top. Again? I've had enough of this! I was promised a starry roll, Koopo! This is in my contract! Oh, hush, brother. Before Gen uh, Jomas has us back to polishing up the buckles again. I'm glad everybody gets a laugh out of the comedy relief boogles. I, I prefer Tactics Advanced Mont Blanc and Hurdy. That's for sure. Meanwhile, in the clockwork city of Gog. Did you think it was over? No, 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 no. Those are sure a lot of guardians. A lot of flying armors. They rounded up a lot of worker numbers. But how did they find out about it? Sir, further research will be required to reach a positive conclusion, but preliminary tests show that the technology utilized here bears a striking similarity to our own. Excellent. Let the Eorzeans play with their baubles. True power lies within these very walls. It appears our ancestors were as cunning as they were ruthless. You! You! The guy with the hat! You were an Imperial spy all along, weren't you? That explains his actions as, uh, on the uh, end there. A weapon powerful enough to carve a gateway to the land's very core. His radiance will be eager to test his Tartarus. Would you not agree? Please look forward to that someday. It might be a while before I get there. I hope the new act was to your liking. It may still change, seeing as we have yet to finish our rehearsals, but I believe Father has another masterpiece on his hands. I have always admired my father, but never more than I do now. I finally have come to understand why it was so important for him to tell the tales that he did, even if those actions did see him driven from his home. Still, I worry that we may never find our place here in this foreign land, that our voices may never be heard. Everything we knew was gone, everything we worked for behind us. Will the people of Othoth and Othoth not accept us for what we offer, in spite of who we are, or who we were even? Will they flock to our stage to hear our stories? Will they laugh at our jests and weep at our losses? I know it is childish to fret over such matters, but perhaps I am still a child, despite his appearance of stranger acceptance of strangers. Despite the fact that I already accepted. Accepted by my friends and family. Something happened the day I laid my hands on my mother's necklace. My father would have me believe that I was here with Ramza's Ar Arasite, the Virgo that dispelled the fear and hate in my heart and replaced it with love. I would like to believe that I was not their holy stone, but me, growing up, journeying to a new land, meeting new people, learning of new cultures and customs. These things ignited a flame inside me. A flame of change. You, Mont Blanc, Hurdy, Mikoto, Master Sid, Boggy, Fran, even Lena. You have all helped fan the flame. They all rise to the conflagration and burn away the old Ramza, leaving what stands before you now. My father spoke of one day auth authoring a play that would chronicle your adventures. I believe I will tell him to abandon that endeavor. For I wish to author it myself. That is, if you allow it. You are welcome here any time, Bont, and I will hope that you will take the time to visit and tell us more of your deeds. I shall be waiting. 
Thank you all, thanks are not nearly enough for all you have provided us, but sadly they are all I have to offer. Thank you, Bont. You watched our rehearsal, so you were witness firsthand the fruits of my father's labor. It is now time for us, the players, to see the seeds cast across the realm. I hope fleeing the Empire and searching for a new audience, from finding a truth of our ancestors to bringing back to my mother to saving my uh, brother. Many paths were walked on this journey, but ultimately all led here. Was it merely the Aurasite that guided us to Orban Monastery? Or was it, dare I say, fate? Our exile, our arrival in Hingashi, my father's disappearance. Without even a single one of those things our past may not have crossed. If that is not fate, then... Now that Ramza's desire has been fulfilled, the Aurasite set on the necklace appears to have lost its blessing. Perhaps it is for the best, but I am simply glad that a piece of my mother remains. I shall not say farewell, but I would not have this meeting be our last. Allow me instead to offer a prayer. Mother, abandon not your wayward children of evilis, but deliver us from our sins that we might know salvation. Yeah, that's nice. I owe you an apology, Bond. Oh wait, that's the same. Okay, everything else there appears the same. Alright, so, uh, where's this end? I guess it's Muria, who will probably be outside. Ha! Ah, story! Story! Ah! I, I was trying to save that one for a day that was feeling low, so I could start to feel high. But I couldn't do it on a day where I was feeling, like, really low emotionally, because then I wouldn't have the throat or the will or the voice to, like, try and voice all that unvoiced dialogue. I had a lot of fun. Thank you all for choosing it. Or for the one person that chose it after Blue Mage flopped. Well, it wasn't that an adventure, but it's sad to think that we must soon part ways with all that we've been through in these past few moons. Satisfied the city's unwillingness to turn it over to the Garleans, Genomus has decided to purchase a poem in birth at the Kogane for the Prima Vista. Supposedly, he has already received petitions from hundreds of Geiko and Genin to join the company. And that is a matter of my assignment. You will be delighted to learn that I am almost finished. What? How do you expect one to write an expose when off battling forces of evil and beyond the battling beyond the void? Don't you worry, though. A few more weeks and I'll have a draft. All right, now it lies. And though then, I'll stay here in Kogane a while longer. At the Raven's expense, of course. Farewell. Yeah! And that's it! That's where that story ends for now. Unfortunately, the evil, the evil Isian Braves jacket is a little bit worse than what I'm wearing, but I'm going to put it on. This is me now. If I can't get the full set, I'm going to at least wear the jacket. I'm going to at least have the jacket. I can have a little bit of Rumza with me. Hey, there's Miss Pepper. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you again for joining me. I'm sorry that Sid killed you. <laughs> uh, I did update my uh, portraits. I will forget to do that. I will forget to do that, so I, I gotta make sure I take care of that now. Ah! Hold on. Save. I have to do it in the right order. Sometimes UI is a little bit wonky. There we go! Ah, uh, I'm glad that I got to play a- ah! I would have been happy as a tank from this expansion, too. The Agrius code is also really nice, and the Ramza code is also really nice. But you know what? Getting the mercenary jacket is also good. I can't dye it, but I'm still happy to have this. I'm happy to have this. So... From Miss Pepper and I, thank you all so much for being here. This has absolutely been... A time. I did not get to go to more Eureka today, and once again, I continued to go through the game without advancing the plot. But you know what? We did something fun, so it was worth it, right? It was worth it. 
Huh, I've got an hour over my usual time. Happy, enjoy this nine hour VOD! <laughs> ah. Next time on Final Fantasy, I'll probably do that last thing for Warrior. I'll lost, I'll, lo I'll uh, knock out a little bit more Moogle quests. I might save the Moogle and Vado for another time. I'll continue the story of custom deliveries. How many more weeks do we got on that? How many more weeks we got on that? Looks like two. Yeah, so in two weeks we'll have the custom deliveries and the tribe quest done. Oh no, I'm showing party chat. Oh no, I'm showing party chat. Never mind, it was just Carbuncle in the chat that confused me. Ah, uh, what will I do next week? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I hope to see some of you there. Good luck, Temple Wolf, with your adventure. Great seeing you again, Fawns. Thanks again, Miss Pepper. Thank you again for that uh, subscription, uh, Metal Sheep. Ah. Good night, everybody. <laughs>